So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto was a bloodthirsty Jinchuriki. Part 1. If you guys enjoy this, what if? And if you want to part 2. Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1. Origins. It was a quiet night in the village hidden in the leaves. The citizens were going to their homes and closing up their shops. Everyone stopped when off in the distance they saw death. The Kyubi no Kitsune, nine-tailed fox, was rampaging off in the distance and headed straight for the village. Villagers started running the opposite direction in a panic as fast as they could to get away from the fox's rampage, at the same time the Chunin, Jonin, and Anbu were rushing to the front lines to try and stop the fox's advance on their village, while the Genin were evacuating the civilians. An Anbu knelt before the former cage and current frontline commando Sandame Sama the Kaiubi has reached the walls of the village, what are your orders? Sandame was currently wondering where his successor was in a crisis like this. We will hold the line and buy time for Yandame. The Anbu left with a high. To inform the other shinobi. Frontlines. Kaiubi was angry, no he was beyond angry he was livid. First he is being controlled by Ichihamadara, then he is captured by the Shadame and sealed. Then when he is finally free he is once again being controlled by an Ichiha and their cursed eyes. He didn't want to attack Kanoha, hell he wanted to get the hell away from Kanoha and find somewhere to never be disturbed again, but it seemed Kami had other plans for him, which explains his current situation. He swore if he ever got out of the Ichiha's control, he would destroy him the most painful way possible. Namika's clan estate. Minato Namika's, Yandame Hokage of Kanoha, Kanoha no Kairoi Seng, Kanoha's Yellow Flash, and the only shinobi to receive an SS rank bingo book entry, was currently conflicted with the situation at hand and wondered what he could do to stop the Kaiubi. Unfortunately he would always reach the same conclusion, sealing it, the question was who could he seal it into. He knew he could never ask one of his subordinates to sacrifice one of their children to become the Jinch Kriki of the Kaiubi, and to make things worse his son Naruto had just been born and lost his wife after the Kaiubi had been released from her, but could he really sacrifice his son to the life of a Jinch Kriki with no one to take care of him or look out for him? Yes he would have to, he was the Hokage and the village came first. Hopefully Saratobi sama could protect Naruto and raise him right. He grabbed Naruto from his crib and disappeared in a yellow flash to the front lines. Front lines. Saratobi didn't know what to do, everything they threw at the Kaiubi would do nothing but anger it more. He knew that once the Kaiubi breached the walls there would be a lot more casualties. All of a sudden a large object fell from the sky and pinned the Kaiubi to the ground. When the surrounding shinobi looked closer, they saw a giant dull red toad comparable in size to the Kaiubi, wearing a navy blue vest and carrying a blade at his back with a Yandame Hokage on the toad's head. We're saved. Yelled a random shinobi. It's Yandame Sama yelled another random shinobi. Tsuritobi sighed, he knew with Minato here they would have a chance at defeating the Kaiubi. Then just as soon as they arrived the Yandame, Toad, and Kaiubi disappeared in a yellow flash. Outskirts of Kanoha. Far away from the battlefield on the outskirts of Kanoha stood the Kaiubi, Gamabunta, and his summoner the Yandame Hokage. Minato turned to address Gamabunta Bunta. I need you to hold down the Kaiubi while I seal it. Gamabunta responded I'll try and hold him down as much as possible, but he is still Kaiubi. I won't be able to hold him down for too long. Minato nodded and started a long sequence of hand seals and yelled out Shaiki Fujin. When he did the Shinigami appeared above him and reached for the Kaiubi who was struggling frantically to get away from the Shinigami, but was too late as the Shinigami reached inside Kaiubi and ripped out its Yin Chakra. With its Yin Chakra sealed inside Minato the Kaiubi was reduced in size and Minato used this chance to seal the Kaiubi's Yang Chakra and yelled out Haki no Fukin Shaiki, completely sealing the Kaiubi in Naruto. Minato looked at his son with tears in his eyes. I'm sorry it had to be this way Naruto, I wish I could be here to protect you, but I hope the villagers treat you like the hero you are. Know that I will always be proud of you. With his last words Minato Namikas died and his soul was devoured by the Shinigami. This is the scene Saratobi walked in on, a dead successor, a crying baby, and destruction all around. He automatically knew what had happened as it was obvious, considering that the child still had the seal pulsing on its stomach. Hanoha Council Room. Two hours later. Saratobi Hirazan was walking into the council room to receive the damage report of the village in the aftermath of the Kaiubi attack. Once all the council members were gathered Saratobi cleared his throat to get their attention. Now that we are all here, what is the situation of the village? Asked Hirazan. Kanoha's chief merchant answered Saratobi, the attack made by the Kaiubi has crippled the financial district and reduced out revenue by 40%. 
Tsuritobi nodded. How many casualties, both shinobi and civilians? Murkamina Takanibu, Kanohe's executive of the Medic Nin program, spoke next. We have lost a total of 60,000 people in the Kaiubi attack, over 46% of Kanohe's total population. Of the 60,000 people dead, 18,000 were shinobi, and the rest were civilians. Tsuritobi nodded sadly again very well, now with the damage report finished, I can guess you would all like to know how the Kaiubi was defeated. Everyone in the council room nodded their heads. Beyond Ain was not powerful enough to kill the Kaiubi, no one would be able to kill the Kaiubi, because Biju are only large masses of chakra with a conscience, knowing that Beyond Ain did the only thing he could do. He sealed it into someone with Uzumaki blood, the only Uzumaki that was known was Uzumaki Kashina. She had given birth to a boy today, as such the new container is of Uzumaki blood. Saritobi thought if he should tell them who Naruto's father was. Let's see how they react to Naruto being the new container, if they call out for his death I won't tell them. All of a sudden the council room erupted in rage, the civilian council called for Naruto's death while the shinobi council stayed silent. We must kill the demon. Yelled one civilian council member. Kill the demon, it must not be allowed to exact its revenge. Yelled another. The civilian side continued to call for blood for a good five minutes until Siratobi released a large amount of Kai to quiet them down. Siratobi knew this would happen, he kicked himself for letting the civilian side know about Naruto's Yinchikriki status. Nothing he could do now except hope everything works out for the best, he was especially wary of the looks the war hawk Danzo and the power hungry Ichihafugaku were giving Naruto. Now that you all know of his status as a container, the next order of business is a new Hokage. Since I am the only one qualified to rebuild Konoha, I believe I will step back up to the position said Siratobi. I think you aren't the only one qualified to take the position of Hokage, I am another good candidate for the position of Hokage interrupted by Danzo. That may be true Danzo, but right now the village is in a panic. If I take the chair of Hokage again, the people will calm down, knowing that someone as experienced and respected as me is leading them again away from the dark times we are experiencing against Siratobi. Everyone in the council room nodded in agreement, Danzo just scowled at Siratobi. You win this round Siratobi, but I will make sure that I have the Kaiubi on my side thought the Warhawk. Hokage-sama, now that we have elected a new Hokage, who will take care of the Kaiubi container? asked Ichihafugaku. As of now, young Naruto-kun is an orphan like so many others in the aftermath of the Kaiubi attack, answered Siratobi. Then I petition that the boy be given to the Ichiha clan for adoption, since it is that he is an orphan, said Fugaku. I think the boy should be better trained as a weapon, he contains the most powerful of the biju and could be a valuable asset for the village. I ask that the Kaiubi container be placed under my care so that he can be trained as a weapon for the village, said Danzo. No Danzo I will not give you the boy to train to be an emotionless killer at a young age, and I won't give him to you Fugaku, since it would upset the balance of power between clans, answered Siratobi. Danzo narrowed his eyes. Then what would you do with the boy Hiruzen? Young Naruto-kun will be placed in the orphanage until he is old enough to be placed in an apartment, answered the Hokage. Danzo scowled but nodded nonetheless, he would have to wait until he got his hands on the Kaiubi container. Nara Shikaku asked Hokage-sama, what will we do with the civilian masses? They will undoubtedly call for the child's life. Saratobi thought for a few seconds before he gave his answer. From this point on young Naruto-kun's status as the Kaiubi container is an SS rank secret, anyone that breaks it will be executed on the spot with no trial. Saratobi dismissed the council and hoped he had done enough to help Naruto grow up as a normal boy. Kaiubi's cage during the meeting. Kaiubi watched the meeting from his cage inside the seal with interest, mostly because they would be deciding his fate. When the meeting ended he knew that he would be safe for the time being, but he also knew that humans were very predictable, and he had no doubt that the civilian council members would most likely try to assassinate his container. He would have to prevent that or else he would die as well, because without his yin chakra, it might not have enough strength to reform. Typical humans are always afraid of what they don't understand. Then again this could be fun, once this kid is old enough I will be able to train him, and then I will show them the demon they despise so much, and what better way to show them then, by having the son of their precious yandame Hokage destroying them, Hahakai Ubi began contemplating the ways he would be destroying Kanoha in the future. Six years later. Naruto was sadly walking down the street, he had just been kicked out of the orphanage, because that matron had said demons aren't allowed here anymore. He didn't understand why she called him a demon, he was just a kid like all the others at the orphanage. The matron never let him learn how to read or write, because she would always see demons don't deserve to learn how to read or write. She didn't even give him enough to eat, and he would sometimes go to bed hungry. He didn't want to remember the times when he would wander the village and have a mob go after him almost every time and leave him beaten and injured. 
He tried to forget all the bad times he had there, he then started remembering all the good times he had. He remembered the kind old man that would visit on his birthday and take him out for Raymond, and the kind Raymond cooks that would always serve him with a smile. He would always leave the Raymond stand with a smile. While he was reminiscing he hadn't noticed that he stepped into the slums of the village and had a couple drunks following him. He snapped out of his daydream when he felt a bottle shatter next to him, he turned to see a group of six drunks running and yelling at him. It's the demon that got him. One drunk slurred. Don't let him get away. Yelled another. Needless to say Naruto started running as fast as he could to get away from the drunks until he turned a corner and found himself in an alley trapped with no escape route. He was first hit by a bottle in the side of the head, he felt he was bleeding a lot and yelled in pain. Another got closer with a bat and hit him in the gut, Naruto hunched over and fell on his stomach in pain, then everything went black. Naruto's Mindscape. Naruto was currently walking through a sewer where the water reached his knees, he had no idea where the hell he was and started exploring hoping to find out. He suddenly heard a deep voice calling out to him. He followed the voice and reached a room with a large cage in front of him with a kanji for seal on the door. Come closer Naruto obeyed the voice and soon saw two red slit eyes looking at him. Hayubi then asked him do you know who I am? Naruto looked at the creature more closely and saw that aside from his eyes, he also had the body of a fox and nine swishing tails behind him. He started thinking and remembered a creature matching this description in a book he had read before the matron had taken it away. Naruto knew what this creature was and what it did so he answered with as much courage as he could muster, you're the Kaiubi no Kitsune. Hayubi just looked at him and grinned before talking. I'm glad you know who I am. It will make what I am about to tell you easier, you are going to die. Naruto just looked at him in shock. What do you mean I'm going to die and where am I? Iwubi started explaining we are in your mindscape. You came here after you were blocked when those humans attacked you. Naruto started remembering what had happened and realized something. Wait so you mean I'm still alive. Very good kid, yes you are still alive, and I called you here because I want to help you survive and protect yourself. Help me, how are you going to help me? You're stuck in a cage. Ask Naruto. That may be true, but I can still give you my chakra to help you fight. All you need to do is rip off a little part of the seal, aside from being able to use my chakra, you will also gain my heightened sense of smell and hearing, and we will also be able to communicate through the seal. So hurry up and rip off part of the seal and kill these worthless humans, said Kaiubi, losing his patience. Naruto suddenly remembered his proclamation to the old man. Flashback. Naruto was currently inhaling his Raymond with the Hokage sitting next to him. Giji, what's that funny hat on your head, you're always wearing it? Asked Naruto curiously. Saratobi turned to face Naruto and said this hat Naruto-kun is the hat of the Hokage. Naruto looked at Sandane confused. What's a Hokage? The Hokage is the strongest shinobi in the village. Naruto-kun proclaimed Saratobi with his chest puffed out. It deflated when Naruto responded but you're really old, how are you the strongest shinobi in the village? Saratobi just chuckled at his response. Well Naruto-kun the Hokage is also the person who everyone acknowledges and protects the entire village and villagers from danger. Naruto just beamed at what Saratobi had said, he had always wanted to be acknowledged by the villagers, instead of being glared at by looks of hate. That's when Naruto made his proclamation awesome you better watch out Jiji because I'm the one who's going to take that hat from you and become the next Hokage. That's a promise. Saratobi chuckled before responding. I hope Naruto-kun I can see that you have the will of fire burning brightly in you. Then flashback. I don't want to kill them. I promised I would protect them and become Hokage. Yelled Naruto. Iwubi then lost his patience why would you protect them they are trying to kill you. You should be returning the favor. When are you going to realize that they will always hate you as long as I am with you. You will never be Hokage because they will always hate you. You should make them fear you make them pay. That fool Saratobi doesn't care about you otherwise he would never had let these fools hurt you and despise you. Naruto just started digesting everything Kaiubi had told him and realized he was right. The villagers would always hate him and never acknowledge him because he would always be seen as the demon he imprisoned. That was when Naruto finally lost hope and realized that only Kaiubi would be looking out for him and no one else. It was him and Kaiubi against the world. He then approached the cage and reached for the seal and ripped off a small piece. He was suddenly overcome with a feeling of immense power and bloodlust, he then noticed he was waking up. Alley. Inside the alley the six drunks were currently kicking Naruto while he was unconscious. All of a sudden there was a bright red light, accompanied by an immensely evil power that threw the drunks away. In the alley stood Naruto, but there were changes to his appearance like his longer fangs, his whisker marks darkened, his hands turned into claws, and he was surrounded by a cloak of red chakra that took the form of a fox, with a single tail swishing behind him. 
He wasted no time feeding his bloodlust and extending his hand and sending a chakra claw to grab the closest villager. The villager screamed in pain as the chakra claw burned his body before he was crushed and thrown away like trash. Naruto moved on to the next two drunks, he slammed his hands in the ground and two massive chakra claws erupted from the ground and grabbed their head before squishing them like grapes, there was blood all over the street and on Naruto's clothes. He was going to kill the remaining three when a voice spoke to him. Did you need to finish off these three quickly I can sense the Hokage and a couple more coming this way. Naruto mentally nodded using his advanced speed to quickly slice the last three drunks heads off before leaving the area and dispelling his chakra cloak. Outskirts of Konoha. What now Kaiubi? Asked Naruto. We should leave the village for a while until the village calms down, while we're out we can start your training and call me Kurama, that's my name, explained Kurama. Naruto nodded while running out of an unguarded gate and making his way into the forest, normally he would be exhausted by now, but Kurama was pumping small amounts into his body to fight the exhaustion. He was told by Kurama to lose his scent by jumping into a stream and washing the scent of blood off to throw off any pursuers that would go after him. He made it about 15 miles before collapsing into a cave exhausted and hungry. Kurama decided to use this time to make him an interesting offer head kid I was wondering if you want a keke genkai. Naruto looked confused what's a keke genkai. Ayubi sweat dropped, he should have known he would say that he was only a kid. He sighed and started explaining what a keke genkai was to Naruto. The keke genkai is the abilities passed down genetically within specific clans. Keke genkai abilities that work using a person's eye are called ninjutsu. Other keke genkai include mixing one type of elemental chakra with another, creating a new one unique to the users, which is usually impossible for normal ninja or other bodily manipulations that are usually unachievable by normal standards. Some ninjutsu are the Byakugan, Rinnegan, and the Sharingan. Some elemental keke genkai are ice release, wood release, magnetic release, storm release, lava release, dust release, and boil release when he was finished he could tell Naruto was amazed. How is that possible you said that they are genetically made for specific clans? Asked Naruto. Hirama just gave him a grin before responding well part of me being the Kaiubi is that I am able to use my chakra and rearrange and add new genes to your DNA so I could give a new keke genkai, but I can only give you one because changing DNA is very dangerous, painful, and require a lot of chakra. When you are older I might be able to give you another one. So what do you say? Naruto thought a lot about what Kaiubi was saying and decided that it would be cool to have a new power, so he agreed to it. But he told Kurama to surprise him on what keke genkai he would get. Alright get ready this is going to be painful. Oh and you will probably be unconscious for a couple days, Kurama warned. Naruto mentally nodded before leaning down against the wall and feeling extreme pain before passing out. Chapter 2. Aftermath. Massacre Scene. Saratobi Hiruzen was having a bad day. First he started the day with a mountain of paperwork, then when he was leaving the office, he felt the same power that he felt on one sad day six years ago. When he arrived at the scene accompanied by a squad of Anbu, he couldn't believe what he saw, there in the middle of the street, there were the bodies of six people. Three of them had their heads sliced off, two had their heads crushed, and the final one had his body crushed. It looked like a bloodbath, but whoever did it was nowhere to be seen, Saratobi turned to one of the Anbu to give him orders. Inu, dog, I need you to find and bring Naruto Uzumaki to me, commanded by Saratobi. The silver-haired Anbu left with a high. And went to track down Naruto. Saratobi knew what this meant, he would have to call a council meeting and inform them of this, and they would demand his head, which he wasn't sure if he could stop them this time. This was a tight predicament he was in, and he hoped he could get Naruto out of it, because he was like a grandson to him. He left to call a council meeting, so he would have the excuse that he already told them of the situation, instead of them using this to further undermine his authority. But they knew, dog. In Konoha there were only a handful of people that knew Naruto's true heritage, as the son of Minato Namikaze and Yuzumaki Kishina, Jiraiya of the Sanin, the Sandame Hokage, and Hada Kakashi. Kakashi always saw Naruto as the son of his late sensei, and not a demon like the majority of Konoha. Kakashi always wanted to repay his sensei by taking care of his son, but the Sandame stopped him from adopting Naruto because he thought Naruto being an orphan would be better for everyone. Look at the situation that brought, Naruto was isolated and abused for the first six years of his life, and it seems that today he finally snapped and killed his attackers thought Kakashi. I hope I can find him soon thought Kakashi as he continued deeper into the forest following the scent of blood. Anoha Council Room. The civilians were in an uproar, after Saratobi had told them what happened with Naruto they acted as expected, with demands of his head and his imprisonment. The shinobi side was quiet Danzo and Fugaku were thinking of ways to turn this in their favor, while the other clan heads were silently hoping Naruto wasn't losing control. Finally the civilians were silenced with a blast of Kai from the Sandame. 
we cannot jump to conclusions as an investigation is underway and we will find out if it was murder or self-defense on young Naruto Kun's part. The civilians didn't like his response and went into an uproar again only to be silenced once again by Sandame's killing intent. The room was silent for a few moments until Danzo broke it. Here is in what will you do to the child should he be found guilty of murder. I request that if he is guilty, he be turned over to me to be give emotional training. Saratobi responded with a frown no Danzo if he is found guilty, which I find highly unlikely, he will be given the same punishment all civilians are given. But that said Saratobi dismissed the council and headed to his office. Naruto's Mindscape. Naruto woke up back in front of the cage that jailed Kurama. He didn't know what happened until Kurama started explaining. Don't worry kid, you're alright you just fell unconscious after I started rewriting your DNA. While you're here I want you to sign this Kurama placed a scroll with a kanji for fox on it in front of Naruto. It's the fox summoning contract so that you can call my kin to help you in battle, explained Kurama as Naruto signed the contract. Awesome this is going to be awesome, by the way did you decide what bloodline you are going to give me? Asked Naruto curiously. Kurama just gave him a foxy grin before answering. You know the body of an Uzumaki is truly amazing, any normal human would most likely be killed if I try to change their DNA. But you I was able to give you two bloodlines before your body would start to shut down. Naruto just looked at him in disbelief, one bloodline would have been awesome, but two would just make him crazy with excitement. Stop stalling which did you give me? Asked Naruto barely able to keep his excitement contained. You should consider yourself lucky, normally I would hate these two bloodlines I'm giving you. But I want to see the looks on the faces of those damn villagers when you reveal the two bloodlines of their most prestigious clans, grinned Kurama. You mean? Naruto was interrupted by Kurama who finally told him. That's right I gave you the Mokuten bloodline of the Shadam Hokage, and a fully matured Sharingan answered Kurama with a little venom in his voice when he mentioned the Ichiha clan's bloodline. Naruto was just speechless with the two strongest bloodlines in the world, Mokuten and the Sharingan, and he was able to use them both at the same time. He couldn't wait to wake up and start training. So how long have I been unconscious? Asked Naruto. Around two days, don't worry you should be waking up any second now, said Kurama. But that Kurama went back to sleep and Naruto waited to wake up and train with his new powers. But the new dog. The Kashi had been tailing Naruto and the scent ended when they reached a river, he continued searching for two days, only to find nothing and start heading back to Kanoha to report to the Hokage. He couldn't believe how he failed. He felt he failed his sensei by not protecting his legacy. As he made his way back to Kanoha he could only hope that Naruto would return to the village. But Naruto. Naruto had just woken up and he was feeling amazing, not only did he have two new bloodlines, he was going to start training today. Hirama told him how he had a large amount of chakra and already had low reserves at the age of six due to him being sealed inside him. Currently Naruto was practicing the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone technique. Kurama said if he could master this it would make training 10 times easier. Kurama sensei, when do you think I can start training with my bloodlines? Asked Naruto. Soon first we will need to break into the Achiha and Senju compounds and look for information on how to properly use them. After a few hours of training Naruto finally mastered the cage bunch and no jutsu and collapsed in exhaustion. Hit tomorrow we should go back to the village so we can continue our training. Alright we leave tomorrow morning responded Naruto before falling onto the sweet bliss of sleep. Next day Hokage Tower. The next afternoon Sandame Hokage was sitting at his desk reading a small orange book with a perverted smile and a small nosebleed. He was so into the book, he never noticed the figure in front of his desk. I never knew you were a pervert. Jiji smirked at Naruto. Saratobi paled when he looked over his book and saw a smirking Naruto with his hand crossed over his chest. Sandame quickly compassed himself and tried to save what little dignity he had by hiding the book and looking as if nothing happened. Naruto sweat dropped when Saratobi put the book away and whistled as if nothing happened. Naruto decided to move on and began talking. I guess you want to know what happened right. The old Hokage looked at him and nodded his head. Well let's start at the beginning when I was kicked out of the orphanage I was wandering the streets and six drunks came out of nowhere and started chasing me. I tried to get away, but I was forced into an alley and got knocked out. Then I woke up somewhere far away in the forest. Naruto hoped the old Hokage would buy his story. This morning he had been told by Kurama to not mention his involvement or their conversation. The old Hokage was listening intently to every word Naruto said, and when Naruto finished he took a large drag from his pipe. Sandane decided to believe Naruto and put his faith in him. Very well Naruto-kun, I'm sorry that you got kicked out. I have already made arrangements for you in a new apartment. Sandane was relieved that Naruto hadn't killed those men on purpose and handed him the keys and address to the apartment. Gigi, I have a request for Naruto. 
Sandame's ears perked up. What kind of request was Naruto-kun? I want to enroll in the academy and learn how to be a ninja like Naruto, he didn't need the academy to learn how to be a ninja, but he did need an excuse of how he was becoming more powerful. Very well Naruto-kun, I will enroll you next semester in 4 months, until then you will have some free time. Thank you Jiji Naruto bowed before he left with a smirk on his face. After Naruto left Saratobi had taken his book out once again and started giggling perversely, with a small trickle of blood going down his nose. Four months later. Over the past four months, Naruto had used the time to train with the help of Kurama and Shadow clones. He had started by improving his chakra control, by making dozens of clones perform the tree and water walking exercises. He would then do physical exercises himself because clones couldn't transfer physical activity back to the original. While the clones did the exercises, he would have Kurama take the consciousness of a clone and have it teach him the basics of Kitsune style tojutsu, which would depend on quick devastating attacks before withdrawing. Kurama also started teaching him Kitsune style kinjutsu, which focused on performing quick attacks and taking advantage of openings. Naruto was also learning kinjutsu from Kurama, although he didn't know advanced kinjutsu, he did know enough from his time spent as a prisoner and two very powerful seal masters. Naruto was currently getting dressed in his black anbu pants, blue sandals, fingerless gloves, red t-shirt, with a black jonin style vest on top. Naruto then reached for his Ria's Burtu, Hellraiser blade, that Kurama had given him forged by the foxes, he placed the katana inside a seal painted on his arm. He couldn't put it on his back because he didn't want people to ask questions. He also checked his other two seals on his left and right wrist that held shuriken and kunai respectively. If there was one thing he hated about his new change, it was that he didn't eat as much ramen as before. Kurama had told him that ramen was unhealthy and the number one reason he was so short, so he was forced to give up ramen and only allowed to eat it once a week, but that didn't mean he could eat 40 bowls once a week. Naruto finished preparing and started making his way down the street toward the academy, he ignored the glares and mutterings of the villagers. Keep talking you ignorant bastards, one day I'll show you and the rest of this damn village a real demon thought Naruto with an evil smirk. Don't worry kid, they won't know what hit them when you're done with them said Kurama. Academy Classroom. As Naruto entered the class he could see that they all stood silent when he entered the room, he just ignored them and made his way to an empty row to take a seat. After five minutes a boy with a puppy on his head walked toward Naruto. He had messy brown hair, sharp black eyes with vertical slit-like pupils, pronounced canine teeth, and red fang markings on his cheeks. Everyone stopped to look at the two. Kiba had thought that if he picked on Naruto he would instantly be popular and make more friends, how wrong he was. Hey what do you think you're doing here, that's my chair said Kiba. Naruto responded emotionlessly get lost mud I don't want to have to deal with you. Kiba was pissed at how the class loser dismissed him. Who do you think you are, you're just some no-name loser with no parents, so why don't you go back to the orphanage? Naruto was usually very calm and insults wouldn't faze him, but he knew if he didn't take care of this idiot now, he would probably get picked on for the next six years. As Kiba continued taunting and insulting him, Naruto slowly got up from his chair. What's wrong you're gonna cry. Kiba never finished his sentence as Naruto grabbed him by the throat and lifted him into the air. Kiba started struggling to breathe and clawed at Naruto's hand. Listen to me mutt, I'm not going to take your or anyone else's shit, so I got one thing to tell you and everyone else who thinks it's smart to mess with me, leave me alone, and I'll leave you alone, if you don't them your parents are going to find themselves attending your funeral. You got that said Naruto with a large amount of Kurama's kai flooding the room. Kiba only nodded dumbly before he was released and dropped on the ground as he took deep breaths. Everyone was just silent, shaking in fear at what had happened, everyone now knew not to mess with the blonde. Just then two Chunin entered the strangely quiet room, wondering what had happened that everyone was so quiet. They soon started the roll call and stopped at Naruto's name and looked at him. He knew they were probably haters and knew this would be a bad year. Just then one of the teachers started talking. Good morning students, my name is Aruka and this is Mizuki, we will be you academy teachers and use the next six years training you in the basics of being a ninja. Now let's start by going over what chakra is lectured Aruka. Aruka then started lecturing, but Naruto had already nodded off and ignored them, knowing it was nothing important. At the end of the day he left the academy and headed home to make dinner. He knew it would be a long six years. Chapter 3. Massacre and Bloodlines. Two years later. Over the last two years Naruto had gone through rigorous training mastering Kurama's Kitsune Tojutsu and Kinjutsu styles. He had also broken into the Senju clan compound and made copies of Senju Hashirama's Mokuten scrolls to learn from, he knew he couldn't steal them because they might blame him if only from their blind hatred. He was able to infiltrate the compound only because the clan was all but extinct and had a few patrols. 
The Achiha clan was another story, Naruto hadn't been able to infiltrate their compound because they had a lot of alert members patrolling from the inside. He decided he would have to wait for a while before he could infiltrate and learn more about his Sharingan. Naruto was currently in his apartment returning from training in his Mokuten bloodline, he was about to go to sleep before Kurama started talking. Hit do you sense that? Naruto stopped for a minute and started using his sensory skill he gained from Kurama. Yeah, I sense a large amount of death and a scent of blood Naruto thought with a bloodthirsty grin. Aside from increased sensory abilities, Naruto also gained a large bloodlust from Kurama's increased chakra output. Without missing a beat Naruto made his way toward the location that had a strong scent of blood. The Chiha clan compound. Naruto arrived at the Achiha clan compound, he made his way inside and was shocked to see that there were dead bodies littering the streets. It looks like a massacre, I wonder who killed them? Thought Naruto. Whoever it is I want to meet them and shake their hand said Kurama, happy that someone finally decided to destroy the cursed clan. Just then Naruto sensed that someone was nearing him and he quickly hid behind some nearby trash cans. He then saw the person was no other than Sasuke, who was looking at the dead bodies that filled the streets. Sasuke started running down the street to what looked like the clan head estate, Naruto decided to follow him. When Sasuke went inside he could hear some voices then a scream of pain, after five minutes he saw a tall figure wearing an Anbu outfit leaving the house and Sasuke following after him. They started talking, but Naruto could care less as he made his way toward the Achiha clan archives and went inside. There he saw shelves of scrolls, he knew this archive held every ever copy by an Achiha and a lot more. He made 20 clones, and they started making copies of the scrolls. After he was done he could sense that large groups of Anbu were approaching, and he wanted to be as far away from here as possible, he dispelled the clones taking a minute to adjust to the memory headache and made his way out of the clan undetected. He left the compound with a huge smile and a large amount of memorization to master. Next day. When Naruto woke up the following morning he did his normal routine of getting dressed and eating a healthy breakfast. When he reached the academy he hid inside an alley and made a shadow clone and it left to attend the academy. Naruto hated going to the academy because the academy instructors hated him, he was actually a brilliant student, but he suspected they sabotaged his grades, and it caused him to hold the dead last position for the last two years. Since they decided to do that he decided to train instead go to the academy. He started to make his way toward training ground 44 or the the forest of death where he usually trained. Once there he opened the scrolls that contained the jutsus that he stole from the Achiha clan the previous day. The first scroll had the kanji for earth, the second had the kanji for water, and the third had the kanji for wind, and the last had the kanji for fire. The reason he had four affinities is because of the genetic modification Kurama had given him. He had an affinity to water and earth because of his Mokuten bloodline, he also had a fire affinity because of his Sharingan bloodline, and his wind affinity came from his original affinity had Kurama not changed his DNA. He created 300 clones and had them split into groups of 50. The first 50 would strengthen their earth affinity by using a leaf and pouring it into a leaf until it crumbled into dirt. The second 50 would strengthen their water affinity by pouring water chakra into a leaf until it was completely soaked. The third group of 50 would strengthen their wind affinity by cutting a leaf in half using wind chakra. The fourth group would strengthen their fire affinity by burning a leaf using fire chakra. The last 100 would do the tree climbing exercise to improve his chakra control. As he left the clones to their training, he started doing his physical exercises and his kenjutsu and tojutsu katas. Halfway through the training he sensed a chakra signature, he ignored it, thinking it was one of the forest's many inhabitants. He wished he didn't because the next second he found himself wrapped up by snakes. He could easily escape, but he wanted to know who was stupid enough to attack him. Relax kid, whoever it is, I don't sense any malicious intent in them assured Kurama. Naruto calmed down, but once again tensed up when he felt someone press themselves against his back and hold a kunai to his cheek. Well, what do we have here a little boy alone in this big bad forest, tell me what brings you here little boy. Said a mysterious voice. Naruto looked back and saw light brown, pupil-less eyes, and black hair which had a blue tint to it, which was styled in a short, spiky, fan ponytail. She was wearing a tan overcoat with a purple inseam, and complete with a fitted mesh bodysuit that stretches from her neck down to her thighs. She wears a dark orange miniskirt, as well as a forehead protector, a small pendant that looks like a snake fang on a thick cord. I was training before you rudely interrupted me. Naruto responded emotionlessly. The woman only smirked. Well, aren't you the brave one, but a little boy like you shouldn't be training in this forest. Where I train is none of your concern, now would you please get the hell off me before I get angry. Naruto started to get angry. Well I'll tell you one thing kid, you got balls. Besides I'm the sexy and single Midarashi Anko, what's your name kid? Asked Anko as she retracted the snakes and got off Naruto. 
My name is Yuzumaki Naruto, now if you'll excuse me I have to get back to training said Naruto, as he left to find a new training spot. Unfortunately Anko had other plans and started following him and watched him as he trained. After a while Naruto was getting annoyed that he wasn't getting any privacy. He knew if he didn't lose her he wouldn't be able to train seriously, but then he thought she might be good for something. Anko-san would you like to have a spar? Asked Naruto. Anko looked at the kid, she really didn't know what he was thinking he could take her on, but then she accepted thinking it would be over in 10 seconds. How wrong she was. Sure I'll spar with you, I'll make sure I don't hurt you too badly, Anko said with a smirk. Naruto got a tick mark on his head, he hated being called a brat and hated being underestimated. But he knew that if she underestimated him, he could beat her. Naruto got into his stance and Anko into hers. Naruto decided to start off by using his speed and send a roundhouse kick toward her head. Past was all Anko thought as she ducked under the kick and sent an uppercut toward Naruto's head, which he dodged by leaning his head back. He then sent a flurry of punches which Anko had a hard time dodging because they were too fast. Anko jumped back to put some distance between them. Not bad, but not enough to beat me, said Anko, but on the inside she was thinking how he was so fast. Naruto didn't say anything as he used his superior speed to once again get in front of her and punch her in the stomach, she dodged and fought back, but Naruto was able to easily dodge them using his speed. He then saw she had an opening and took advantage of it by hitting her with a chakra-infused punch and sending her flying toward the tree. Anko couldn't believe a little beat her, she thought how strong he was. He looked to be only 8 years old, and he beat her. As she looked up she saw Naruto offering her a hand up, she took it, even though the only thing hurt was her pride. That was a helpful spar, Anko-san, thank you, Naruto said with a small smile. Anko just smirked you got lucky, that won't happen the next time we spar. I hope not or else you wouldn't be a very good sparring partner, responded Naruto with his own smirk. As he helped Anko he sensed that the clone from the academy had dispelled. It's been fun Anko-san, but I have to get going, I'll see you tomorrow. Later, see you tomorrow, said Anko with a smile. Once he got far away enough, he created a clone and dispelled it to relay orders to the others and told them to dispel 10 at each 5 minute interval. He left the forest with a small smile, thinking he had made a friend, he only hoped she didn't get in his way when he got his revenge on the village. 4 years later. Naruto sat on his bed as he crossed off the final he had mastered, over the last 4 years he had mastered every he stole from the Ichiha clan archives the night of the massacre. He looked at the 6 scrolls on his bed with a feeling of accomplishment as he read each. The scrolls had the kanji wind, fire, earth, water, mokuten, and jinjutsu. Wind jutsu. Wind release stream, fton. Kamikaze, wind style. Divine wind, fton. Rankton, wind style. Drilling air bullet, fton. Tatapa, wind style. Great breakthrough, fton. Atsugai, wind style. Pressure damage, sarasu fk, wind slash. Fire jutsu. Kaiten. Heisekishm, fire style. Burning ash, Katen. Rika no Jutsu, Fire Style. Dragon Flame Jutsu, Katen. Correctan, Fire Style. Fire Dragon Bullet, Katen. Rika no Jutsu, Fire Style. Fire Dragon Jutsu, Katen. Nkakak no Jutsu, Fire Style. Fireball Jutsu, Katen. Msenka no Jutsu, Fire Style. Phoenix Flower Jutsu, Katen. Cage Bunshin, Fire Style. Shadow Clone. Earth Jutsu. Oten. Cage Bunshin, Earth Style. Shadow Clone, Earth Release. Destructive Rising Rock Pillars, Doton. Shinj Xanchu no Jutsu, Earth Style. Double Suicide Decapitation Technique, Doton. Desecaric, Earth Style. Earth Dragon, Doton. Directon, Earth Style. Earth Dragon Bullet, Doton. Dorikatsu, Earth Style. Earth Flow Divide, Doton. Dorik Taiga, Earth Style. Great Mud River, Doton. Orikeki, Earth Style. Mud Wall, Doton. Dorixum, Earth Style. Earth Flow Spears. Water Jutsu. Izubunshin no Jutsu, Water Clone Jutsu, Surum no Jutsu, Water Prison Jutsu, Suetan. Bakusui Shma, Water Style. Exploding Water Shock Wave, Suetan. Daibakufu no Jutsu, Water Style. Giant Vortex Jutsu, Suetan. Tepndama, Water Style. Gunshot, Suetan. Mizarapa, Water Style. Wild Water Wave, Suetan. Surikan no Jutsu, Water Style. Water Dragon Jutsu. Lokuten Jutsu. Lokubunshin no Jutsu, Wood Style. Wood Clone Jutsu, Mokuten Hijutsu. Jukai Kantan, Wood Style Secret Technique. Nativity of a World of Trees, Mokuten. Shichika no Jutsu, Wood Style. Four Pillar House Jutsu, Mokuten. Makajmiki, Wood Style. Domed Wall Jutsu. Okage Shiki Jijin Jutsu Kakuin Nitin Sushu Hokage Style 60 Year Old Technique Enclosed Hermitage Entering Society with Bliss Bringing Hands, Mokuten. Nkushinku, Wood Style. 
wooden tentacles. In Jutsu. Akuanjo no Jutsu, Infinite Darkness Jutsu, Majin. Jigoku Kunka no Jutsu, Demonic Illusion. Descending Hell Jutsu, Majin. Nij Kakoni Arazu no Jutsu, Demonic Illusion. Double Fall Surroundings Jutsu, Majin. Kakoni Arazu no Jutsu, Demonic Illusion. Fall Surroundings Jutsu, Majin. Narakumi no Jutsu, Demonic Illusion. Hell Viewing Jutsu, Majin. Jubaku Satsu, Demonic Illusion. Three Binding Death. Naruto started thinking about what had happened the past four years. In the academy he was still the dead last not for lack of trying, but because of the instructor's blind hatred. Tomorrow is the final exam. All he had to do was pass, and he would be a genin and not have to deal with them anymore. His thoughts then shifted to Anko over the last four years they had been using the forest of death as their training ground and sparring, they had both helped each other become stronger, he really thought of Anko as his best friend. Then there was the council, over the past four years the council had begun to become suspicious of him because he stayed under the radar. Recently he had noticed it was more difficult to lose his Anbu overseers, and he had to be more careful where he picked for training. He was happy to say that he was at a least low Jonin level currently, and high Jonin level when using Kurama's chakra. He was knocked out of his thoughts by Kurama. It stopped daydreaming, it's time for you to take that test said Kurama. Naruto only nodded and put his hands in a ram seal and left in a swirl of leaves, Shunshin. He arrived in an alley near the academy and made his way inside. He entered the room and saw everyone was silent at his arrival. He had used the past four years to instill fear in all of them, and he was successful as no one messed with him. He looked down the row and saw Sasuke brooding and looking out the window. Ever since his clan was killed by who he later found out was Sasuke's older brother, Itachi, he has been silent and dark which in turn made him gain more fangirls. Naruto shivered at the word fangirls, he absolutely hated them, they were a disgrace in the ninja world. He had to guess that Kanoha had the biggest fangirl population. Speaking of fangirls, Naruto watched as Sasuke's two biggest entered the class seemingly racing through the door. Ah take that Eno pig, I win again screeched at the pink-haired fangirl named Sakura. In your dream's forehead, I had my foot in the door, a girl named Eno said back. Both kept arguing back and forth until they saw that their Sasuke-kun was sitting alone. They both raced to claim the chair on the right. Unfortunately or fortunately Kiba sat down next to Sasuke before they could reach. Kiba Baka got out of that chair so I could sit next to Sasuke-kun. Screeched Sakura for everyone to hear. Kiba didn't like that he was being ordered out of his chair by some fangirl. His canine-like brain told him that they should be demanding Sasuke leave his chair so both could sit on either side of him. He wanted to be the alpha dog in the class but saw that Sasuke was the obstacle in front of him. What does Kiba do? Kiba jumped on the desk and glared at Sasuke, both were locked in a staring contest until someone behind Kiba accidentally bumped him and he fell forward. The class was in slow motion as Kiba's lips fell on Sasuke's. Both stayed in that position for two seconds before both jumped away and tried to get the taste of each other out of their mouth. As Kiba spit out the taste of Sasuke, Naruto felt the Kai radiating off all the girls in class toward Kiba, apparently they were not pleased that their Sasuke-kun's first kiss was stolen by Kiba. They all pounced on Kiba and beat the crap out of him leaving him in a broken heap. Naruto's sweat dropped when he picked a scent of pheromones on Kiba, apparently he was turned on when the girls all beat him. Sick fuck, how weirder can you get? Thought Naruto. You'd be surprised kid, I've seen it all with that said Kurama started sending Naruto images of seriously messed up things he'd witnessed over the years. By the end Naruto was questioning his sanity. Everything was quiet when Aruka entered the class along with Mizuki. Okay class today is the day you will take your final exam, if you pass you will be given your A10B official genin of Konoha. The first part of the exam was a written test which Naruto easily passed. The second part was a throwing weapons test, Naruto made sure to not score too high and avoid suspicion. The final test was being able to perform the three basic academy, which Naruto aced to the dislike of Iruka and Mizuki. As he made his way out of the academy, his advanced hearing picked up what sounded like Mizuki. As he got closer he used the chameleon jutsu to avoid detection. It looked like Mizuki was talking to a girl named Ami that failed the exam. You know, Ami, if you really want to pass, I can give you some extra credit said Mizuki. Really Mizuki sensei Ami said, barely able to contain her excitement. Sure all you have to do is pass a test that focuses on your infiltration and information gathering skills, you will need to sneak into the Hokage Tower, then steal the scroll of ceiling and bring it to me, and I will give you your aid, Mizuki said with an all too sweet smile. Alright Mizuki sensei, I won't let you down. Ami left to begin her task. Garama decided to make his presence known kid, you know what this means right? Yeah if I can steal that scroll from Mizuki, I can have all those added to my arsenal. The question is how do I do it? asked Naruto to himself. 
You should tail Mizuki after he leaves with the scroll. Once he is far away enough from the village you can kill him, memorize the scroll and destroy the evidence, suggested Kurama. Naruto thought about the plan and decided it was the best course of action. He knew that Mizuki would probably not let Ami live once he got the scroll, but he didn't care what happened to anyone in this Kami-forsaken village. Later that night. Currently Naruto was tailing Ami as she carried Konoha's forbidden scroll of sealing, Naruto had to make sure he stayed far away enough that he wasn't seen by the Hokage's crystal ball. Hit there is someone following the girl warned Kurama. Naruto nodded and made a seal less clone to continue following Ami, and he stayed behind to delay whoever was following Ami. After a few minutes he saw all the people Aruka was. He must be trying to catch Ami, too bad I can't let that happen said Naruto as he started a sequence of hand seals. Naruto activated his Sharingan as he finished the seals and said Mokuten. Nkushinku, wood style. Wooden tentacles. Wooden tentacles wrapped around Aruka holding him down, before he could shout out for help, Naruto jumped down from the tree and looked him in the eyes, placing him in and falling asleep. Nice job kid you should probably catch up to that girl. Naruto made his way toward where the clone wars, he arrived just in time to see Mizuki throw a giant shuriken and kill Ami. Naruto didn't really care that she was dead all he cared about was getting that scroll. Mizuki jumped down from the tree and took the scroll making his way north of Konoha, with Naruto silently following. Three hours later. Mizuki and the tailing Naruto were currently crossing the border of fire country and rice country. As soon as Mizuki crossed the border, Naruto jumped in front of him. Well what do we have here, a traitor Chunin, and you have Konoha's forbidden scroll of sealing. What joy. Said Naruto with a bloodthirsty smile. Mizuki was shocked that Naruto was here, he had expected Anbu, but not Naruto. After his shock he addressed Naruto. What are you doing here demon? Yelled Mizuki angrily. What am I doing here? Why I'm here to take that scroll from you, of course answered Naruto. Mizuki laughed you think you can defeat me, you just a little genin. Naruto gave him another bloodthirsty smile oh really, I think you're wrong. Now hand over the scroll and I might give you a painless death. Don't think you're better than me, demon. When I give this scroll to Arachimaru-sama he will reward me with power and money. Do you want to know why the village hates you? Mizuki said with an evil grin. Naruto looked uninterested no, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. Not put off by his non-interest. It's because 12 years ago when the nine-tailed fox was defeated the Yandane didn't kill it, he sealed it inside you. You're the nine-tailed fox. Naruto just grinned I know, and it's only fitting you die while I use his power. Mizuki was shocked by Naruto's response, what shocked him more was the intense evil he felt as Naruto drew on Kurama's chakra and saw how his whisker marks darkened, his hands turned into claws, his eyes become slits, his fangs lengthen, and a red chakra cloak in the shape of a fox, with one tail swishing behind it developed. Mizuki was beyond scared, he was cowering in fear as he witnessed Naruto's transformation. Are you scared of Mizuki team? I want this to be the last thing you see before I send you to hell. Now die. Screamed demonic Naruto. Naruto lunged at Mizuki who was knocked out of his fear paralysis and managed to dodge. Mizuki started running deeper into rice country but didn't get far as he was grabbed by a red chakra hand that burst from the ground. He felt unimaginable pain as the chakra burned off his skin and threw him into a tree. He looked up from the tree and saw Naruto still in his demon cloak with a bloodthirsty smile on his face. Get away from me demon. Yelled Mizuki in fear. Do you really think I'm going to do that Mizuki team? Chuckled Naruto darkly. Before Mizuki could respond, Naruto once again sent a chakra hand to grab him and rip the scroll from his back. Once he had the scroll, he threw Mizuki into the sky and did a couple of quick hand signs. Pain. Nkakik no jutsu, fire style. Fireball jutsu thought Naruto as he sent a large fireball at Mizuki that burned him to a crisp because he couldn't dodge. He opened the scroll and activated his Sharingan to memorize all the information. He was disappointed to see that most of the jutsu in the scroll he already knew from the Achiha clan archives. Then four in particular caught his attention. The Sengen, A rank jutsu, personally created by the Yandame Hokage, Horatian no jutsu, S rank, created by Yandame, Clone Great Explosion, A rank, created by Ichiha Itachi, Kuchius. Ido Tensei, S rank in jutsu, and created by the Nidame Hokage. These are all A and S rank. Although the Ido Tensei and the Horatian will be difficult to master without extensive kinjutsu knowledge, I can start learning the other when I get back to Konoha. After using a quick fire jutsu to destroy the scroll, he made his way back to Konoha to receive his team assignment. As he made his way back to Konoha he couldn't help but think how he would one day get his revenge and destroy Konoha. Chapter 4. New Team and Heritage. Hokage's Office. Saratobi Hiruzen was having a bad day, having to deal with paperwork and a paranoid council who were suspicious of Naruto because he hadn't been causing problems. 
Naruto was something else that Sirotobi was worried about. Ever since Naruto was attacked and went missing for three days, he had turned quiet and uncaring. Sirotobi also noticed that he no longer visited him or talked about being Hokage. Sandane wondered if Naruto hated the village, he crushed that thought, Naruto would always love the village. That's what he kept telling himself despite the truth being far from his hope. Another thing that bothered him was that Mizuki had stolen the Forbidden Scroll of Sealing and had escaped the Land of Fire. He only hoped that the scroll didn't fall into the wrong hands. How wrong he was. Academy. Naruto reached the academy just in time, he was beyond tired, he had spent the entire night coming traveling back to the village in order to be here for team assignments. As Aruka entered the class he could see that he was none the wiser, he made sure that when he placed Aruka under the that he forgot everything that had happened. The only way he would be able to remember would be to have Yamanaka unlock the memory, but he doubted Aruka would let that happen. Alright class I am happy to say that everyone here passed and am proud to say that we are no longer teacher and student, but comrades in arms. Aruka smiled but frowned when he saw Naruto. Comrade in arms, yeah right. Naruto scoffed. Alright I will now start announcing teams announced Aruka. Team 1 will be made up of. Naruto started ignoring Aruka since he didn't care. He looked around the room to see who had graduated. Nara Shikamaru, heir to the Nara clan and major slacker. Akamichi Chimjai, heir to the Akamichi clan and Shikamaru's best friend. Inyazuka Kiba, heir to the Inyazuka and the loud mouth. Hayuga Hinata, heiress to the Hayuga clan and a total coward. How she will be a clan head is beyond me thought Naruto as he continued surveying the class. Yamanaka Ino, heiress to the Yamanaka clan, Sasuke self-proclaimed love and second in command of the Sasuke fan club. Aburam Shino, heir to the Aburam clan and a very isolated person much like himself. Haruno Sakura, a nameless civilian playing ninja, one of the most annoying people in class next to Kiba and whose mother has a position on the council. Speaking of Sakura's mother, I have to make sure I have my revenge on her before I leave this Kami forsaken village once and for all. Last but not least, the class emo and possible homosexual, Ichiha Sasuke. As much as he and Kurama hated the Ichiha, Naruto could make use of him if he could find something to use against him. He would have to sneak into the Hokage Tower and look for information. There were other students, but most were not named orphans with any clan or power. Team 7 will be made up of Haruno Sakura, Ichiha Sasuke. Sakura jumped from her chair cheering. And Uzumaki Naruto, a jonin sensei, will be Haddock. Kakashi Sakura sat down in disappointment. Naruto was slightly smiling, with the Ichiha on his team, he would be able to find ways to manipulate him. The mate will be made up of Inuzuka Kiba, Hayuga Hinata, and Aburam Shino, and Jonin Sensei will be Iki Kurunai. Team 9 is still in circulation, so Team 10 will be made up of Nara Shikamaru, Yamanaka Ino, and Akamichi Chimjai Your Jonin Sensei will be Sirotobi Asuma. Once Aruka finished he told them they could leave for lunch, Naruto decided to go to the Hokage Tower and look up that information, since he knew security would be light due to the all-day monthly meeting. Hokage Tower. Naruto entered the archive room and created shadow clones to start searching through the filing cabinets. After a half hour of searching he decided to search in the Hokage's office instead. He entered and started something, after five minutes of searching he found a cabinet, but it was locked with a seal on it. He channeled enough of Kurama's chakra to break the seal, but not enough to be detected by the Anbu guards. Inside he found two files that made his eyes widen to the size of dinner plates. The first was a secret Anbu mission file, inside was a mission accepted by Ichiha Itachi. The objective, exterminate the Ichiha clan for planning a coup against the Hokage. At the bottom of the page was the signature of the Sandame Hokage and his three advisors, Mitakado Himura, Yudatain Kaharu, and Shimura Danzm. He knew with this he could easily manipulate Sasuke to destroy Konoha. In the Megakur, Hidden Rain, a masked stranger sneezed as he thought of ways to manipulate a chess Sasuke to do his bidding. The second file Naruto read was the most surprising, it was a top secret file on his heritage. Inside the file it named his mother and father. His mother was Yuzumaki Kishina, heiress of the Yuzumaki clan and last known Yuzumaki. His father was Namaka's Minato, Yandame Hokage and clan head of Konoha's richest clan. What shocked him more was his inheritance, the money from the Namaka's clan holdings and business combined with the Yuzumaki clan holdings, he was funding over 50% of Konoha. Naruto was furious, no he was beyond furious he was livid. How dare they keep his inheritance from him and have him living in a shithole of an apartment. He then realized something, if he took his money from Konoha's banks, he would send Konoha into an economic depression. He smirked as he now had leverage to hold against the council and Konoha as a whole. He then turned to Kurama who was quiet the entire time. Did you know about my heritage? Asked Naruto. No I had no idea Kurama lied through his teeth, he knew if he said yes, Naruto would turn his fury on him. 
You should start making your way back to the academy, it's almost been an hour, suggested Kurama. Naruto nodded and made his way out of the tower undetected and headed toward the academy. A range of emotions were going through Naruto's mind, anger, betrayal, relief, and satisfaction. Academy. As Naruto waited for his Jonin sensei with the other students, he couldn't help but think what the next step would be. Just then Kurama made a suggestion. I have an idea kid, since sooner or later you're going to leave this village and all that money could come in handy. I suggest you confront the old monkey and tell him you know about your parents and inheritance, you should demand your inheritance. He will probably call a council meeting and when they refuse you can threaten them with going to the fire daimyo who will probably be in your favor. Either way you get your money and Kanoha gets screwed. You know Kurama, that's a genius plan, I could kiss you. Thought Naruto excitedly. Kurama sweat dropped I think I'll pass. As Naruto came out of his thoughts he saw that the only ones still in the class were him and his team. He was wondering where his Jonin sensei could be. With Kakashi. As Kakashi looked at the memorial stone, he couldn't help but feel annoyed and happy at the same time. He was happy because he would have his sensei's legacy, Naruto, on his team. He was annoyed because yesterday the council had demanded he teach the last Acha, their logic being he would be able to apprentice Asuke and teach him all his techniques. Another reason he was annoyed is that the pink-haired council member Hironosuke had additionally demanded he make sure Sakura wasn't pushed too hard. It seemed the only good thing he got out of this team was the chance to train Naruto. He looked at his watch and decided now was a good time to meet his team, he disappeared in a swirl of leaves to the academy. Academy. The classroom door opened to show a man who had silver spiky hair and had a mask covering his face. He only stuck his head in the door before telling them to meet him on the roof and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto didn't bother standing as he disappeared in a swirl of leaves, stunning Sakura and Sasuke. Roof. Kakashi was leaning against the railing of the roof when Naruto appeared in a swirl of leaves and sat on the stairs. He knows the shunshin. I wondered where he learned it, the academy profile said he was the dead last who barely passed the final exam, though Kakashi was impressed with Naruto's ability. A few minutes later they were joined by Sakura and Sasuke who sat on the stairs as well. Kakashi was the first to speak. Well my first impression of you guys is I hate you, Kakashi said, Sakura and Sasuke frowned, Naruto remained emotionless. Why don't we start by saying our names, likes, dislikes, hobbies, and dreams? Why don't you start sensei? Said Sakura. Alright, my name is Hata Kakashi. You don't need to know that, my dislikes. That either, my hobbies. You're too young to know about it in my dream. I don't have one. Okay you pinky your next said Kakashi. Sakura was annoyed at her nickname but obeyed. My name is Hirono Sakura. She looked at Sasuke and blushed that my dislikes are Eno Pig and. She looked at Naruto and gulped in fear. She looked at Sasuke and giggled and my dream is. She once again looked at Sasuke and blushed red and giggled. Great a fangirl thought Kakashi with a mental sigh. Okay broody you're next. Sasuke scowled at Kakashi but nevertheless complied my name is Ichiha Sasuke, I don't have a lot of likes and I have a lot of dislikes, I don't have any hobbies and I don't have a dream, more of an ambition to kill a certain man and revive my clan. Great a broody avenger thought Kakashi as he turned to Naruto your turn blondie. Naruto kept his emotionless mask and responded my name is Uzumaki Naruto and that's all you need to know. Everyone, especially Kakashi, frowned since when did he become so cold and distant. Okay then know that we know absolutely nothing about one another, I should tell you to meet me at training ground 7 for the genin exam, and a word of advice don't eat breakfast, you'll just throw it up. But that said Kakashi disappeared in a puff of smoke before they could ask any questions. They all went their separate ways. Sasuke went to go train as Sakura hounded him for a date and Naruto left to go confront the Hokage. Hokage Tower. Saratobi was having a good day, he was sitting back and enjoying his little red book because he had finished his paperwork. He didn't know that what was approaching his office would give him a lot more paperwork. Naruto approached the Hokage's tower and entered completely ignoring the secretary screaming for him to come back and reach the office before the Anbu could stop him. He kicked open the door and entered the room. Saratobi was shocked and he quickly put the book away before anyone could see, Saratobi also noticed the scowl on Naruto's face instead of the usual smile he used to have. Okage-sama, I have something very important to talk to you about, said Naruto, barely hiding his anger. Just then the Anbu entered the room but were stopped by the Sandame who told them to leave them. The Anbu exited the room and closed the door behind them, he then turned to Naruto with a serious face. What is it you want to talk about Naruto? Said Sandame without his usual grandfatherly tone. I would like to discuss the reason you thought that hiding my heritage from me. Finally losing his cool and giving in to his anger. Saratobi was shocked to say the least, he immediately turned on some privacy seals and turned to Naruto with some shame in his eyes. Do you know who your parents are? 
Naruto? Asked the aging leader. Yes I do. My mother was a Kanoichi named Uzumaki Kashina and was also the last of the known Uzumaki clan. Naruto walked to the window and looked at the Hokage monument and my father was none other than Minato Namika's Yandame Hokage of Konoha. Now Sirotobi was shocked and was trying to think how it was that Naruto found out the only ones that knew his heritage were Kakashi and Jiraiya. He wanted to be sure which one it was before he took any further action. Tell me who told you this Naruto. The only person who seemed to care about me Sirotobi thought he was talking about Kakashi before Naruto continued he has been with me my entire life and has been the only one there for me when I was alone. Sirotobi was confused as to who Naruto was talking about, Naruto saw his confusion and decided to explain further. His name is Kurama or as you would better know him, Kaiubi Naruto said calmly with no emotion. Sirotobi dropped his pipe when he mentioned Kaiubi thinking that the fox was influencing Naruto. Naruto you cannot trust a fox he will only use you and discard you when you are of no use to him, Sirotobi said, with a sort of pleading to get his point across the fox is evil and you must never trust it. Naruto got angry Kurama has been there for me more times than I can count, he was there for me when the villagers attacked me, he was there for me when I was lonely and he was there for me more times than you were Hokage-sama. Sirotobi had the decency to look ashamed before he looked up and addressed Naruto. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you Naruto, I have made a lot of mistakes in my life and I have regretted a lot of them, Sirotobi said in an apologizing manner. Well now you can at least fix one of them by giving me what is rightfully mine, I want my inheritance and my family's estate. Naruto I can give you the estate, but the inheritance is something I cannot give you, I'm sorry. Naruto lost his patience I don't care, I want what is mine and I will get it Sirotobi, call a council meeting because we had a chance to be civil and now you have forced my hand. Sirotobi looked at Naruto's cold emotionless blue eyes to see how serious he was. He sighed the council would be in an uproar when they heard about this. Very well Naruto follows me. Sirotobi leads Naruto out of the office and into a large chamber where he informs Anbu to summon the council. Anoha council room. One hour later. As the council gathered inside the room many wondered why they were called and the civilian side wondered why the demon was inside the room as well. Finally one of the elders, Yudatain Kaharu, decided to end the silence of Hokage-sama. Why have we been called here? Sirotobi took a drag of his pipe and spoke. I'm afraid I did not call this meeting Kaharu, but young Naruto pointed at a Naruto next to him who stood looking at the council with cold blue eyes. One of the civilian council members decided to speak next. What could the dem? Boy want that it would require a council meeting. Naruto was the next to speak up I called this meeting because I want what is mine, unfortunately Hokage-sama has refused to give it to me. Anzo was the next to speak up. What is it that you have requested, boy? Naruto turned his eyes in Danzo and spoke I want my inheritance, my birthright, the money in the Namikas and Uzumaki clan holdings. The civilian side broke into loud protest denying that Naruto was the heir to the Namikas clan and refusing to give him what was his. Nara Shikaku spoke next Hokage-sama. Is it true that Naruto is the heir to both clans' holdings? Sirotobi took a long drag from his pipe before speaking yes, it is true Naruto is the son of Uzumaki Kishina and Namika's Minato, I can give you my word that it is true as I was the one of three that knew Naruto's true heritage. The entire room was shocked by the civilian side more than the shinobi side, finally a pink-haired council member decided to make herself known. That's impossible Yandame-sama never had any children, and this boy is certainly not his son. Sirotobi looked at the woman with narrowed eyes. Are you saying my word is not good enough for a civilian? Sirotobi said with emphasis on civilians. The woman gulped and decided to sit down. Shikaku decided to speak again. Even if you are entitled to your inheritance, it makes up for 50% of Kanoha's economy and we would be sent into a depression if we just handed over that money to you. Naruto looked at Shikaku with narrowed eyes. So are you saying you won't be giving me what is rightfully mine? One of the civilians replied smugly that's right, what are you going to do now? Naruto just gave a small chuckle that confused everyone, the chuckle then turned into fun-blown laughter. The haha good then that means I can do this. Said Naruto with a sadistic grin. He started doing hand seals, which caused everyone to tense only to see him slam his hand on the ground and reveal a small fox. Hello Hideki I assume you have the response from the fire daimyo? Asked Naruto. The fox named Hideki nodded. Of course Naruto-sama, he had given me this for you to present to the council. The fox handed Naruto before saying farewell and dispelling. Everyone was shocked to say the least, the shinobi sighed because they had never seen a fox summoned and the civilian sighed because they heard that Naruto had received a letter from the fire daimyo. Naruto read the scroll before smiling and handing it to Sirotobi, who played upon reading it. Finally, losing patience, a civilian merchant spoke up. What does Hokage-sama say? 
Saratobi signed this document states that Uzumaki Naruto is to be given his full inheritance and is to be paid restitutions for his past attacks. If these are not met the daimyo will pull his funding from Konoha until they are. It even contains the official seal and signature of the fire daimyo. Everyone paled not only had Naruto managed to win his inheritance, he now had leverage over the village, should they not pay in full. The civilian side erupted in protest refusing to pay, while the shinobi side sighed in defeat, as they couldn't deny an order from the daimyo. Saratobi silenced the civilian side and turned to Naruto. Very well Naruto you win, come to my office and you can sign the paperwork. The civilians were about to argue, but some quick kai from Saratobi shut them up. Sandane dismissed the council and led Naruto to his office. Once inside the office Saratobi walked up to the picture of the yande man removed it revealing a safe. Saratobi opened it and took out three scrolls and a key. He handed them to Naruto before he sat down at his desk exhausted. Naruto looked at the scroll and the key then heard Saratobi speak. Those are the scrolls your father left you before he died. One is a letter from him, another is his two most famous, and the last is a sum of money. The key opens the Namaka's estate Saratobi handed Naruto a map so he would know where it was. The amount of money that both the Uzumaki and Namaka's clan has invested in Konoha banks amounts to 700 million Ryo, Konoha can pay you 500 million, well the 200 million you will receive from percentages from completed missions. Naruto only nodded as he turned to leave but stopped when Sirotobi spoke. What happened to you, Naruto? What happened to the boy that wanted to be Hokage and be acknowledged by the villagers? Naruto just looked at him with cold eyes and said that Naruto died when the villagers tried to kill him and now they will pay for their crimes. Without another word Naruto left in a swirl of leaves. Saratobi looked at the picture of Minato. I'm sorry Minato, I failed you. Saratobi put his head down in shame before starting the paperwork. But Naruto. Naruto reappeared in his apartment and started packing what little belongings he had. After packing he made his way to his new home. As he walked through the streets, he ignored the usual glares and whispers. Naruto only smirked at them as he walked into the upper districts of Konoha. He could sense that there were people following him, but he wanted them to see how he walked into their beloved Yandame's estate. He stood in front of the Namaka's estate and noticed the blood seal on the gate. He cut his thumb and smeared blood on the seal, he waited a few seconds before the gate opened and he entered the compound. He looked at the house in admiration, it was a two-story European-style house, it had a large front yard, and the backyard looked like a large training ground. He used the key Saratobi had given him and opened the door. Inside the house he couldn't help but be impressed at all the expensive appliances and furniture. He made his way to the second floor, he found six doors. Three doors were master bedrooms, two doors were a very large bedroom, and the final room was a large library study that contained very large amounts of scrolls and books. He took one of the books from a shelf and saw it was a book on advanced sealing techniques. With all these books I can probably become a seal master before I leave Konoha, these books will also help me complete the Horatian no Jutsu and the Ido Tensei, so I can use them with no problem thought Naruto. Before leaving the study to look at the basement he created 30 shadow clones. Ok here's what I want you to do, 10 will study advanced Fuenjutsu, 10 will research to complete the Horatian, and 10 will research to complete the Ido Tensei. With his orders given, the clones left to do their work and Naruto continued to the basement. As he reached the basement he saw that there was a heavy metal door with a blood seal, he spread blood on the seal and watched as the seal glowed and opened revealing a large armory. He looked at the katanas and tantos hanging on the walls. He also saw crates on the other side of the room, kunai, shuriken, explosive tags, containers of soldier pills and blood pills, flash and smoke bombs, and Horatian three-pronged kunai. This room had enough weapons to supply a civil war, but Naruto didn't look a gift horse in the mouth since these supplies will be useful for the destruction of the leaf. Well it's getting late and I should probably get some sleep for tomorrow's test. Naruto went upstairs and randomly chose one of the bedrooms to sleep in, at least while he was still in the village. Next day training ground 7. Sakura and Sasuke waited at training ground 7 for their sensei and blonde teammate. Naruto showed up wearing his black anbu pants, red t-shirt, fingerless gloves with metal plates, dark blue sandals, and a black and red camouflage vest. He walked toward the meeting and Apple looking at them with an emotionless face. You're late screeched Sakura. Naruto ignored her as he sat down and took out a book on advanced sealing. Sakura saw that he was ignoring her, her violent temper got the better of her rational fear, and she lunged at Naruto ready to punch him. Naruto saw this and dodged a punch, unsealed his sword, and put the sword at Sakura's throat. Naruto looked at Sakura with cold eyes ready to kill. What do you think you were trying to do Hirano? Sakura only gulped in fear as the realization of what she did set in. I'm sorry I won't do it again she said in fear of losing her life. Naruto didn't bother to acknowledge her apology, he resealed his sword and returned to his book. 
Sasuke watched the situation with interest, how could the dead son be so skilled? Sasuke had to admit that Sakura was weak, but Naruto showed skill that wouldn't belong to the dead last. Two hours passed and there was a large puff of smoke, which revealed Kakashi holding a clock and two bentos, for those that don't know what a bento is, it's basically a lunchbox. Yo. Greeted Kakashi with an eye smile. Sakura only screeched you're late. Well Sasuke looked at him annoyed and Naruto kept reading his book. Sorry I got lost on the road to life he lied. Everyone, even Naruto, sweat dropped at his horrible excuse. He went over to the three wooden posts and placed the bentos and a clock on them. He then turned to address the genin and took out two bells. Okay children, your objective to pass the test will be to take these bells from me said Kakashi, holding up two bells. But sensei there are only two bells, and there are three of us who ask Sakura. Very good Sakura, the reason for that is that whoever doesn't have a bell will be sent back to the academy. Also if you can't get them before the timer runs out, you will be tied to a post while I eat lunch at the mention of lunch two stomachs growled. Make sure you come after me with intent to kill or you won't get the bells. Kakashi readied the timer before yelling go. Everyone hit and began planning their next move. It doesn't make sense he said only two of us will pass, but I have never heard of a three-man squad. Wait a minute, of course I see the game you're playing, Kakashi taught Naruto with a grin as he figured out the true meaning of the test. Naruto began preparing accordingly and made some seal-less shadow clones to begin setting the trap. He grinned as he remembered that Kakashi said to come with the intent to kill. He would make him regret that. Chapter 5. Real Meaning and Mission to Wave. Training Ground 7. Naruto is up in a tree while he observes Kakashi reading an orange book, he uses his senses to locate Sasuke and Sakura. He sensed that Sasuke was up a tree and Sakura was hiding in the bushes. After a clone came to him and told him the trap was ready, he continued watching Kakashi and saw that Sasuke had made his move. Sasuke ran toward Kakashi and started using Tejutsu, Kakashi was impressed with his Tejutsu and even put his book away to be able to deflect his punches and kicks. Sasuke sent a roundhouse kick at Kakashi's head, which he grabbed. Sasuke then twisted his body to punch Kakashi, but failed when Kakashi caught his fist. Sasuke used this chance to grab the bells since Kakashi had his hands full. Jonin felt Sasuke touch the bells and immediately pushed him away, Sasuke landed on his feet and started a series of hand signs. Fire style. Fireball jutsu Sasuke mentally yelled. What a genin doesn't have enough chakra to do that jutsu thought Kakashi. When the fireball dispersed there was only a single crater and no Kakashi before Sasuke could search for Kakashi, he heard something under his feet. Earth style. Double suicide decapitation technique a hand shot from the ground and grabbed Sasuke's foot, it dragged him down into the earth until nothing was left but a head. Kakashi appeared in front of Sasuke with an eye smile, not bad for a genin, your tojutsu could use a little work. Get me out of here. Yelled Sasuke in anger. No I don't think so, Kakashi said with an eye smile and walked away. Kakashi hid in the trees as he looked down on Sakura, not sensing someone was watching him. She seemed to be frantically looking for Sasuke. Kakashi decided to cast a spell on Sakura to see how she would react, the result was pathetic. Sakura was walking through the woods as she heard a rustle in the bushes and took out a kunai. W who's tea there? Sakura said in fear. Sasuke stumbled through the bushes, Sakura gave a sigh of relief until he saw the state he was in. Sasuke was covered in cuts and was bleeding profusely. Sakura helped me. Sasuke pleaded weakly. Sakura could only let out a scream before she fainted. Kakashi looked at her unconscious body with a sweat drop. This is the Kanoichi of the year. The academy standards have really gone down, whispered Kakashi. Kakashi was about to move on to Naruto until he heard a voice wind style. Drilling air bullet. A bullet of air caught him off guard and pushed him into the clearing. He recovered and ten Naruto clones surrounded him. Six clones engaged him in Tejutsu, he had a difficult time dealing with Naruto's unknown type of Tejutsu, but his years of experience allowed him to stay one step ahead. After dispelling all the clones he noticed the four clones were finishing up hand signs. Fire style. Fire dragon Jutsu. Yelled all the clones simultaneously. Kakashi's eyes widened when he saw four fire dragons coming from all sides, he quickly used a Kawarimi substitution to replace himself with a log. Kakashi was immediately on guard, hiding in the trees. On the other side of the clearing stood a wide-eyed Sakura and a jealous Sasuke. Amazing he used so many powerful weapons thought Sakura. How is the dope so strong? I should be the one with that power, I need it to kill him thought Sasuke angrily. I never knew Naruto was so strong, he said nothing like the academy report said Kakashi out loud. Thankfully, Sensei Kakashi heard a voice behind him. He quickly jumped away as a katana sliced through the branch he was standing on. Kakashi saw Naruto's emotionless face as they both landed in the clearing. 
Kakashi took out a kunai and stood in a defensive stance, while Naruto stood in an offensive stance with his katana. Both stood in the clearing, Naruto took the first move and swung his sword at Kakashi who dodged. Naruto twisted his body to try and behead Kakashi, who used the kunai to block. Both stood trying to overpower the other with their respective weapons. Not bad Naruto, you're very skilled, praised Kakashi. Naruto didn't give any emotion as he responded thank you sensei, but I am still holding back. Naruto started channeling wind chakra through his katana to sharpen the blade, he sliced through Kakashi's kunai like a hot knife through butter. Kakashi jumped away, but had gotten a shallow slice through his vest. Kakashi was impressed that Naruto put him on the defensive like this, although he couldn't go on the offensive, Naruto was at least at a high chunin level. Before Naruto could continue the kinjutsu fight, the clock sounded indicating time was up. Alright, time's up, and you didn't get the bells, Kakashi said with an eye smile. Sasuke and Sakura came out from the bushes, both with different reactions to what they had witnessed. Sakura had a look of awe and fear, while Sasuke had a scowl on his face. Naruto kept his emotionless mask and didn't pay any attention to his teammates. Sasuke walked up to Naruto. Where did you learn to teach me? Naruto ignored Sasuke and decided to speak up actually sensei, I think you should double check your bells. Don't ignore me dope. Yelled Sasuke, but noticed he was still being ignored. Sasuke be quiet, it's Naruto's, if he doesn't want to give it to you, he doesn't have to snap Kakashi. Kakashi then followed Naruto's advice, he noticed that the bells were gone. He was shocked to say the least. When did he get the bells? Thought Kakashi. Naruto then held up the bells he had taken from Kakashi. Good job Naruto, you have an extra bell who are you going to give it to? Naruto turned around to look at Sasuke and Sakura and remembered something Kurama had taught him look underneath the underneath. He threw them both bells before speaking. They can have both of them because they are my comrades and it wouldn't be a full team without them. Kakashi sensei Naruto lied because he had figured out the real purpose of the test but hated the idea of working with them. You all pass. Proclaimed Kakashi with an eye smile. Looks like he figured out the true meaning of the test. Kakashi. That's right Naruto, the true meaning of the test was for you guys to use teamwork to get the bells from me, but because Naruto gave them to you, he showed that he was a team player. Remember those who disobey orders are trash, but those who abandon their friends are worse than trash. Sakura only sighed in relief that she would get to stay in her Sasuke-kun's team. Sasuke was angry because he had to accept pity from the dope, another part of him was relieved that he was finally a genin and was one step closer to his goal. Kakashi dismissed his genin with orders to report here for their first mission, then left in a puff of smoke. Sasuke left with the intention of training, while Sakura followed him like a lost puppy asking for a date. Naruto went back to his estate in a swirl of wind. But Naruto. Naruto was in his personal training ground working on completing his training and mastering the Rasengan. Normally mastering the Rasengan would take months to master, but he also had the aid of 200 shadow clones doing the same training. He estimated that he would master it by later tonight. When Naruto had gotten home he had been given a report on the status of completing the research for the Horatian and the Ido Tensei. His clones estimated that the work would be finished in five months. So far his clones had discovered that both jutsus were a type of summoning. The Horatian used the seal formula on the Horatian kunai as a summoning point where the user only needs to use a small amount of chakra to reverse summon themselves to the kunai. The Ido Tensei was more complex, it summoned souls from the afterlife and placed them in a new body. The user would have to make a sacrifice to a live person for the body to be used as a vessel for the soul. These bodies would be indestructible and regenerate themselves, the only way to stop the bodies would be by sealing them. The problem with this was the control over the soul the user would have, in order to control the soul the user would have to be stronger than the summoned or the soul could turn against the summoner. He didn't have to worry though, using his DNA that contained both the Sharingan and Mokuten genes, he could easily control and summon souls. All Naruto needed now was to start grave robbing, he would have to be careful though. Either way both once complete would be a very powerful addition to his arsenal. He left the compound to get dinner and left his clones to their assignments. He walked toward Ichiraku Raymond ignoring the usual glares, he stepped inside the stand and couldn't help but smile. He loved coming to the small Raymond stand because it was the only place he could go as a kid and not get kicked out. He hoped when he destroyed Konoha they didn't die with the rest of the damn village. Welcome to Ichiraku Raymond, can I take your order? Asked a young teen waitress named A.M. I'll have the usual A.M. Nichin Naruto said with a smile. A.M. realized who was over the counter when she turned around oh Naruto-kun, it's good to see you. Where have you been? Naruto realized that it had been eight months since he had been here, occupied with his training and planning his revenge. You know me A.M. Nichin training to get stronger, Naruto responded with a sincere smile. A.M. went in the back to make his Raymond and came back five minutes later. 
Naruto ate his ramen enjoying the taste and remembering the old times he had in the little stand. After 20 bowls of ramen he paid and thanked A.M. for the dinner. When he got home he went to bed wondering what the next day would bring. Two months later. If Naruto didn't hate Konoha before he sure as hell hated it now, the past two months had been hell for Naruto and his squad. They would always do D rank missions, and Naruto hated doing the menial tasks to improve teamwork as Kakashi would say, except he never helped do the mission, only giggling perversely at his book. Currently they had just returned from capturing the fire daimyo wife's cat Tora, and it had taken all of Naruto's willpower not to destroy the cat's mind with his Sharingan. Oh my little Torachan, are you alright, mommy missed you. The fire daimyo's wife was currently crushing the cat between her cleavage. It gave Naruto a sense of pleasure watching it suffer. The Sandame Hokage was looking through D-rank missions. Since your squad finished another D-rank, now you have choice, you can walk some dogs, babysit, or... No Torch and come back. Yelled the Daimyo wife as Tora escaped again. Thought you can capture Tora again after Saratobi finishes. Naruto started letting out an unholy amount of killing intent, and everyone in the room was sweating and looking nervous. No if I have to chase that damn cat one more time I'm going to give it back in ashes. Yelled Naruto in anger. Akashi decided to play peacemaker Hokage-sama I think Team 7 is ready for a C-rank mission. Yes, I think the Team 7 is more than ready for a C-rank, Sandame agreed. Azuna-san please enter, said the Sandame. Team 7 turned to see a man who looked to be in his 50s holding a sake bottle and drunk. This is what I get for my money, a couple of brats and their sensei, you promised me ninja Hokage-sama slurred Tazuna. I can assure you Tazuna-san these genin are more than capable of protecting you. Saratobi turned to address Team 7 Team 7 your mission is to escort Tazuna san to his home in Nami, no Kuni, Land of Waves, and protect him until he completes his bridge. Team 7 nodded in agreement, and Kakashi told them to meet at the gate in two hours. Two hours later. Naruto hid in the shadows watching the gate and waiting for his team and Kakashi. He watched as Tazuna fidgeted nervously. He checked his equipment one more time, he checked his four separate ceiling tattoos. The storage seals held his Ria's Burdu, Hellraiser Blade, Kunai, Shuriken, and the final seal was a summoning tattoo for the foxes. He checked his vest pockets that held his storage scrolls filled with clothes, money, and medical supplies. He looked down the street and saw Sasuke was approaching the gate with Sakura in tow, Kakashi showed up five minutes later. Okay, is everyone packed and ready to go? Asked Kakashi with an eye smile. He saw that Sakura and Sasuke had backpacks, while Naruto wasn't wearing anything but his regular clothes. Naruto, where are your things? Asked Kakashi. Naruto looked at Kakashi with an emotionless face and pulled out two scrolls from his pocket. In here Sensei pointing at the two scrolls. Kakashi only nodded his head, but Sasuke and Sakura had faces of confusion. Naruto sighed as he saw their faces. You know people call you the best of the academy, but you're a bunch of idiots. These are storage scrolls, they are a work of Hyunjutsu that allow me to store things inside seals, explained Naruto. Sasuke and Sakura glared at Naruto for calling them idiots, although Kakashi seemed to agree with him, knowing that the top of the academy should at least know what storage scrolls were. After the tension dropped Kakashi led everyone through the gate and they made their way toward Nami no Kuni. Halfway to Nami no Kuni. As Team 7 walked through the forest to Nami no Kuni, they passed a single puddle in the middle of the road. Naruto and Kakashi noticed that it wasn't a normal puddle, while everyone else was oblivious to it. As they walked past Kakashi slowed down to the back of the group. Suddenly, two shinobi with water-breathing masks and a chain gauntlet emerged from the puddle and wrapped their chains around Kakashi, ripping him to pieces. One down said the first shinobi. Three to go said the second. Kakashi sensei. Yelled Sakura in shock, while Sasuke and Naruto sprang into action and ran toward the mysterious ninja. Naruto summoned his katana and channeled wind chakra, making the blade sharper and sliced at the attacker's head, unfortunately his opponent tried to block the attack with his gauntlet and failed to notice the wind chakra covering the blade. The blade cut through the shinobi's gauntlet severing his hand, he screamed in pain as his hand leaked blood. Maizu? Yelled other shinobi. The shinobi now identified as Maizu, continued to scream in pain before he was silenced when Naruto beheaded him with a look of glee on his face. The older brother named Gozu looked in disbelief as his brother was killed in front of his eyes. He had forgotten all about Sasuke, in turn Sasuke used his distraction and wrapped him in ninja wire to incapacitate him. Kakashi jumped down from the tree and saw a beheaded Maizu, a gleeful Naruto, a smirking Sasuke, a tied-up Gozu, and a terrified Sakura and Tazuna. Kakashi looked at his team. Good job team, Naruto, you didn't have to kill him. Naruto lost his smile and shrugged. We're shinobi, our job is to kill. Kakashi walked up to a crying Gozu and talked in a serious voice. Why did you attack us? 
those who looked up with tears of rage in his eyes fuck you, you bastards killed my brother I'll never tell you anything. Sensei I may be able to get him to talk if I could get a few moments alone with him, suggested Naruto. Akashi thought it was a bad idea since Naruto might kill him, but he would be a couple feet behind him in order to stop him in time. Fine Naruto, but what are you going to do? Asked Kakashi. Naruto smirked don't worry sensei by the end he'll be singing like a canary. Naruto dragged Gozu into the bushes and activated his Magicum Sharingan. Naruto muttered a single word, Tsukiyomi. Tsukiyomi whirled. Gozu found himself in a red and black world tied to a cross. He was in so much pain, all of his body felt on fire. Naruto appeared in front of him holding his katana with a maniacal smile on his face. Welcome to my Tsukiyomi, a world where I am Kami, here I can control space and time. We could spend weeks here, but only seconds would pass in the real world. Now tell me why did you attack us? Fuck you I'm not tell you anything yelled Gozu in anger. Naruto only smirked as he got closer and stabbed him in the heart, he thought he died only to come back again in the same situation. Now if you don't answer my question I'll be forced to keep torturing you until you do, said Naruto. Gozu refused again, and Naruto kept torturing and killing Gozu, only for him to come back to the nightmare that was Tsukiyomi. For Gozu it seemed like hours of intense pain and death, only to be resurrected. He finally cracked and told Naruto all about his orders from Mamachi Zabuza and his employer Gato, the shipping magnate and CEO of the Gato Corporation. He even informed Naruto about how Gato was squeezing the life out of Nami no Kuni and using bandits to terrorize the country. He told him how Gato hired Zabuza to kill the bridge builder so he couldn't finish the bridge. He finished by telling him that Zabuza and his apprentice Haku would probably go after them next now that he and his brother had failed. Naruto nodded and released him from the Tsukiyomi appearing back in the forest. Real world. Team 7 and Tazuna watched as Naruto looked at Gozu in the eyes and Gozu immediately screamed in terror and pain before falling unconscious. Naruto deactivated his Manjikam Sharingan and rubbed his eyes as Kurama's chakra repaired the damage the Manjikam Sharingan did to them. He couldn't believe the power of the Manjikam Sharingan, he could still remember the day Kurama had activated it. Flashback. Naruto lay in bed as he slept off a day of training, he slept soundly before he screamed in pain as he felt his eyes were on fire. Kurama what the hell is happening? Asked Naruto as the pain in his eyes subsided. Don't worry kid I was only upgrading your eyes to the next level responded Kurama. The next level. But didn't you say the Manjikam Sharingan would cause me to go blind the more I use it, unless I have a sibling with the same power to take their eyes. Yes I remember saying that until I realized that whatever damage the Manjikam Sharingan does to your eyes, I can heal with my chakra, responded Kurama with self-pride. Naruto was impressed. He also had not thought Kurama could do that, so he got up from bed and went to the mirror to look at his new eyes. He saw they were shaped like a combination of a four-point shuriken and a five-point star. He couldn't wait to start training to discover the new powers the Manjikam Sharingan would give him. Then flashback. Naruto was knocked out of his thoughts as Kakashi addressed him to Naruto. What did you do to him? Don't worry sensei, I put him under and I have the information, replied Kakashi. How is that possible you only looked into his eyes for a few seconds before he fell unconscious? Asked Sakura. Naruto looked at Sakura with an annoyed expression I told you I used A, now shut up so I can relay the information. Sakura only nodded fearfully, Naruto began explaining everything about Zabuza and Gato. The current situation in Nami no Kuni and the ninja assassins after Tazuna to prevent him from finishing his bridge. Akashi stood and thought this mission is easily an A rank mission now with Mamachi Zabuza hunting you Tazuna-san. Tazuna sank down to his knees with tears in his eyes. Please, you have to complete the mission. If I die, everyone will lose hope and Gato will win. My daughter and grandson will be devastated if I'm killed, please don't leave. It's not my decision, it's the team's decision, Kakashi said, pointing toward Jenin. I think we should go back we're not prepared for this mission said Sakura, hoping they could return to Konoha. I think we should continue. It would be a good chance to test my skills, said Sasuke cockily. Naruto was deep in thought looking at the pros and cons of helping Tazuna, so far all he had were pros. If they continued the mission, he could recruit Zabuza and Haku to his side, perform a hostile takeover of Gato's corporation, establish a safe house in Nami no Kuni, and not have to chase after a damn cat. I think we should keep going, we can't just abandon the old drunk here said Naruto. Bakashi looked at his three genin, two were determined to complete the mission, while one was too afraid of anything. He hoped Sakura would show her usefulness during the mission, or else he would have to consider a replacement. Okay then let's continue the mission team 7. Team 7 and Tazuna continued on their journey to Nami no Kuni. After taking a boat trip and arriving on the island, Team 7 was currently making their way toward Tazuna's house. 
Walking up the road Naruto sensed something in the bushes and threw a kunai at it, only to reveal a white rabbit pierced through the head. Naruto Baka you killed an innocent rabbit. Yelled Sakura. Naruto ignored her as he and Kakashi had the same thought a white rabbit, but it's summer unless it's a domesticated rabbit. Substitution. Naruto then heard what sounded like a blade slicing through the air. Everyone get down. Yelled Kakashi as he tackled Tazuna to the ground, the genin immediately obeyed. The large cleaver-like sword flew over their heads and embedded itself in a tree. A tall and noticeably muscular man with pale skin, short spiky black hair, wearing baggy pants with a striped pattern, and a mask landed on the sword's hilt. Sharingan no Kakashi, I never expected to face you, oh, and you're in charge of a team of brats. Anyway all I want is the bridge builder, if you give him to me you and your brats can go free said Zabuza. Kakashi was about to speak until Naruto interrupted him. Kakashi sensei I will fight Zabuza, you stay behind and protect the others. Naruto you can't be serious, he's an air rank missing nin. You're no match for him. Yelled Kakashi at Naruto's overconfidence. Naruto unsealed his katana, Kakashi sensei. I think we went over this. When I fought with you, I was holding back a lot. Naruto didn't wait for Kakashi's approval and ran forward towards Ibuza who retrieved his sword from the trunk of the tree. Naruto summoned his katana, and both swordsmen met in the middle of the clearing. Metal clanged as both swordsmen tried to overpower the other, Zabuza was surprised that Naruto could hold his own against him. Not bad, but you're not strong enough to beat one of the seven ninja swordsmen stated by Zabuza with a smirk. Naruto just gave his own smirk. You're wrong because I'm holding back. Naruto jumped back and formed a one-handed seal. His entire body glowed as he deactivated his gravity seals. Naruto disappeared in a blur, Zabuza looked around, and only his years of experience prevented the blonde from using his speed to behead Zabuza. Hold still, you damn yelled Zabuza in frustration as he defended from the blonde's quick slices. What's wrong Zabuza, it looks like and one can become one of the ninja swordsmen nowadays taunted by Naruto. Zabuza yelled in anger and charged at the blonde, he didn't see the kick that sent him into the nearby lake. Zabuza stood on the water with a murderous look in his eyes, Naruto just smirked and went to face Zabuza on the top of the water. With Team 7 and Tazuna watching the fight with wide eyes, they couldn't believe that Naruto, a fresh genin, was getting the better of an air rank missing nin and a member of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. Kakashi being an experienced ninja could tell that Naruto even though was showing great strength and skill was still holding back. Sasuke was seething seeing that Naruto had such skill and strength when he deserved it more in order to kill his brother. Tazuna and Sakura could only watch with awe at Naruto's skill. Zabuza and Naruto stood at a distance from each other with both swords drawn, one with a scowl the other with a smirk. Zabuza sheathed his sword and started doing hand signs, Naruto did the same. Water style. Water dragon jutsu. Yelled the missing nin as a dragon made of water rose from the surface of the lake and headed toward Naruto. Naruto created a seal-less shadow clone and both started performing hand signs. The blonde and his clone finished their seals before performing their respective roles. Fire style. Fire dragon jutsu. Yelled Naruto as he expelled a large dragon made of fire towards Abusa. Wind style. Great breakthrough. Yelled the shadow clone and inhaled deeply before blowing out the chakra infused wind. The wind and fire attacks both combined and formed a large white hot fire dragon that overpowered the water dragon. The dragon made of fire continued towards Abusa. Water style. Water wall jutsu. Yelled Zabuza as he spewed out a wall of water that protected him from the fire dragon. After the water dragon was stopped, Zabuza made one hand seal, and a thick chakra infused fog rolled in. No jutsu, Zabuza said calmly as he disappeared into the mist. There were eight vital spots on the body heart, kidneys, jugular, liver, spine, lungs, and the larynx from which one shall I choose? taunted the former Miss Jonan. Naruto only smirked and activated his Manjikum Sharingan, normally the regular Sharingan wouldn't be able to see through the chakra-infused mist, but the Manjikum Sharingan could distinguish the difference between a person. Easily locating Zabuza trying to sneak up on him, Naruto smirked as he summoned four shuriken, infused them with wind chakra, and threw them at Zabuza. The swordsman dodged the deadly shuriken and tried to slice at Naruto, keyword tried since Naruto dodged and kicked him out of the mist. The mist cleared showing Naruto finishing hand signs. Water style. Great waterfall jutsu. Yelled Naruto, a vortex of water formed around him and violently shot at Zabuza pushing him away from the lake and into a tree. Naruto appeared in front of him with a kunai in hand and his Manjikum Sharingan still active. Zabuza looked in his eyes and couldn't help but feel scared. Who the hell are you? Your executioner replied to Naruto with an emotionless face. All of a sudden a needle pierced Zabuza in the neck and his body fell into a limp form. A boy no older than 15 landed in the tree wearing a Kiri Hunter Nin uniform. He spoke in a soft, almost feminine voice, but Naruto could tell that from his scent he was a boy. 
His scent also revealed that he was around Zabuza a lot. Naruto realized that this must have been Zabuza's apprentice Haku. Thank you for defeating Zabuza, I could not have hoped to defeat him by myself, Haku said in thanks. Team 7 approached the scene with caution, while Haku appeared next to Zabuza and picked him up. I will take his body now to dispose of it, you have my thanks. Naruto decided to keep up his charade no problem I'm happy to help. Haku then left in a swirl of leaves with Zabuza on his shoulders. Kakashi and Team 7 approached Naruto, he quickly deactivated his Manjikam Sharingan before they could notice. Good job Naruto, it's not every day that a genin beats an air ank jonin Kakashi said with an eye smile, on the inside Kakashi wanted to interrogate the blonde to find out what else he was hiding. Sasuke only scowled at him how is he so strong. It should be me with that power, I needed to destroy him. Sakura only looked at his in awe and fear wow, he's really strong, I don't believe that he can be this strong, and was the dope of the class. Inner Sakura could help but disagree with her master Cha, I bet Sasuke Kun is much stronger than Naruto Baka. Azuna looked at Naruto with newfound respect. This kid is really strong, to think that he defeated someone who was making their sensei nervous and not break a sweat. I'm glad I went to Konoha with this mission. Before Kakashi could ask him any questions he spoke, I think we should continue on to your home Tazuna-san, it's getting dark out here. Azuna only nodded and said that his house was close by, only a few minutes up the road. Team 7 and Tazuna walked quietly toward Tazuna's house. Meanwhile Naruto was busy figuring out how to track down the missing Nin and his apprentice, if they didn't join him, he would be forced to kill them to avoid fighting them in the future. Chapter 6. Mission to Wave Part 2. Azuna's House. Team 7 and Azuna approached Azuna's small two-story house. He opened the door to reveal a barely furnished and small living room dining room. Tsunami, Inari I'm home. Yelled Azuna as he and Team 7 entered the house. A blue-haired woman wearing an apron came from the kitchen and greeted her father. Oh father, it's good to see you again. These are the shinobi that protected me on my journey here, had a Kakashi the jonin gave a nod to Sakura, Sasuke, and Naruto. Sakura gave a small bow, Sasuke gave a grunt, and Naruto, similar to Kakashi, only nodded. Tsunami gave her her bow and thanked them for protecting her father. She invited them to sit at the table while she prepared something to eat. Kakashi thought now was a good time to question Naruto about his hidden skills. So Naruto, how is it that you're so skilled and were the last of your class? asked Kakashi. Everyone perked up to hear his answer, Naruto didn't even look up at them Kakashi sensei we're shinobi, we are trained in deception and to fool our enemies. Kakashi could only nod and ask another question. Then where did you learn all those high-powered? Naruto mentally debated what do you think Kurama sensei should I tell them about you or lie to them? Tell the copy nin the truth but phrase it so the others don't understand replied Kurama. I learned all those from my sensei. He has thousands of years of knowledge and has been with me my entire life, answered Naruto. Everyone but Kakashi had confused looks on their faces, Kakashi realized that Naruto was talking about Kaiubi. He really hoped that the fox wasn't influencing the boy in a bad direction. Sasuke was only frustrated and angry that Naruto only gave him vague answers to whom his sensei was. Sasuke wanted to know who was teaching Naruto so he could steal his sensei and learn from him instead and use that power to kill his brother. Damn it who the hell is he done? yelled Sasuke. Naruto realized the reason why Sasuke was angry and mentally smirked, don't worry your pretty little head Echeha, even if you did know who he was, he would never train you. But why not? asked Sasuke. Because he hates you and your damn clan, on the night your entire family was killed, he was jumping for joy and wanting to shake the hand of whoever did it, Naruto replied with a smirk. Sasuke was livid, no one talked about what happened to his clan or else it would bring his wrath. Kakashi was watching from the side and was about to jump in to stop them, but Sasuke lunged at Naruto across the table. I'll kill you. Yelled Sasuke as he reached for Naruto's throat. Sasuke was too slow, and Naruto unsealed his katana and put it at Sasuke's throat. Immediately Sasuke stopped to avoid his head being sliced off. TSK, TSK Chihi you know attacking a fellow Konohan in is punishable by death, not that that would happen if you're too busy being the civilian council's bitch. They wouldn't like that their favorite toy would be killed, that's too bad because I would have no problem killing you. I don't care what the civilian council would do to me, so killing you wouldn't be a problem, since you are weak and don't even have your precious bloodline, yet you still have your clan's arrogance that got them killed, said Naruto with an evil smile. Naruto, Sasuke, that's enough now both of you will stop this nonsense, or else I will write a disciplinary report for both of you threatening Kakashi, as he separated them from each other. Sasuke only scowled at Naruto, then left to go to a corner to brood with Sakura following him like a little bitch. Naruto only smirked at the Ichiha as he walked to the corner of the room, everyone else was relieved that the tension finally dropped. 
only to rise again when Tsunami served them their meal, Sasuke would glare at Naruto as he ate and Naruto would ignore him and continue eating. The tension was interrupted when the front door opened and an eight-year-old kid entered. The Zuna was the first to greet him. Inari-kun it's good to see you again. The boy named Inari ran toward his grandfather and hugged him. Jiji I missed you. Inari then turned his attention to Konohanin. These are shinobi from Konoha. They are here to protect me while I finish the bridge to Zuna said with a smile. Inari only got angry. Why are they here they're only going to get killed, Gato is too strong. Inari, that was rude, apologize. Tsunami scolding her son. Inari ignored her and ran upstairs to his room to brood similarly like a certain Acha. Hey Achiha if he broods anything like you, I think we found your long lost brother, said Naruto as he joked at Sasuke's expense. Everyone laughed except Sasuke and Sakura, Sasuke then went back to his daily brooding session with Sakura at his side. Akashi sensei what are we going to do now that Zabuza is gone? Asked Sakura. Akashi looked at the ceiling contemplating Zabuza isn't dead, he's still alive. I just realized that Hunter Nin was probably a fake, usually Hunter Nin destroys the bodies of missing Nin on the spot, except he took the body away. He also attacks Abusa with needles, usually Hunter Nin don't attack with needles unless they need the target alive. So does that mean he will be back soon? Asked Naruto. No, I think he'll come back in a week. The damage he sustained in your battle with him will keep him healing for a week. So for the rest of the week we will be training to get stronger, replied Kakashi. After dinner that tsunami led them upstairs to the rooms they would be sleeping in. Everyone woke up the next morning, and after breakfast, Kakashi led them to a clearing in the woods to begin training. What will we be training in Kakashi Sensei? Asked Akira Sakura. We will be learning how to climb trees without hands. Kakashi exclaimed with an eye smile. Naruto groaned and started walking away, while Sasuke and Sakura looked at their sensei in confusion. Kakashi sweat dropped when Naruto walked away on Naruto where are you going? Naruto gave him an annoyed look I've already mastered this exercise, in case you don't remember I walked on water yesterday when fighting Zabuza. Oh yeah I've been meaning to ask you, how did you do that? Asked Sakura. I don't feel like explaining, listen to Kakashi, he's about to teach you the first step of the exercise Naruto left before Sakura could annoy him anymore. Once Naruto sensed he was far away enough he bit his thumb and smeared blood on his summoning tattoo. Kuchiyu no Jutsu said calmly, and in a puff of smoke, there was a small grey fox. Good evening Naruto-sama, how may I be of service? Asked the grey fox. I need you to track someone Kuru Naruto responded before taking a cloth with blood on it. This blood belongs to the person I want you to track, I got it from the battle I had with said person yesterday. Very well Naruto-sama, I will track the person to the best of my abilities. The grey fox responded before sniffing the bloody cloth, he then took off in the direction of the scent. Beto's hideout. Naruto stood hiding in one of the trees overlooking what looked like a hideout. Surrounding the hideout were around 100 bandits and a chain link fence, the building itself was tall and was large. Apparently the architect didn't know the meaning of hideout when building it. Naruto knew the bandits stood no chance against him, but he wanted to make sure Gato was there before he stormed the hideout and slaughtered everyone. Naruto decided to sneak into the hideout and check for himself if Gato or Zabuza was inside, if not he would have to stake out the hideout until they showed up. Naruto did some quick hand signs and whispered chameleon jutsu. This caused the light to reflect from Naruto's body and look transparent, as long as he didn't get too close he wouldn't be detected very easily. He entered the hideout evading the guarding bandits and searched room to room until he heard yelling. He looked inside a room and saw a short man in a black suit yelling at Zabuza and the fake hunter Nin about their failed mission. He slipped into the room and waited in the corner for a chance to talk to the missing Nin. Inside Gato's hideout. Inside the hideout, Zabuza laid in bed exhausted and with a hurt ego. How could the demon of the mist have lost to a genin, he couldn't believe it. The kid must either have been really talented or really lucky, he vowed that next time he faced the kid he wouldn't hold back and wouldn't stop until he had the kid's head. While Zabuza ranted in his head about his futile revenge, Haku looked at him with worry. The Zabuza, Haku was just a tool to be used then discarded. But to Haku, Zabuza was his most precious person, and he would sacrifice his life for him and his dream. Haku worried about Zabuza, the blonde genin had really done a lot of damage with his final, and the added trauma from putting him in a near-death state had only increased his recovery period. He would need to leave soon and get herbs and medicines to heal him faster, so he would be 100% when fighting the Konoha team. As both missing Nin thought about their objectives and worries, a small man wearing a black suit and sunglasses, while using a cane, entered the room with two bandits holding swords. Both shinobi snapped their attention at the new arrival, they could see he was angry, but neither cared why. How could you have lost, I paid you a lot of money to kill the bridge builder. Yelled angrily. 
Beto got closer to Zabuza It looks like I wasted my money hiring you, I shouldn't have hired you just because you're called the demon of the mist the next time you fail me I won't pay, and I'll tell those real hunter nin where you are. Beto and his bodyguards walked out of the room leaving Zabuza and Haku alone. Why do we work for Zabuza-sama? Asked Haku. Because we need the money to be able to fund another coup against the Mizukage. For the 3 million ryo he is paying us, it's more than enough payment to kill a bridge builder, Zabuza responded. All of a sudden they tensed when they heard a voice in the room TSK, TSK, TSK. Is this what the mighty demon of the mist has been reduced to, a lowly missing nin that will use their skills to kill civilians and work for weak businessmen? Who's there, show yourself. Snapped Zabuza. Naruto stepped out of the shadows and in front of Zabuza, Haku was quick to put himself between the blonde and his master, pull out needles, and stand in a battle-ready position. Naruto put his hands up in surrender, but couldn't help but smirk at their tenseness. Relax I'm not here to fight, I'm here to make you an offer that could get you out of this situation. What kind of offer? Asks Abusa with his hand on his kubikaramjum. By the chance to make your dream a reality in 3x what Gato has offered you responded to Naruto with a smirk. Zabuza sat there with disbelief in his eyes. How could you help me, also how could you afford to offer me 15 million ryo? Maybe I should start with my name, my name is Uzumaki Namikaze Naruto, heir to the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans in Konoha. The reason I can offer you the money is because I'm probably richer than Gata right now. Zabuza and Haku looked at Naruto with wide eyes. How I will be able to help you with your dream is quite simple, I will be able to fight Igura, because like him I am also a Jinch Kriki. I hold the Kaiubi, the strongest of the Biju. If Zabuza and Haku hadn't been surprised they sure as hell were now. They stood there with wide eyes and jaws on the ground. Let's say we accept your offer, what would you have us do? Asked Zabuza. Well I'm gathering allies to destroy Konoha, you won't have to do anything until I gather a force large enough to destroy Konoha responded Naruto. You want to destroy Konoha, but isn't that your home? Asked Haku. The dark aura formed around Naruto no, Konoha hasn't ever been my home. It was a living hell for me most of my life, and I swore that one day I would walk the streets of Konoha while the village burned and the villagers screamed in terror. Both Zabuza and Haku shivered at the dark aura the blonde was giving off. They couldn't believe that the blonde hated his own village so much, unlike Zabuza he doesn't want to take over his home village he wants to destroy it. Can we at least think about it before accepting? Asked Zabuza. Fine in one week you will come to the bridge and after we put on a charade for my team, go to the coordinates on this map. Naruto threw them a map of Nami no Kuni with an area circled. There you can give me your answer. What's at these coordinates? Asked Haku. The safe house I am going to build during the week, it will probably be finished by the time our fight ends, replied Naruto. Zabuza and Haku nodded, then Naruto disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Zabuza did a lot of thinking, and in the end they had nothing to lose and a lot to gain if the blonde held up his end of the bargain. Haku on the other hand could tell the blonde was evil to the core, more evil than Zabuza, and had without a doubt that he would discard them when he had no use for him and Zabuza. Haku decided to not tell Zabuza, since the blonde would help Zabuza achieve his dream, if Zabuza was happy then Haku was happy. The next day. After Naruto had returned the previous night, he had seen that everyone was already fast asleep. He had snuck in and went to bed, he knew Kakashi would probably ask him questions in the morning, but he didn't care. When Naruto woke up the next morning at dawn he got dressed quickly to avoid Kakashi at breakfast and not have to answer any questions. He cursed his luck when he came downstairs and Kakashi was sitting at the dining room table, except this time instead of having his book in his face, he had a face of pure seriousness. Naruto, where were you last night? Asked Kakashi. I was just training Kakashi-sensei and casually responded to Naruto. If you were just training, why couldn't I find you when I went looking for you, Naruto? Asked Kakashi. Naruto got annoyed while I was training my fire Kakashi, you couldn't find me because I was practicing hiding my presence too. Fine then where are you going now? I'm going to keep training since you obviously need to train the other two so they don't become a burden, responded Naruto as he walked out the door. I wasn't done talking to Jenin, I want you to go with Tezuna-san and protect him while he's building his bridge in Kakashi. Fine I will be back in an hour to accompany Tezuna-san to the bridge Naruto, then disappeared in a swirl of leaves before Kakashi could protest. Naruto reappeared in the woods far from the house, he unsealed paper, a brush, and ink. Might as well test out my new blood clone thought Naruto. Naruto started drawing a very complicated sealing array, when he finished he cut his palm to draw blood and channeled a lot of chakra into his hands before slamming his hands into the paper. A bright light enveloped the area and when the light faded, an exact clone of Naruto stood where the paper used to be. Naruto was proud of himself for thinking of such an ingenious, he thought back to all the benefits the blood clone gave that shadow clones didn't. 
Blood clones wouldn't dispel after one hit, instead they would only dispel if they were hit with killing blows. Blood clones also produced their own chakra and would regain any chakra they used, this was useful for clones that needed to stay in the field for large amounts of time. Although one disadvantage a blood clone had was that if a clone was in the field for too long and dispelled all that information from the clone would return, but he had added a data blocking seal to the seal algorithm, so when they dispelled, he didn't receive the clone. He gave the clone orders to protect Azuna and obey Kakashi, so he would suspect him of anything. Naruto knew he would probably not see Kakashi or his team throughout the week because he would be busy building the safe house. The clone left and Naruto made his way to the safe house location. After running for 10 miles straight he arrived at the edge of the island on the south side of Nami no Kuni. He went to work and created 50 shadow clones to help, he first used earth manipulation to make a stairway around a mile into the ground. The 25 clones went to work and used earth manipulation to sculpt out hallways and rooms into the earth, the other 25 used their wood manipulation to create support beams and furniture for the safe house. He wanted the safe house to be big enough to hold a large force, if his plans worked out he would have a lot of allies. Day before fight. Time flew while Naruto was building the safe house, he realized that the next day was his fight with Zabuza. He looked at the hideout and was pleased to say that it could hold and house 500 people and was made up of several levels. He made his way up the initial staircase and opened a trapdoor that led to a regular looking shack. He slapped a blood seal on the trapdoor so no one could open it unless their blood was familiar to the seal. Naruto made his way to a clearing near the house and waited for the blood clone to arrive. When it arrived it gave Naruto a recap on what had transpired the entire week. While the clone explained, he could help but frown and become annoyed. Apparently during the week Kakashi had watched him like a hawk and almost never gave him any privacy, add to that the annoyance of Sasuke's arrogance and Sakura's fangirlish tendencies, and Naruto was glad he had left the clone in his place. Unknown to them as they were so engrossed in their conversation, two eyes watched from a far distance. You would think that it was just a curious civilian, but what was peculiar was that one eye was dark colored while the other was blood red with three tomo spinning wildly. Kakashi watched as Naruto and apparently a clone conversed with his Sharingan to be able to read their lips. The clone was telling it what had happened the past week, the question was what had Naruto been doing and how had the clone lasted so long without dispelling. He remembered that when Naruto had sparred with Sasuke, he had gotten hit with enough force to dispel a normal shadow clone. As he contemplated he noticed that the clone had finished conversing with Naruto and dispelled, except instead of dispelling in a puff of smoke, it dispelled into a pool of blood with a seal floating in the blood. Naruto was smart enough to burn the seal before leaving, but Kakashi had seen the seal algorithm and memorized it with his Sharingan. Kakashi made his way back to the house where he sat down and started reading his book, hoping to not have to deal with the trouble Naruto was hiding too soon. At the bridge. Kakashi and Team 7 made their way toward the bridge, they were sure that today's Ibuza would come back and try to kill Tazuna again. When they reached the bridge they sensed the all too familiar chakra laced mist and the bridge workers passed out on the ground or sliced up with what looked like electric burns. What happened here? Asked a scared Tazuna. One of the workers that had not passed out yet responded monsters, they're monsters. Team 7 prepared for battle, Naruto unsealed his katana, Kakashi revealed his Sharingan, and Sasuke and Sakura took out Kunai. The mist dissipated to reveal three figures walking out of the mist. The first two were the all too familiar Zabuza and Haku, although the third was not recognized by Naruto until Kakashi spoke up. Zabuza I see that you brought back your fake hunter nin friend and an extra, or should I say Arakish Maui air rank missing nin from Kanoha, exclaimed Kakashi. Naruto then remembered who he was, he had read in his bingo book entry that Aoi abandoned the village and stole an important scroll and the nidames rage in no ken. He was later ambushed but fraught off the pursuing Anbu and captured Marino Ibiki who he tortured for information. Ibiki later escaped with the scroll while Aoi escaped with the Raijin, it was then confirmed that he joined AIM, Hidden Rain, and was given Jonin rank. Naruto would have recruited Aoi, but decided against it because the only reason he was A rank was because he had the Raijin, and without it he was Chunin level at best. That's right, and right now you're in the way of my money. Give us the bridge builder and we might spare your lives to threaten Aoi. Sorry we can't give you Tazuna-san, but we will be taking your head and the Raijin back to Kanoha stated Kakashi. Naruto, you take Zabuza, I think you'll be able to defeat him. Sasuke, you take the fake hunter Nin, and I'll take Aoi. Sakura, you protect Azuna-san, ordered Kakashi. Sasuke scowled at the fact that Naruto got to face the air rank Nin, while well, all he got was some loser that wouldn't be able to defeat an Achiha, but he nodded nonetheless. Naruto ran to engage Zabuza, Kakashi to Aoi, and Sasuke to Haku. Naruto vs. Zabuza. Well I hope you came up with an answer yet, but let's have a friendly spar so I can see what I am paying for, Naruto said with a smirk. 
Tabuza only nodded and drew his Kubikarabjma and Naruto his Ria's Burtu. Both engaged in a fight, metal clanging and sparks flying as both swordsmen fought for dominance. While Zabuza had strength on his side, Naruto had speed and agility. Naruto weaved and countered Zabuza's slices. Naruto gained the upper hand when he channeled Wind Chakra to sharpen the blade and start slicing into Zabuza's Kubikarabjma, Zabuza's eyes widened and he jumped back putting distance between him and the blonde. Naruto decided to shift the battle into ninjutsu and started making hand signs, Zabuza did the same since now Naruto had shown his advantage. Zabuza was the first to perform a water style. Water dragon jutsu. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. Countered Naruto with a large fireball. Both cancelled each other out, Naruto used his speed to get behind Zabuza and called out to him. Wind style. Drilling air bullet. Naruto fired four air bullets and two hit Zabuza, but he dissolved into water. Water clone, not bad thought Naruto. Naruto was knocked out of his thoughts when Zabuza came from behind water style. Wild water wave. Naruto dodged the attack and countered fire style. Burning ash. Naruto expelled chakra enhanced gunpowder from his lungs at Zabuza. The Kirinin tried to dodge but was burned when Naruto clicked his teeth and caused the ash to catch fire. Naruto walked up to Zabuza and put the katana to his throat only for him to dissolve into water. Naruto smirked, he was glad Zabuza was a fun challenge. Zabuza ran up to him from behind and engaged again. Zabuza had thought about using the hidden mist jutsu, but squashed the idea remembering the last time he had used it. He remembered that when he had gotten close enough, he looked into the blonde's eyes and saw blood red eyes with what looked like a star in them. It looked so similar to Kakashi's Sharingan except for the star, he wondered if it was some enhanced version of the Sharingan. He remembered how the blonde had easily evaded his attacks, almost as if he could see Zabuza as clear as day in the mist. He was knocked out of his thoughts when Naruto put some distance between them and created a clone, he didn't like how things were going. Zabuza started making hand signs, as did Naruto and the clone. Fire style. Fire dragon jutsu. Exclaimed Naruto as he exhaled a large fire dragon. Wind style. Great breakthrough. Exclaimed the clone and exhaled a gust of wind. The fire and wind attacks mixed, greatly increasing the power of the wind attacks. Zabuza stood wide-eyed and finished his hand signs hoping this would stop the attack. He poured as much chakra into the and yelled water style. Water wall jutsu. Zabuza spit out a large amount of water that took the form of a wall, the water wall was able to hold back the attack, but just barely. Zabuza was exhausted and had no chakra left after the last attack, he sank to his knees and breathed hard. Naruto came up to him and handed him a soldier pill to replenish his chakra. You'll need this for when you make your escape said Naruto. Zabuza nodded and took the pill, once he ate it, he looked around to see the destruction he and the blonde had caused. He then laid down to try and recover some energy he had lost fighting the blonde. Bakashi vs Aoi. Bakashi and Aoi stood apart from each other, Aoi took out and activated the region, while Kakashi started forming hand signs. Kakashi knew he couldn't fight Aoi at close range while he had that sword. Water style. Water dragon jutsu. Yelled Kakashi as a water dragon rode from the ocean and attacked Aoi. Aoi jumped back to avoid the water dragon. He realized that Kakashi wasn't going to let him get near with the sword, so Aoi switched to ninjutsu as well and started making hand signs. He threw one of his umbrellas into the air and it floated in place ninja art. Raining needle death. All of a sudden the umbrella started firing a large barrage of needles at Kakashi. Kakashi had finished his hand signs before the barrage hit him earth style. Mud wall. A large wall made of earth rose from the ground and protected Kakashi from the attack. Aoi used this chance to get in close combat with Kakashi where he would have the upper hand. When he looked behind the wall he saw Kakashi was not there anymore. Time to end this. Exclaimed Kakashi. Kakashi did a few hand signs before bracing his right arm with his left hand. Lightning sparked from the palm of Kakashi's hand and danced around him wildly. Aoi ran toward Kakashi to behead him before he could fully charge her. Rikiri. Yelled Kakashi as he thrust his hand out toward Aoi intent on piercing his chest. Both shinobi charged at each other intent on finding out which weapon of lightning was stronger. Time slowed down as they got closer and closer, when they both reached arm's length from each other, all they could hear was flesh being pierced. Aoi looked down to see that Kakashi's Rikiri had cut through the raging blade and pierced his heart. Aoi sank to his knees when Kakashi removed his hand from his chest. H.H. How? Stuttered Aoi. Kakashi looked him in the eye. My Rikiri is my most powerful, it once cut through a bolt of lightning. The Rage and Blade was no match for my Rikiri, you lost now, die like the scum you are said to Kakashi. Aoi had finally died after hearing Kakashi's answer, the light in his eyes flickered before going dark forever. Kakashi pulled his high eight back over his Sharingan and looked back at the other matches. 
he saw that Zabuza was laid on the ground with Naruto not too far away, but when he looked closer, he saw that Zabuza was still breathing. He didn't think that Naruto would have let his opponent live, especially considering what he had done to the demon brothers. He then looked at Sasuke's match and watched as his student was trapped in a dome of ice and his body littered with needles. He was about to go to help when the dome collapsed and Sasuke was lying in a prone position on the ground. Not going to describe the battle with Sasuke and Haku, you all know how Haku kicked Sasuke's ass. All of a sudden everyone heard clapping and turned their heads toward the source, they were accompanied by at least 200 bandits. Well, well, well it looks like you failed again Zabuza, I knew you would lose, and you even lost to the same kid from last time. Wow you really are weak haha ha, laughed Gato. What are you doing here? Demanded an angry and standing Zabuza. Why I'm here to make a lot of money, paying missing nin is always so expensive. I decided that instead of paying you, I would hire some cheap bandits to kill you after you killed the bridge builder and the other ninja. I would then collect the bounty on your head and anyone else worth something and be even richer replied Gato. You traitor, I'll kill you yelled Zabuza as he stepped forward. I don't think so, you might want to reconsider coming quietly said Gato with a devious smirk. Beto snapped his fingers, and two bandits came out of the group holding a tied-up Tsunami and Inari. Tsunami-chan, Inari-kun. Yelled Tazuna in fear. Now Tazuna tells the ninja to stand down and come quietly, or else your family dies. Threatened Gato. Tazuna was about to obey until Naruto held his hand up to stop him. Don't even if you do what he says he will still kill them. Then what should I do? Asked a desperate Tazuna. Don't worry I'll get them back said Naruto before doing a hand seal. His body glowed as the gravity seals on his body deactivated, he disappeared in a burst of speed and kicked both the bandits holding Tazuna's family and snatched Inari and Tsunami before the bandits could react. He gave them both to Tazuna before he turned his attention back to the 200 bandits. On the outside he had an emotionless mask, but on the inside his bloodlust was fighting to get outside and slaughter the bandits just for the fun of it and to bathe in their blood. It didn't help that Karama was also encouraging him to do the same. Beto scowled when he realized he had just lost leverage against Azuna. He then turned to the bandits he had hired. Kill them all, whoever brings me the head of Zabuza or the blonde kid gets a bonus. Exclaimed Gato, all the bandits let out a cheer. They all began to move forward until they stopped in fear in front of Naruto, everyone tensed and looked at Naruto in fear as he radiated a large amount of killing intent. Naruto started chuckling evilly before it gradually increased until it was a full-blown evil laugh that sent shivers down everyone's spine. Naruto had just unleashed his bloodlust. Naruto opened his eyes and revealed his no longer blue eyes, but red slits. His nails grew into claws, his fangs lengthened, his whisker marks darkened, and a shroud of red chakra with two tails covered his body. Normally only one tail would appear when he was in a bloodlust state, but suppressing his bloodlust for over two months caused it to gain intensity, and now that it was finally released, it came back full force. Behind Naruto everyone was shaking in fear, except Sasuke who was out cold. Is the seal breaking? No, it looks like the chakra is being controlled. Naruto is controlling Kyuubi's chakra, but why is he using it to kill a bunch of bandits? Thought Kakashi. And the kid was right he is like Yugura, except this chakra is much more evil and powerful than when Yugura used his power thought Zabuza. What is this power, I have never felt anything like this before. I remember him saying that he was a Jinch Kriki, so this is the power of the Kyuubi. I don't like it, but if it will help Zabuza Sama achieve his dream, then I will not complain thought Haku. Naruto decided to stop intimidating and disappeared in a burst of speed, he started slaughtering the bandits. The bandits screamed in pain and horror as they watched themselves being mowed down and killed with ease. Gato looked in horror as his army was being reduced to nothing in a matter of seconds by one blonde teenager. After five minutes of slaughtering, all that was left on the bridge were chunks of bandits, the stench of burning flesh, and one pail. Naruto walked up to Gato as his red chakra cloak dissipated and Gato fell to the floor and backed away in fear. And no gee get away, please I, I'll give you anything you want, money, women, power just please don't kill me. Pleaded Gato. What's wrong Gato, what happened to all that big talk about killing us and collecting our heads? Although I should have expected big talk from a little man, Naruto smirked when he could see Gato was turning red with anger. Naruto decided to end this well it was nice knowing you Gato, but as I've always wanted to say it's only Busina said Naruto as he unsealed his katana and sliced Gato's head off in one fluid motion and picked up his head. Naruto made his way back to the other and inwardly smirked at the fear in their eyes and faces. He then walked up to Tazuna and handed him Gato's head. Dear Tazuna-san, as evidence that your country is now free of Gato's iron grip, said Naruto. Tazuna was knocked out of his shock and the events that had just happened came rushing back and he jumped for joy. Tsunami and Inari also had tears of joy in their eyes as they celebrated that Gato was gone and Wave was free. 
over with Team 7 and the newly awakened Sasuke, Sasuke had woken up just in time to see Naruto slaughter the bandits in his chakra cloak, they looked at their teammate in fear, while Kakashi looked at him in worry. Kakashi wondered if the fox had caused Naruto to slaughter the bandits mercilessly, or if it was of his own free will. Either way if Naruto had been influenced or he did it of his own free will, he would have to get Naruto help before it gets worse. During the chaos no one had noticed that Tsubusa and Haku had slipped away and were making their way to the safe house to accept Naruto's offer. The following day Tazuna and his family had spread the news that Gato was dead and Wave was free. Everyone in the town celebrated and threw a big party for the ninja that had helped them get rid of Gato. Currently Team 7 was enjoying the festivities as Naruto ate food, Sasuke brooded, Sakura asked for a date with Sasuke, and Kakashi drank sake while keeping an eye on Naruto. What Kakashi didn't know was that the Naruto he was watching was a blood clone. The real Naruto was currently in Gato's office going through his files and belongings. Naruto had already found bank statements from banks all over the elemental continents, with the totals amounting to over 1 billion Ryo. Although he had been wrong about being richer than Gato at first, he sure as hell was now. Now all Naruto had to do was find his checkbook and a copy of Gato's signature, he would then be able to forge fake checks and withdraw the money using blood clones disguised as Gato before the rest of the world finds out he's dead. After searching for 10 minutes searching his office he finds nothing and kicks the desk in frustration. When he kicked the desk a secret compartment had opened up and revealed what he had been looking for and more inside was his checkbook and copies of checks with the signature in them. Also inside were deeds to properties located all over the continent in every single country. He praised his luck on such incredible finds and got to work, he made six blood clone seals and gave them the locations of the banks they were going to be going to. He told them that they needed to be done by the end of the week or else the accounts would be claimed by the state. He also ordered them that once the money was all collected, they put all the money into a storage scroll and have a fox take the scroll to the original. After being given their orders the clones scattered to their assigned target and missions, Naruto sat in the chair of Gato's office and contemplated his next move. He knew Kakashi would report his outbreak to the Hokage, and then the old monkey would probably tell the council. If that happened the usual would happen, the civilians would demand his death, Danzo would demand him for emotional zombie training, and the shinobi side would be conflicted. Except with this it would give the shinobi side more reason to lean toward Danzo's way of thinking. Naruto sat in contemplation before deciding he would deal with it when the situation arrived. He made his way back to Tazuna's house and avoided the party in town, mostly because he hated parties, and secondly, he didn't want to attract attention if someone saw him and his clone at the same time. One week later. Naruto sighed in relief, the mission was finally over, and they would be heading back to Konoha. He didn't miss Konoha or anything, the problem was he had left the shadow clones doing research at his estate with only enough chakra to last a week. This time he was planning on upgrading his research staff to blood clones to avoid something like that. As Team 7 waved, mostly Sakura and Kakashi, everyone in wave was at the bridge to say goodbye to their heroes. After all the goodbyes, Team 7 made their way back to Konoha. Hey I just remembered what we should call the bridge. Asked a curious tsunami. How about the great Naruto bridge, because he got rid of Gato for us and gave us back our hope, said a seriously happy Tazuna. Everyone around him nodded in agreement. Over with Naruto, he felt a shiver go down his spine with a doing something out of character feeling. He just shrugged it off and continued walking to the hellhole he would be burning in the future. Chapter 7. Chunin exams begin. Three months later. During the last three months after the mission to Nami to Kuni, Naruto had been suffering. He was forced to once again take D-rank missions with the occasional C-rank. Naruto was currently in his backyard training ground, in front of him was a three-pronged kunai with a C logarithm on the handle. Scattered throughout the field there were similar kunai and a group of clones surrounding each kunai. Naruto was excited just a few days ago. His research clones had finally figured out the mechanics of the Horation, and now Naruto was going to test it out. He disappeared in a yellow flash, and three seconds later reappeared near the first Horation kunai, while the clones dispelled. The second yellow flash was born. Naruto would have to practice the Horation, since he only used it three times and traveled short distances, it took at least one-fourth of his reserves. Naruto thought back to when he had returned from Nami no Kuni, he was right when he guessed that Kakashi would tell the old monkey, and in turn he would tell the council. Flashback. Naruto was eating at Ichiraku Raymond when an Anbu interrupted his meal and told him the council had summoned him. Naruto left with the Anbu and they disappeared in a swirl of leaves, they reappeared in front of the familiar doors of the council room. The Anbu escorted Naruto in, and he noticed the Sandame in the front smoking his pipe. He noticed the glares of hatred and fear from the civilian council and the emotionless faces of the clan heads and Danzo. Hello Naruto, it's nice to see you, said Siratobi with a smile. Good evening Hokage-sama. 
Might I ask why I was summoned? Replied Naruto with an emotionless attitude. Well Naruto, we received information from your sensei that you may have lost control of your tenant while on your mission, is this true? Asked Sirotobi. No Hokage-sama, I did not lose control over my tenant during the mission. Naruto was interrupted by a pink hair banshee. Liar, you killed all those bandits that stood in your way and almost killed my daughter. Screeched Harunosuke. Naruto leaped Kai at the councilwoman, who promptly sat down don't interrupt me I wasn't finished as I was saying I didn't lose control, because I was fully in control of my tenant's power, and when I was finished getting rid of the threat I stopped using my tenant's power. He then turned to Harunosuke. Also for your information, I wouldn't kill a weak whore like your daughter. It would be a waste of my time. Naruto mentally smirked as the civilian council erupted in anger and demanded his head for the disrespect he had shown them. Saratobi silenced them and turned to Naruto Naruto you are to show the council the respect they deserve. I'll show them respect for Hokage-sama. The civilian council smirked smugly. I already have respect for the clan heads, but I won't show the civilians respect until they become something other than useless fools. The civilians erupted in anger until they were silenced by Saratobi again. Narishikaku was the next to ask a question. You said that you were in control of your tenant, how much of his power can you control? Asked Shikaku. Currently I am able to control four tails, due to the durability of my body. I estimate that by the time I am 16 I will be able to control all nine tails and have full control over my tenant, answered Shikaku. Everyone in the council room had mixed feelings. The clan heads were worried that Naruto would lose control of his power. Danzo was having a mental orgasm and already formulating plans on getting the Jinch Kriki under his thumb. The civilian council was wetting their pants in fear since with that kind of power, he could easily take out his anger on them, and no one would be able to stop him. After a few ten seconds Saratobi dismissed Naruto and the council. Naruto left with a smirk and a feeling of satisfaction. Then flashback. Naruto made his way to the other end of the training ground, where he had 200 shadow clones, trying to combine the Rasengan with his wind and fire affinities. All of a sudden he looked in the distance, and two large explosions rose into the sky. He soon received the memories of the clones that had been destroyed in the blasts. The first explosion was from a successful combination of the and his wind element, the other was a successful combination of the and his fire element. He dispelled all his clones and decided to replicate the results, he made a clone and held out his hand. As he formed the clone added wind chakra into the, the wind nature began to take the form of a large shuriken and screeching loudly similar to a bell. When the new was finished, Naruto held it and quickly noticed he was going to backfire because he didn't have enough chakra control. He tried to throw it, but it dissipated as soon as it left his hand. He would have to increase his chakra control exponentially to be able to keep them under control. He would also need to find a way to throw them, since if he just charged someone with it, he would end up hurting himself in the blast. Naruto moved on to the other, he held out his hand and formed a while a clone added fire chakra to it. The results were very painful since the temperature skyrocketed around the and he was having trouble ignoring the pain. When he was finished he saw in his hand a spinning ball of white flames, he hissed in pain as he cooked his arm and threw the technique. Unfortunately that didn't dissipate, it exploded once it left his hands. Naruto was sent flying back into the tree and hit his head and fell unconscious. He woke up a few hours later with a massive headache, he got up and went home to bed since he would need the energy tomorrow. Next day. Naruto was currently walking toward a meeting spot for him and his team to talk to their sensei, as he walked he looked at his badly damaged arm. It was so damaged that it was taking Kurama a long time to fix it, the reason it was taking a long time was because he had completely cooked his arm down to the bone, and the explosion had all but destroyed his arm. Kurama was working frantically to repair the arm and have it fully functioning, it had taken him the entire night to heal the arm, and it would take him another day to reconnect the nerve endings and chakra pathways in his arm. As Naruto walked he heard a commotion in the nearby street and decided to investigate. He saw that a kid a little older than him wearing a pajama suit with cat ears and makeup was holding up a little kid with a long scarf and spiky hair by the throat. Behind him was a blonde girl with four ponytails holding a giant fan. On the other side were two kids around the same age as the one getting beat up and everyone's favorite pink-haired whore, his teammate, Haruno Sakura. Stop this, you'll only get him mad, said the blonde girl. Relax Tamari, I don't sense him here, and this kid needs to learn some manners, replied Kankuro. Let me go. Exclaimed Kinohimaru. Please let Kinohimaru go, he didn't mean to bump into you, begged Sakura. Naruto watched as Kankuro raised his fist to hit Kinohimaru, and then all of a sudden a rock hit his hand and forced Kankuro to drop him. Naruto looked up at where the rock came from and saw none other than Kanoha's number one emo, Ichiha Sasuke sitting up in a tree trying to look cool. What intrigued him was a young Ritid behind Sasuke that was doing a good job hiding his presence. What do you think you're doing brat? 
yelled Kankuro as he nursed his injured hand. Just sitting here and watching some backwater ninja beat up little kids, said Sasuke with a smirk. Naruto watched Kankuro turn red in anger, and Tamari blushed looking at Sasuke. Naruto only raised an eyebrow at Tamari's blush. Hami is every girl in the world attracted to emo. Thought Naruto. I wonder what I would look like emo. Careful what you wish for Kit said Kurama as he sent mental images of Naruto with dark clothes and black hair, sitting in a corner brooding with a horde of fangirls trying to get in his pants. Naruto shivered at the mental images and shook his head to get rid of them and turned his attention back to the confrontation. Ankuro was livid that he had been shown up by a brat, so he pulled out the bandaged object behind him. You're going to use Crow for this? Asked Tamari in surprise. Before Kankuro could answer, the redhead decided to make himself known. Stop it, you're a disgrace to our village, said the redhead in an emotionless voice. Everyone looked shocked at the redhead's sudden arrival. Naruto decided to get closer and activated his chameleon jutsu to stand behind Sakura. As he got closer he noticed something was off about the redhead and his chakra. Hit the redhead I can feel Shukaku inside him, he's soon as Yinchkriki said Kurama. Interesting, if I can sense Shukaku shouldn't he be able to sense you? Asked Naruto. No, you Mokuten bloodline prevents my chakra from leaving you unless you wanted to explain Kurama. Naruto mentally nodded and continued watching the redhead with a new interest. He was pretty sure that he was mistreated in Suna so he could use that and manipulate him to his side. Gigara I, I was just trying to teach this punk a lesson, said Kankuro with fear in his voice. Shut up or I'll kill you said Gara with no emotion. Kankuro was quiet and didn't speak anymore as Gara led them away. Sasuke jumped down from the tree and landed in front of the group. Wait what's your name? Sasuke asked Gara. My name is Sabaku no Gara. I am also curious to know your name. My name is Ichihasa. Gara interrupted him not you, the one behind the pink hair girl. Impressive, usually no one can find me when I am using his sad Naruto, as he deactivated his chameleon jutsu and reappeared behind Sakura, who jumped away in surprise. My name is Yuzumaki Namaka's Naruto, I assume you are here for the Chunin exams? Asked Naruto. That's right me and my sibling will be in the exams, will you also be in the exams? Asked Gara. That's right, I will be looking forward to seeing if one or nine will be victorious, replied Naruto, while releasing a small amount of Kurama's chakra. Gara's eyes widened when he realized that Naruto was a jinchikriki like him. Tamari and Kankuro's eyes also widened since with him here he could jeopardize the plan. I look forward to killing you and proving my existence during the exams, said Gara, before disappearing in a swirl of sand with his siblings. Sasuke was angry, he had found someone strong that would be a challenge for him, and they are more interested in Naruto. Why would anyone be interested in fighting the dope, he was in a chair. The sand shinobi should have been cowering in fear at his presence, but instead he dismissed him. Sasuke's pride wouldn't take it, when he saw the red-headed sand shinobi, he would kill him. Sakura was quiet, not because she was scared, more like trying to solve a puzzle. Naruto had told the redhead his name was Namika's Yuzumaki Naruto, even though Sakura was weak physically she wasn't weak academically. She used her vast knowledge and realized Namika's was the last name of the Yandame Hokage, and Naruto had just called himself Namika's. Naruto, why did you call yourself Namika's? Asked Sakura. Well, Sakura normally when someone is introducing himself they say their entire name answered Naruto sarcastically. Ta don't let him talk to you like that, kick his ass. Yelled Inner Sakura. Normally Sakura would obey Inner Sakura, but she learned to never obey Inner Sakura when it came to Naruto, because Naruto would end up killing her. I mean why would you call yourself Namikas if the only Namikas was the Yandame Hokage? You know Haruno for the supposed top Kanoichi, you sure are retarded. I call myself Namikas because my father was the Yandame Hokage belittled Naruto. To say she was shocked would be an understatement, she couldn't believe that Naruto was the son of the Yandame Hokage. If she looked closer she could see that he closely resembled the Yandame, she hid herself for not realizing sooner. Sasuke on the other hand didn't really care that Naruto's father was the Yandame, the Namikas were nothing compared to the Ichiha. Naruto decided he was done playing 20 questions and disappeared in a swirl of leaves to the meeting place. Sasuke and Sakura made their way to the meeting place with Sasuke walking in silence and Sakura asking for a date. Meeting place. After two hours of waiting on a bridge, Sasuke and Sakura were bored out of their minds except Naruto, who was keeping himself busy by reading a book about advanced sealing. Kakashi showed up in a puff of smoke, with his trademark eye smile. Yo. Greeted Kakashi. Late. Yelled Sakura. Sorry, I crossed a black cat on the way here and had to go the long way around said Kakashi, while everyone sweat dropped. Anyway I'm here to give you these forms, they are entry forms for the Chunin exams. If you decide to enter you need to show up tomorrow at the academy in room 301 explained Kakashi. Everyone took a form and Kakashi disappeared in a puff of smoke. 
Sasuke gave an arrogant smirk as he looked at his form and walked home. Sakura looked worried and scared while following Sasuke. Naruto looked indignant on the outside, but internally was smirking. Next day. Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura were walking through the halls of the academy when they noticed a large group of people gathered around the door. Naruto immediately realized that there was an over the sign to confuse contestants, and there were two guarding the doors hinged like Genin. He wanted to walk past them because he knew he was only here to prevent a genin who can't even distinguish her from entering the exam. He looked over at Sasuke who had an arrogant smirk on his face and was walking up to the crowd. Immediately Naruto grabbed Sasuke and covered his mouth before he could reveal it. Achiha what the hell are you doing? Can't you see that this is there to keep the weak teams out? Whispered Naruto. Sasuke pushed himself out of Naruto's grip of course I do dope, what do you take me for an idiot? Could have fooled me, said Naruto as he walked past the crowd and toward the stairs with a confused Sakura and a scowling Sasuke. As they walked to the right room they were stopped by a boy a year older than them wearing a green jumpsuit and orange leg warmers. Please wait, are you a Chiha Sasuke? Asked Lee. That's right, what do you want? Replied Sasuke arrogantly. I want to fight you and prove that a genius of hard work can beat a genius of talent. Stated Lee enthusiastically. Fine, but you'll just lose like all the other losers in these exams, replied Sasuke smugly. Boy Ichiha don't underestimate this guy, said Naruto, even though he didn't care if Sasuke got hurt. Sasuke ignored Naruto and got in his Ichiha fighting style stance, while Lee got in his Gokin stance. Sasuke started off and tried to do a roundhouse kick, only for it to be blocked easily. Lee then went on the offensive and started giving a barrage of punches and kicks that Sasuke couldn't block. Sasuke jumped back and activated his Sharingan to be able to track Lee's moves. So that is the fabled Sharingan? Asked Lee. That's right with these eyes you are nothing before me and should just give up now, replied Sasuke arrogantly. No, I cannot give up. I will defeat you and prove I can be a splendid shinobi. Stated Lee before disappearing in a blur. Sasuke was able to keep track of him until Lee punched him in the face. Sasuke couldn't believe he had been hit and his Sharingan wasn't able to follow the attack. Lee continued barraging Sasuke with punches and kicks until he kicked Sasuke high in the air and loosened his bandages. He wrapped his bandages around Sasuke and turned upside down while falling straight to the earth spinning at breakneck speeds. He was stopped by what looked like a pinwheel holding his loose bandages, Lee saw a turtle standing on the other side of the room. Lee immediately released Sasuke from his bandages and kneeled in front of the turtle. Lee, do you know what you have done? That move is forbidden from being used on a fellow Kanoha shinobi, I hope you are ready for your punishment. Stated the turtle angrily. All of a sudden an exact clone of Lee appeared on top of the turtle, the only difference was that he was taller and wearing a jonin vest. Lee I am very disappointed in you, you willingly disobeyed me and performed that move on a comrade of the village, scolded the older Lee clone. But Guy sensei I had a good time. Lee was cut off when Guy punched him and sent him flying across the room. You fool. Yelled Guy. There is never a good reason to excuse attacking a comrade, you have greatly diminished your flames of youth. Yelled Guy. Lee gasped and began crying and I'm tears. I am sorry Guy sensei, I will now train 100x harder and strengthen my flames of youth. Yelled a depressed enthusiastically. That's my student. I couldn't be prouder of you. Said Guy as he gave Lee a thumbs up and smiled so brightly that his teeth shined. Lee began crying even more and I'm tears Guy sensei. I joined him in crying Lee. They began running toward each other, Team 7 watched in horror at what was unfolding in front of them. Dai Sensei. Lee. Dai Sensei. Lee. They met in the middle and hugged while a sunset appeared in the background. Holy shit, what the hell is this? My eyes burn. Naruto mentally yelled. Naruto activated his Sharingan to dispel the screw it, if the village finds out about my Sharingan, as long as I stop the I'll be happy. Unfortunately the Sharingan didn't dispel the, it only served to memorize the most horrible experience Naruto ever had. Look away kid, look away. Yelled Kurama as he tried to dispel them by flooding Naruto's body with his chakra, but that too failed miserably. Team 7 immediately left the two clones to their hug and agreed to never speak of the incident again. They walked upstairs to find Kakashi waiting for them at the door. Yo, you made it and all of you are here said Kakashi with his signature eye smile. Why would it matter that we would all be here? Asked Naruto. Because the Chunin exams are supposed to be taken as a team, and if one of you wasn't here, I wouldn't let you enter said Kakashi. Naruto and Sasuke frowned, and Sakura was relieved. After one last good luck Kakashi left in a puff of smoke. Team 7 entered the exam room and were immediately barraged by Kai by the other teams. Sakura had trouble breathing, Sasuke was breaking a sweat, and Naruto just shrugged and released his own Kai. The other teams immediately turned the other direction away from Team 7. All of a sudden Sasuke was tackled to the ground by Ino. 
Did you miss me Sasuke-kun? Asked Ino while lying on top of Sasuke. Boy Ino pig get off Sasuke-kun, can't you see that he doesn't like you? Yelled Sakura. Oh way forehead, Sasuke-kun loves me and is probably glad he finally gets to see me. Replied Ino. Why do you have to be so troublesome? Shikamaru sighed as he approached Jai, who was eating chips. Yahoo, it looks like we all made it here. Exclaimed Kiba with Akamaru barking in agreement. Yes, it seems our entire graduating class is attending the Chunin exams, said Shino in his monotone voice. Inada approached from behind her teammates as shy as ever. Naruto thought that her Jonin sensei would have broken her out of her shy shell, apparently whoever her Jonin sensei was she was just as worthless as Hinata. As Naruto's class talked, Naruto noticed they were gaining a lot of attention from the rest of the room. He also noticed a silver-haired teen with glasses was approaching their group. You guys should be quiet, you're attracting a lot of attention, said the silver-haired boy. Who are you? Asked Sakura. My name is Ikushi Kabuto, replied the teen. Have you taken the exams before? Asked Ino. Actually I've taken them seven times already, Kabuto said. Wow, you must suck at this stated Kiba. Actually since I have taken these exams for so long, I have been able to collect information about teams and contestants, Kabuto said. Do you have information on Sabaku no Gara and Rock Lee? Asked Sasuke. Kabuto found a card that showed Gara. he is the son of the Kazakiage and is the teammate of his elder siblings Kankuro and Tamari, he's completed 12 C ranks and, wow even 1 B rank, it's also said he completed all the missions without getting a scratch. The rookies were quiet when they learned of such a dangerous foe. Kabuto shuffled his cards until he found the right one, Rock Lee is a member of Team 9, his Jonin sensei is the Tejutsu specialist Maido Gai, and his teammates are Hai Uganiji the Rookie of the Year and Tenten the Kinoichi of the Year. He's completed 50 D ranks and 15 C ranks. He is said to be awful at ninjutsu and, but his tajutsu is at least high chunin level. I should also tell you that this year Kanoha entered 57 teams, Suna 1 team, AIM 21 teams, Kusa, Hidden Grass, 17 teams, and 1 team from Odo. Although I wouldn't worry about the Odo team, they are a new village and probably don't produce strong shinobi. Naruto snapped his attention to the sound of running coming toward Kabuto, a split second later three genin jumped from the crowd and attacked Kabuto. The first genin looked like a mummy, with his entire face covered in bandages, and only his right eye was visible. The second genin had a cocky smirk on his face, and he wore a shirt with the kanji for death printed on it. The last genin was a girl with long black hair, obsidian eyes, and wore a sleeveless camouflage shirt and camouflage pants. The one-eyed Odo Genin threw a punch at Kabuto which he easily dodged, but Naruto cringed in pain as a sound wave attacked his enhanced ears. Naruto looked up and saw that Kabuto fell to his knees and emptied his stomach. Don't underestimate Odo, we will definitely advance the Chunin exams and bring glory to our village, said the one-eyed Genin. Yeah you can know how weaklings are at the top of the world anymore, now it's Odo's time to shine. Stated the other male teammate smugly. Before any of the Kanohanin could retort there was a large puff of smoke in the front of the room, and a tall man wearing a trench coat and a Kanoha high eight covering his head appeared in front of the class. Alright sit down and shut up, we will begin the written part of the Chunin exams. You will have one hour to complete the nine questions on the test, after the hour you will be given a final question. Begin. One hour later. If no one else wants to leave then I only have one more thing to say, you pass. Yelled Ibiki. What? What about the final question? yelled Kiba. There was no final question, a Chunin must always make difficult decisions during missions with dire consequences. This was a test to see if you could handle the pressure and see it through. It proves you are worthy, replied Ibiki. All of a sudden the window to the room was shattered, and a banner appeared saying, the sexy and single proctor of the second exam, Mitarashi Anko. Naruto felt a groan escaping his mouth because he knew Anko, and he wasn't looking forward to the hell she would probably put him through. All the other genin just looked at Anko wide-eyed, not believing that all she was wearing was a coat to cover her modesty. Some wished a breeze would blow the trench coat away and give them a peek as to what she was hiding, many were already having nosebleeds as they fantasized about the scantily dressed Anko. The girls on the other hand were having separate reactions. One half of the girls were feeling jealousy toward Anko and her sexy figure and generous assets, the other half were angry that she was showing herself off to the entire room and taking all the boys' attention. You're just in time Anko, I was finished with them when you came in and spoke Ibiki. Good, it looks like there are still 50 teams you're losing your touch, Ibiki teased Anko. What can I say? It looks like the candidates this year will be very entertaining, responded Ibiki. Don't worry, by the time I'm done with them there won't even be half that number of teams, stated Anko with a sinister smirk. Alright you bastards meet me at training ground 44 in 15 minutes or else you fail. Said Anko as she jumped back out the window and left toward her favorite playground. 
Naruto stood up and walked toward his two team members follow me I know where the training grounds are. Both team members nodded and followed Naruto as he made his way out of the testing room and headed toward the forest of death. Forest of death. After arriving at the forest of death, Naruto waited in silence until Anko began listing off the rules. Alright you gakis this is the forest of death, my personal favorite playground, for the next five days the forest will be your home, you will be inside the forest, trying to reach the tower located in the middle of the training grounds. Anko then took out two scrolls, a white and a blue scroll. Your objective in the forest is obtaining both scrolls to be able to enter the tower. Each of your teams will get one scroll, and you have to steal the other from an enemy team. Anko noticed that Naruto wasn't paying attention to a word she was saying, so she promptly threw a kunai at Naruto. Naruto surprised her when he caught it and threw it back causing her to jump away, when she jumped away her trench coat moved and revealed a full view of her assets to those who looked quick enough to catch her wardrobe malfunction. Immediately Genin were thrown back from huge nosebleeds and some passed out from blood loss with a perverted smile. Naruto just smirked at the situation he had just caused, while Anko was annoyed that the blonde had caught her off guard like that. She quickly moved behind him and pressed her chest against his back. Naruto stiffened at the close contact, not being used to it. Well, well I guess we have a pretty brave little genin, now don't we? It's too bad that this forest has killed a lot of brave genin said Anko, trying to intimidate Naruto. Naruto smirked and replied with a smug smile before pointing a kiba. This forest is a joke, and the animals in it are as harmful as the puppy on Inuzuka's head. I bet me and my team will be the first to get to the tower. I guess we'll just have to wait and find out if you were strong enough to pass the forest or just another meal for my pets, replied Anko, as she made her way back to the front of the group. She knew that Naruto wouldn't be intimidated by the forest, but that didn't mean the surrounding genin wouldn't. Anko then motioned for the surrounding to pass out the death waivers. Alright you bastards, these are death waivers stating that if you were to die in the forest of death, Kanoha is not responsible for your deaths. Once you sign them you can hand them in and receive your scroll, then you will make your way to your designated gate. After handing in their forms and receiving their heaven scroll, they made their way to gate 59 and waited for the timer to begin. Naruto turned to his teammates. We will need to stay together, me and Sasuke will take out the enemy teams. Sakura, you just stay back and make sure we aren't ambushed. The buzzer sounded and the gate swung open, Team 7 rushed inside, the second exam had begun. 30 minutes later. Naruto had used his advanced sense of smell to track one of the other teams, Team 7 waited in the trees overhead as they watched a team from AIM set up traps around their camp. He could tell that they were weak as Sakura, so they wouldn't be much of a challenge. Sasuke was the first to move, he jumped down on the first genin and kicked him hard into a tree. Naruto followed as he appeared behind the second genin before jamming a three-pronged kunai into his throat and watched him bleed out until he died. The last genin as one of his teammates is knocked out and the other is killed by the Kanoha team. Give us your scroll and I might think about letting you go start Naruto sinisterly. The aim genin looked at him in fear and took out a heaven scroll and put it on the floor, tt there t that t's s my scroll ll, now j just let t me g go. Naruto took the scroll before burning it with a small fire sorry we already have a heaven scroll, I guess you have nothing to offer. Naruto smiled evilly, before the aimed genin could beg for his life, Naruto threw a wind-enhanced three-pronged kunai into his head, killing him instantly. Naruto you didn't have to kill him. Berated Sakura. Sakura in these exams we are enemies and besides the proctor said we could kill, so I'm going to take advantage of that, said Naruto as he finished with an evil smirk that caused Sakura to shudder. Let's get going, we still need to find an earth scroll said Naruto as he jumped into the tree. Sasuke-kun, why didn't you stop Naruto from killing him? Asked Sakura to her crush. Why should I care if a doe kills some trash from a rival village, replied Sasuke with a shrug. Sakura just lowered her head in disappointment at her teammate's low morality, she then began following them as Naruto locked onto another team sent. About one hour later they hid behind some bushes as they spied on a team from Kusa, they didn't spy for too long, since a red-headed girl with red eyes, glasses, and brown shinobi attire, sensed them. There's someone behind those bushes. She yelled at her teammates. Her teammates threw shuriken into the bushes, Team 7 jumped from the bushes into the trees. Sakura stayed back on the tree as Naruto and Sasuke engaged the Kusa team from behind. Perrin asked the Kusa genin. Perrin closed her eyes and scanned the area behind you. The Kusa genin turned around just in time to stop Naruto's kunai, the genin turned in time to stop a kick to his solar plexus from Sasuke. Naruto and the Kusa genin fought for dominance, Naruto smirked while the other scowled. Naruto decided he was tired of playing around and channeled wind chakra through his kunai. The three-pronged kunai cut through the other kunai like a hot knife through butter, the Kusa genin couldn't dodge in time and was slashed by Naruto's kunai. He looked at his injury and saw it was a really deep wound and he was bleeding a lot. 
he fell to his knees bleeding as Naruto approached and positioned a kunai at his throat. Any last words? Asked Naruto. Yeah, fuck you. Yelled the Kusa Genin. You're brave, not begging or pleading for your life. Just for that I'll give you a quick death. Naruto then quickly stabbed him in the heart killing him instantly. Sasuke was currently engaged in a Tajutsu battle with Akusa Genin, Sasuke smirked as he was able to easily push the Genin back and make him struggle. Sasuke then saw that Naruto was done with his kill and moved to end his fight, he started to speed his attacks up and landed a chakra-enhanced kick to the Genin's stomach, sending him flying back toward the tree. Sasuke watched as he flew toward the tree and heard a loud snap, the Kusa Genin then slumped over dead since his spine had snapped from the force of hitting the tree. Karen watched as her two teammates died, but she really didn't care about them. They had always hated Karen for holding them back, she would always support them from the back because she wasn't a frontline fighter. They hated her for that because they thought she was a burden to the team, even her sensei thought she was a burden holding back two promising shinobi. Naruto searched the genin's pockets until he found an earth scroll. Yes, this is the right scroll. Now let's head to the tower before anyone else can get there, said Naruto as he tossed the scrolls to him for safekeeping. Naruto turned to look at Karen expecting to see sadness, anger, depression, or fear. What he didn't expect to see was indifference, happiness, relief, and satisfaction. He was confused until he realized that she must have hated her teammates, the look on her face was the same look on his face whenever he killed a villager that tried to attack him when he was younger. The satisfaction that the person who hated and scorned you died a horrible death in front of you. You guys go ahead. I want to check if I can get some supplies from their bodies, I'll catch up to you later. Naruto lied since he wanted to be alone and try to recruit Karen to his side, he could see that she probably had a gifted sensory ability and would make a valuable addition to his forces. Sasuke just shrugged as he jumped on a tree and headed ahead. Sakura frowned, leaving the girl alone with Naruto. She already knew Naruto's moral compass wasn't pointing north. She hoped he wouldn't do anything that revealed his moral compass pointed completely south. Sakura after a moment of thinking decided to trust Naruto and went to catch up to Sasuke. Naruto stood in the clearing in front of a kneeling Karen. Karen noticed he was just standing there looking at him. Well, aren't you going to take their supplies? Asked Karen. No, I have plenty of supplies. Aren't you going to scream at me for killing your teammates? Replied Naruto. Karen shook her head. I hated those two, they would always leave me behind and insult me just because I wasn't the fighting type. I'm more of a support type of shinobi since I have a strong sensory ability. Interesting, so what are you going to do now that your team is dead? Asked Naruto. I have no idea, my sensei will probably just toss me aside now that his two prized students are dead. Well, you could come with me if you want, Naruto said as he rubbed his chin. Perrin looked at him skeptically. You mean join Kanoha? Naruto laughed no, I mean join me as a partner. I'm going to leave this weak village soon and I could use powerful and useful allies. Perrin scanned his chakra for any deceit or malice, when she scanned she was surprised with what she sensed. Her ability was that she was able to tell what kind of person someone is by their chakra, she could also sense chakra from far away and heal using her blood. She could sense that Naruto's chakra was dark, evil, cold, and hateful. When she looked deeper she could feel a tiny part of his chakra was bright, good, and warm, but it was rapidly being eaten up by the dark chakra. She knew that Naruto must have been a good and caring person when he was younger, but then some event must have caused the seeds of hate to spread and slowly consume his nice and caring chakra. She decided reluctantly to trust him, since she really had nothing to lose if she trusted him. Alright I'll join you, but I can't really leave safely. The other teams and animals will kill me said Karen. Naruto chuckled and threw a Horatian kunai on the ground. Don't worry I have a way of getting out of the forest, just grab my hand and I can drop you off at my compound. Naruto held out his hand and Karen hesitantly grabbed it. Naruto then concentrated on a Horatian kunai at his compound and disappeared in a yellow flash. Namika's compound. Naruto and Karen reappeared back at his compound in a yellow flash. Welcome to my home, go ahead and take one of the bedrooms upstairs. If you want to use the training grounds in the backyard, stay away from the fence since it will kill anyone that it doesn't recognize that gets close. Anyway, I should probably get back since I still have an exam to finish said Naruto. Wow this place is huge, are you from a rich clan? Asked Karen. Yeah, this is the Namika's clan compound. It was left for me by my father, the Yandame Hokage, Namika's Minato replied to Naruto. Karen was shocked to find out that he was the son of the Yandame Hokage, and even more shocked when she remembered he wanted to leave the village. You're the son of the Yandame Hokage, then why would you want to leave the villagers must love you. Naruto's face saddened a bit. The villagers don't love me, in fact it's the opposite, they all hate me. Why? Asked Karen. 
because before my father died he sealed the Kaiubi in me and told the old monkey Saratobi to tell the villagers I contained the Kaiubi and I would be treated like a hero, replied Naruto. Naruto continued. The villagers always viewed me as the Kaiubi instead of just a container, when I was six years old, I was chased into an alley by some drunks and almost killed. Wow, that's horrible, but did Sandane do anything? Asked Karen. Naruto's face turned angry. No, the old monkey just stood by and watched it happen. He would always lecture me about forgiving the villagers that attacked me and would release the same villagers with a slap on the wrist. That bastard could have kept his mouth shut and not told the village, I could have been adopted and had a family, but it was all ruined by the sand dame and his stupidity. Yelled Naruto as he lost his temper. I'm sorry, said Karen apologetically. Naruto's face softened. It's alright. I was just angry and lost my temper. Although one good thing did come out of Sandame's stupidity. What? Asked Karen. All the drunks tried to kill me in the alley when I was six, I passed out and met Kaiubi. He decided to help me get my revenge on the villagers and has been helping me ever since. He's been training me since I was six and was my first friend, replied Naruto. Oh, I'm touched, said Kurama with fake tears. Naruto mentally laughed shut up furball. Anyway I told you my story, hopefully I can hear yours when I get back from the exams. See you later Karen-chan. Naruto waved as Karen blushed at the honorific he gave her. All right bye Naruto kun Karen put her hand over her mouth as she blurted a personal honorific with Naruto's name. Naruto only laughed as he disappeared in a yellow flash. As Naruto left, he left Karen thinking maybe he can still be saved from that darkness that is eating away at him from the inside. Maybe one day that warm good chakra will push back and replace that dark evil chakra that resides in him, thought Karen since the whole conversation she had been watching his chakra through the conversation, she noticed that the bright warm chakra was slowly fighting back against the dark evil chakra. Don't worry Naruto-kun, I will save you from the darkness I promise. Chapter 8. Snake in the Tree and its Fox Hunter. Forest of Death. A team of aimed ins looked at the strange kunai in the middle of the clearing with interest, they had never seen a three-pronged kunai before or the strange writing on the handle. I wonder whose it is? Asked an overweight aimed in. The leader with a scar over his eye took the kunai from him. Who cares, it looks pretty cool. I think I'm going to keep it. They were so fixated on the kunai they didn't notice the yellow flash behind them. The last aimed in decided to voice his opinion. Why do you think the writing on it means? It's a formula used for teleportation, you may have heard of it. The technique is called the Horatian no Jutsu which explains a mysterious voice. Immediately the aimed ins were on guard and back to back, ready to face the ambush they thought was coming. Naruto stepped out of the shadows and in front of the aimed team with a bloodthirsty smirk. Who the hell are you? Demanded the leader. Me? I'm just a genin taking the chunin exam said Naruto in a childish voice. Ah, this guy doesn't look very tough let's just kill him and take his scroll, said the last aimed in cockily. You know I feel like you guys aren't worth my time, but you will make great target practice for my Magicum Sharingan stated Naruto as he closed his eyes and reopened them to reveal his Magicum pupil design. So what if you have some special eyes, we're still going to kill you? Said the leader as he approached Naruto with a kunai. Naruto just stood in place and let the genin slice him. The leader smirked as he sliced Naruto's neck only for the attack to completely pass through Naruto. What the hell was that? Asked the leader. That was one of my eye techniques called Kamui, here's another for you, teammate Naruto said before he looked at this fat teammate and thought Amaterasu. Naruto's left eye started to bleed and black flames started to burn the Aimnin. He screamed in agony as the black flames burned his skin to the bones until he was nothing but ashes. His teammates looked in horror as their teammate was burned alive with black flames, they jumped back and prepared to have the battle of their lives while Naruto practiced his techniques on some useless genin. The aim team leader took his umbrella from his back and threw it into the air, and the umbrella fired a barrage of needles at Naruto. The other aim nin used this chance and threw kunai with exploding tags attached to them. Ninja art. Raining needle death. Yelled the leader. Naruto looked unimpressed and just watched the needles and explosive kunai quickly head toward him. The kunai reached first and exploded causing a cloud of dust to obstruct their view of Naruto, they looked closer to make sure Naruto was dead. The aim team leader was too slow to dodge what looked like a black skeletal arm that erupted from the dust cloud and grabbed him. The dust cleared and showed Naruto unharmed, but he was surrounded by a skeletal ribsage with one arm. Too bad, I guess you weren't strong enough. Don't worry your death will be very painful, said Naruto with a sinister smirk. He used a Susanoo arm to throw the leader into a tree and turned his attention to the final teammate. The genin backed away in fear begging for his life, unfortunately Naruto had shown enough mercy for one day. He deactivated the Susanoo and activated the Kamui from his left eye, he watched as an interdimensional vortex ripped the genin apart before completely sucking him in. 
He walked back to the leader and saw he was trying to crawl away, Naruto noticed that his legs were probably broken, and he smirked. Naruto walked over and stepped on his broken leg, the leader hissed in pain. Where do you think you're going? Asked Naruto with a smirk. Please just L let Emmy go oh, pleaded the Aimnin. Naruto put his hand on his chin and hummed no, I don't think so. In fact you will make an excellent sacrifice for the Ido Tensei. Naruto activated the Kamui in his right eye and sucked the genin into his eye's dimension, the leader was screaming in fear the whole way inside. Naruto decided he had had enough fun and picked up his teammate's smell, but when he picked up his teammate's scent, he also picked up a strong smell of snakes. He headed toward them and picked up speed, hoping they weren't in danger. Not that he cared about them, if they died he wouldn't be able to advance to the next round. But Sasuke. Sasuke and Sakura were making their way toward the tower, they were suddenly stopped by a strong gust of wind that slammed them into a tree. Akusa Genin appeared from the tree and stood in front of the partial Team 7. My, my, it's good to finally meet you Sasuke-kun. Said Kusa Kanoichi. Who are you and what do you want from me? Hissed Sasuke. Me? I'm just here to offer you the power to kill Itachi, but you will have to prove you are worthy of my gift, replied the Kusanin. The Kusanin gave off a large amount of Kai, the amount of Kai caused Sakura and Sasuke to freeze in place and not be able to move. Sakura fell to her knees, and Sasuke tried his hardest to move despite the fear, as the Kusanin approached she started making hand signs and finished on the snake sign. A huge gust of wind approached both Genin, Sasuke knew if he didn't dodge him, and Sakura would be killed. Sasuke got desperate and pulled out a kunai to stab himself, the pain overwhelmed the Kai, and he was able to grab Sakura and dodge the attack. Well, you use pain to regain control of your body. Impressive, I think I will play with you for a while Sasuke-kun. After Sasuke put unconscious Sakura in a safe location, he went to fight the Kusanin and hoped he could defeat her. The Kusanin attacked Sasuke, both started out with Tejutsu with Sasuke throwing a barrage of punches and kicks, while the Kusanin dodged effortlessly. Sasuke grit his teeth and activated his Sharingan while he sent a roundhouse rick toward her head, the Kusanin ducked and punched Sasuke in the solar plexus, sending him back into the tree. Sasuke landed on the branch and threw a kunai at the Kusanin, who in turn caught the kunai. I'm disappointed in you Sasuke-kun, you'll never be able to kill Itachi if this is your strength to mock the Kusanin. Sasuke turned red in anger. Shut up, I will kill Itachi and avenge the Ichiha clan. Sasuke took out five shuriken and threw them at the Kusanin, who effortlessly deflected them with the kunai he had caught. Sasuke smirked as he pulled on the ninja wire attached to the shuriken, the ninja wire wrapped around the Kusanin and incapacitated her. Sasuke did some quick hand seals fire style. Dragon flame jutsu. Sasuke brought up the ninja wire to his mouth and set it on fire, the fire traveled down the wire and began burning the trapped Kusanin. Sasuke smirked as the Kusanin screamed in agony while her body was on fire. The fire died down, and Sasuke was shocked when he saw the Kusanin wasn't dead, her skin was peeled off, and behind her face was another face, except this face was pale white, with purple markings around his eyes, and yellow slit eyes. Koo, 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 well done Sasuke-kun. I never expected you to trick me like that, but I'm afraid you still need to prove you deserve my gift, chuckled at the pale mysterious man. Who the hell are you? yelled Sasuke. Orochimaru, S rank missing Nin, one of the legendary Sanin and the most wanted criminal in Kanoha right next to Uchiha Itachi, responded with a mysterious voice. Both Sasuke and Orochimaru looked around to find the owner of the voice, Orochimaru was especially surprised since he couldn't sense anyone around. Naruto stepped out from the shadows and in front of both of them. Koo, 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 if it isn't one of Sasuke's teammates. I'm surprised that you were able to get this close without me detecting you, said Orochimaru with amusement in his voice. What's an S rank missing nin doing in Kanoha during the Chunin exams? Asked Naruto. I'm just here to give young Sasuke kun a gift and then I will be on my way replied Orochimaru. You're lying and I know it, I'll just have to beat the information out of you said Naruto as he took out a bottle of pills from his vest. I'll have to go all out from the beginning, he's an S rank missing nin, I don't think four tails will be enough. If I take two pills my body will gain enough durability that I'll be able to withstand six tails, but I'll probably collapse from exhaustion afterward Naruto thought about what to do, in the end he took two pills and started channeling Kurama's chakra. He slowly changed from his version 1 state to his version 2 state with six tails. Naruto's version 2 state was massively different from his 1 state, now Naruto looked like a mini Kaiubi his body was covered by a deep crimson coat in the shape of a fox with 6 tails, his eyes were nothing more than wide orbs, and a partial fox skeleton covered his body. Orochimaru at first smirked when he saw Naruto in his version 1 state, the smirk then turned to a look of shock when Naruto went to his version 2 state. Impossible. The boy is only 12 years old, his body shouldn't be strong enough to withstand 6 tails of power. 
Father Achimeru. Sasuke just stood in fear at the amount of power and Chakra Naruto was releasing how. What is this chakra he's using? It's just like the chakra he used in Nami no Kuni, except this is more powerful, and evil thought Sasuke. Ayubi Naruto let loose a powerful roar until he disappeared in a blur and punched Orochimaru, sending him through a tree and crashing into the ground forming a large crater. Orochimaru stood up and realized he needed to end this quickly before the Hokage and his Anbu came. Over near Naruto he did some quick hand claw seals and summoned Hideki, his messenger fox. Hideki was surprised when he appeared and his summoner was using six tails of his master's chakra. How may I help you Naruto-sama? Asked the small fox. Hideki, I need you to stick around near me. When I collapse from exhaustion, Sandame and his Anbu will try to take me out of the exam. Your job is to tell the Sandame that Orochimaru, the S-rank criminal from Konoha is inside the village and I tried to fight him using your master's chakra. Also tell him not to take me out of the exams, I'll be fine and should wake up in a few hours, answered Kayubi Naruto. Very well Naruto-sama, I will perform your orders. Hideki then went and hid in the shadows near his summoner. Naruto used his speed and appeared in front of Orochimaru, he saw Orochimaru perform some quick hand seals and slammed his hands into the ground. Puchigas. Ido Tensei. Yelled Orochimaru. Naruto's eyes widened it looks like he was able to improve on the Ido Tensei, but who could he have that would be a match for me in my six-tailed state. The coffin rose from the ground with the number one on the lid, the lid opened, and Naruto's eyes widened even more when he saw the Shadame Hokage. Hit this is very bad, do not let the Shadame catch you if he does it's all over. Yelled Kurama as the bad situation arose. Orochimaru smirked and inserted a kunai with an instructions tag into the Shadame's head. His head rose up and his eyes turned completely white, the Shadame rushed Naruto and punched him in the face, sending him back into a tree. Orochimaru used this chance to get to Sasuke, since he didn't have enough time he would have to give Sasuke his curse mark and leave quickly before the Hokage arrived. The Ido Tensei Yandame vs. Six-Tailed Naruto. Naruto was knocked out of his shock when the Shadame punched him into a tree, he quickly rushed the Shadame and punched him into the ground, forming a huge crater. Naruto jumped back and put distance between himself and the resurrected Hokage. Damn it. What the hell am I going to do? The only way to stop him is to seal him, but I don't have any sealing tags. Even if I did the minute I exit my version 2 state I'll collapse from exhaustion thought Naruto. This is quite the situation, your notes on this said that sealing or the summoner deactivating is the only way to stop the reanimated corpse. Try and hold him off until the Anbu get here, if he uses his Mokuten powers to suppress me, I'm going to be gone for at least two days said Kurama. Naruto decided he would just have to buy his time until the Sandame arrived, he was knocked out of his thoughts when a wooden tentacle erupted from the ground and tried to wrap around him. He dodged the tentacle only to be ambushed by more tentacles, he looked around and saw that there were wooden tentacles coming in from all sides. He looked for an opening and found one, he immediately jumped through and avoided the trap, and he continued running from the pursuing tentacles and ran toward the Shadame. Fire style. Demon Fox Hellfire. Naruto released fire from his mouth toward the Shadame who in turn did some quick hand seals and a half dome protected him. He noticed the wood stopped jazzing him and continued his attack, he used his claws to break the wooden dome and slash the Shadame into a tree. He then tilted his head up and gathered positive black chakra and negative white chakra using his tails forming a small, dense purple sphere of chakra. He then swallowed the sphere and his body gained tremendous weight from all the dense chakra inside his body. Smoke escaped his mouth and Naruto spit out the concentrated energy Bajdama. The bright beam of chakra rushed the Shadame Hokage. The Shadame had barely enough time to slam his hands into the ground, layer after layer of wood rose to protect him, the beam of chakra impacted the wood and a large cloud of smoke covered the area. Naruto waited to see what had happened to the Shadame, he didn't expect wooden tentacles to rise from the ground and wrap around him. He struggled to get out of the tentacles grasp, but the wood was suppressing his power. The Shadame emerged from the smoke performing hand seals. Naruto recognized the seals he was performing as the Shadame's technique Hokage style 60 year old technique enclosed hermitage entering society with bliss bringing hands. Naruto struggled even more against his restraints, but it was futile as the Shadame slammed his palm into Naruto's chest and attached a blue strand of chakra. Pillars of wood rose around Naruto to suppress Kaiubi's chakra and keep Naruto still, the kanji for Sid appeared on the Shadame's palm and he forced Kurama's chakra back into his seal. Kurama screamed in pain as his chakra was forced back into the seal, and he lost consciousness. On the outside the six-tailed cloak slowly receded and Naruto's body emerged, when the war was over Naruto fell to the ground unconscious and exhausted. The coffin rose from the ground and the Shadame stepped inside, now that his mission was accomplished, the coffin sank into the ground, leaving an unconscious Naruto and a hiding Hideki. Hokage Tower. 
Tsuritobi was currently sitting in his office doing paperwork when he felt a powerful evil chakra that he recognized. An Anbu barged into the room as Tsuritobi was putting on his battle armor. Hokage-sama. Screamed the monkey-masked Anbu. I've already felt the chakra, alert two Anbu squads, and have them follow me into the forest of death commanded by the Hokage. Hi. Shouted the Anbu as he left to relay the orders of his leader. What could have possibly happened if you needed to use that chakra Naruto-kun? Thought Sandaim as he jumped out the window. Orochimaru vs Sasuke. Sasuke was slowly getting over his shock and preparing to get Sakura to get the hell away from Orochimaru. His ninja senses kicked in and he dodged a kick from the snake Sanon, he jumped to the adjacent branch and did some quick hand seals. Fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu. Thought Sasuke as he shot six fireballs toward Orochimaru. Orochimaru easily dodged and sent snakes from his sleeve to wrap around Sasuke, the snakes wrapped around Sasuke only for Sasuke to turn into a log. Orochimaru turned around to see Sasuke trying to hit him with a shuriken, Orochimaru smirked and sidestepped the shuriken. He rushed Sasuke intent on finishing him and giving him his curse mark, once Sasuke got his mark he would have to leave quickly. Sasuke was exhausted and his small rest only helped a small bit, he was starting to feel exhausted again and slow. Orochimaru used this weakness and extended his neck to an unimaginable length, his head neared Sasuke's neck who was too exhausted to dodge properly. He sunk his fangs into Sasuke and backed away as a curse mark with three Tamo appeared on his neck. Orochimaru then noticed that he couldn't feel Kaiubi's chakra and had the resurrected Shadame go back into his coffin. He turned his attention back to Sasuke as he sank into the ground, you will come to me seeking power Sasuke-kun, the power to kill Itachi that I can give you. Sasuke listened and once Orochimaru was gone he fell unconscious. Okage with Anbu. Saratobi and his Anbu entered the forest and ran toward the Kaiubi's chakra, all of a sudden the chakra was cut off and they couldn't feel it anymore. They headed into the direction of the chakra and arrived in a clearing five minutes later. Saratobi could see Naruto face down in the dirt, bloodied and his clothes ripped up. Anbu took him to the hospital commanded by Saratobi. I wouldn't do that if I were you, said a hidden voice. All the Anbu tensed and drew their weapons ready to protect their leader. Hideki appeared from the shadows in front of the Hokage. I remember you, your name is Hideki. Asked Saratobi. That's right Hokage-sama, I am one of Naruto-sama's messenger foxes, Hideki answered. Why are you here? Asked the Hokage. He asked me to deliver you a message in case this happens. He told me he needed to go to a six-tailed state in order to fight off someone named Orochimaru, an S-ranked criminal of Konoha. He knew once he released this much chakra he would collapse afterward and alert you and your Anbu. He also told me to tell you not to take him out of the exams, he will wake up in a few hours and want to continue the exams, explained Hideki. Tsuritobi frowned. Did he tell you why Orochimaru was here? No, he only had me relay the message to you and carry him off somewhere safe where he can recover, answered Hideki. How is it possible that Orochimaru could have been able to escape a Jinchikriki with six tails of power? Asked a mole masked Anbu. Orochimaru wasn't the one that fought Naruto-sama, he performed a strange act that summoned what looked like the Shadame Hokage who had Mokuten powers. Naruto-sama was no match and was captured by its Mokuten and suppressed my master's chakra, explained Hideki. Tsuritobi frowned deeper. So you decided to use the Orochimaru? Very well, what about his other teammates? Asked the Hokage. From what I saw it looked like the Ichiha was over there Hideki pointed toward another clearing. Other than that I was watching Naruto-sama's fight and Hideki responded. The old Hokage motioned for the Anbu to go towards the Ichiha's last known location. Hideki went over and put Naruto on his back, he ran towards another clearing under a tree and stood guard to prevent anyone from trying to kill his summoner. But Sakura. Sakura was running through the forest carrying Sasuke, when she had woken up she saw some pale head with a long neck bite Sasuke and give him a strange mark. When the person had left she had run over to Sasuke and saw he was unconscious, she picked up her crush and ran as fast as she could and hid under a tree. She wondered where Naruto was, she squashed that thought and continued to worry about Sasuke. She had set up a perimeter with traps so no one could sneak up on her while she protected Sasuke and waited for Naruto to find them. She continued to watch Sasuke and worry about her precious Acha. Sasuke-kun, please be alright thought Sakura as she continued to monitor her surroundings. But Saratobi. All eight Anbu kneeled before their leader in the forest. Report said Saratobi in an authoritative voice. The lizard, masked by Anbu, first spoke Hokage-sama. We did not find Ichiha Sasuke, it seems he was taken, and whoever took him did their best to cover their tracks. The hawk-masked Anbu spoke next. We have also collected evidence that Orochimaru had indeed been here in the forest, and signs of battle were found. The Sandame sighed very well, Anbu Squad 8 went and informed the Anbu commander that as of now the village is a code red. 
Anbu Squad 13 gathered the council so that I may tell them about the situation. Arachimaru in the village is not to be told to anyone under Jonin rank or civilians, am I clear? All the Anbu gave a high. And left to accomplish their orders. The Sandane was left to his thoughts why are you here my wayward student, if it has anything to do with the harm of Kanoha, I will make sure you do not leave the village. I will make sure I finish what I started all those years ago. Saratobi made his way out of the forest and toward the council room, where he was already feeling the headache coming. One day later. Naruto woke up one day after he had been defeated by the resurrected Shadame Hokage, he looked around and saw he was under a tree in the forest of death, with Hideki standing guard. Hideki how long was I out? Asked Naruto. You were only out for a day, Naruto-sama responded to the small fox. Naruto stood up and stretched to work out the kinks in his body, he checked himself over and saw that all his clothes were torn and some of his injuries had scabs, instead of being fully healed. Naruto sat in a meditative position and went into his mindscape. Mindscape? Naruto entered his mindscape and found himself a forest, except this forest wasn't filled with life it was quiet and eerie. All the trees looked like they had been set on fire and were only left blackened from the flames. He looked in the distance and saw Karama laying down unconscious with a seal around his neck. Looks like he was right when the Shadain would have him knocked out thought Naruto. Naruto then gave a sinister smirk and climbed onto Karama's back, he then imagined pink bows and tied them on his head and each of his tails. He then activated his Sharingan to memorize this moment and blackmail Karama later. He then left his mindscape to continue the exams. Outside world. Naruto left his meditative position and turned to Hideki. Thanks Hideki for watching over me, you can go home now. Said Naruto. Not a problem Naruto-sama Hideki bowed before disappearing in a puff of smoke. Naruto quickly unsealed a new pair of clothes to replace his torn clothes. He was now wearing his black anbu pants, a kunai holster, extra holsters for shuriken and scrolls, dark blue shirt, red and black jacket, and steel-plated gloves. Naruto looked around and had no idea where he was, he sniffed the air and caught the scent of Sakura. He jumped on the trees and made his way toward Sakura's direction, he arrived to what looked like a fight 15 minutes later. Sakura was being held by the girl from the Odo team, while her teammates watched. Below the tree he could see Sasuke unconscious, and Lee defeated a few feet from the one-eyed Odo Genin. Instead of taking care of your hair like a useless civilian, you should have trained to be a shinobi. Now you're going to die said Odo Kanoichi as she positioned a kunai on her throat. Naruto threw a three-pronged kunai at the Odo Kanoichi, the kunai buried itself in her leg, and she screamed in pain. HHH, who the hell did that? She screamed as she released Sakura and tried to stop the bleeding. Naruto teleported to the kunai that had hit her, he then unsealed his katana and stabbed her through the chest before she could realize what had happened. Kin. Yelled Zaku. Well, what do we have here? The little Odo Genin, I was wrong, you are strong, well as strong as Sakura, though I would take that as an insult rather than a compliment. Naruto was nonchalantly wiping the blood from his katana on Kin's jacket. Naruto. Yelled Sakura in relief. You bastard, I'll kill you. Yelled Zaku as he positioned his arms up. Decapitating airwaves. Deadly blasts of air left his hands toward Naruto. Naruto yawned and easily sidestepped the air. He smirked and ran towards Aku, he would dodge as Aku wasted Chakra repeating the same attack over and over again. He appeared behind Aku with his katana drawn, unfortunately Dosu had gotten near Naruto and activated his melody arm. Naruto fell to his knees as Dosu's attack affected his inner ear, Zaku smirked and pointed his arms at Naruto intent on finishing the job. Naruto gained enough of his senses to dodge the attack sloppily and get a cut on his left arm and leg. He put some distance from the two and took some deep breaths, since Kurama was still unconscious, he couldn't repair whatever Dosu's attack had done. Not bad, it looks like I have to be careful of that fucking arm of yours. It looks like you both use your arms for your attacks, I'll just have to rip them off said Naruto with a smirk. Naruto gained most of his senses and started doing hand seals fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu. Then fireballs headed toward the two Odo Genin, they were both separated, and Naruto made two shadow clones to distract Zaku while he takes care of Dosu personally. He stood in front of Dosu and started making hand seals earth style. Earth flow spears. He slammed his hands into the ground and sharp spears of earth rose from the ground and almost impaled Dosu had he not jumped into the air, unfortunately Naruto had expected this and used his next attack. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. Yelled Naruto as a fireball hit Dosu in midair. Dosu had used a substitution to avoid Naruto's fireball and came up from behind. Dosu came up behind Naruto and activated his melody arm, he was surprised when Naruto exploded. Great clone explosion, I always wanted to try that, said Naruto as he jumped down from the tree. Naruto did some quick hand signs and called out his attack before Dosu could recover. Fire style. Burning ash. 
Naruto, when the fire cleared it revealed a badly burned Dosu face down on the ground, but still breathing. As Naruto approached he unsealed his katana and stabbed it through his melody arm, Dosu screamed in pain as the katana pierced his arm. You smell a lot like a certain snake I know, what do you know about Orochimaru? Asked Naruto. Dog's eyes widened. I'll never tell you about Orochimaru-sama. Naruto smirked and sliced off Dog's melody arm, Dosu screamed in agony as he lost a lot of blood from his severed arm. I'll ask again, what do you know about Orochimaru? Never, you're wasting your time, said Dosu defiantly. Naruto got annoyed, he then picked up Dosu and looked him in the eye, Naruto activated his Manjukum Sharingan. Naruto used his Tsukiyomi on Dosu, after 10 hours in the Tsukiyomi world and 2 seconds in the real world Dosu cracked. I'll tell you what you want to know, just stop for the love of Kami. Yelled Dosu. Naruto dropped Dosu and unsealed his katana again to put it at Dosu's throat. Talk. Said Naruto in a serious voice. Orochimaru sent us here to kill Ichiha Sasuke and get into the final round of the Chunin exams, he also has an invasion planned using Odo with the help of Suna during the final round of the Chunin exams. He plans on releasing the Sunjinch Kriki during the round and have his forces invade from the outside of the village. That's all I know I swear. Pleaded Dosu. Okay now time to get rid of some loose ends, said Naruto as he prepared to kill Dosu. Dosu pleaded for his life until Naruto sensed an evil and foul chakra, although not as evil and foul as Kurama's, it was still noticeable. Well it looks like things got a lot more interesting, said Naruto with a smirk. He turned back to Dosu and activated his Kamui, he sucked in Dosu to join the Aim Genin, where they would both be used as Ido Tensei sacrifices. All of a sudden he received his Shadow Clone's memories, and from what he could tell, Orochimaru's curse seal had finally manifested, and Sasuke was using its power to kill Zaku. He teleported to the kunai leftover from his ambush of kin. When he arrived he saw that Sasuke was trying to pull Zaku's arms off while Sakura was yelling for him to stop. He also noticed the teams 9 and 10 were watching Sasuke go mad. Sakura made a move to try and stop Sasuke, but Naruto stopped her by grabbing her hand. Naruto, what the fuck are you doing? I have to stop Sasuke-kun. Yelled Sakura as she fought from Naruto's grip. No Sakura this is the way the shinobi world is, it is covered in blood. Those who don't want to spill blood and bring death have no business being a ninja, said Naruto as he tightened his grip on Sakura. Naruto then turned his attention to Sasuke Ichiha hurry up and kill him so we can get to the tower and not be the last ones to get there. Don't worry Dobe, I'll make this quick said Sasuke with a maniacal grin. No Sasuke-kun, don't do it. Don't be like Naruto. Yelled Sakura as she continued to struggle out of Naruto's grip. All of a sudden Naruto stiffened and let go of Sakura, Sakura ran toward Sasuke to stop him. Naruto looked in the corner of his eyes and saw Nara Shikamaru with his shadow extended toward him and Yamanaka Ino in her family's mind transfer hand position. Shadow possession jutsu success, Ino hurried up and entered his mind so we could tie him up. Yelled Shikamaru. Right. Mind transfer jutsu. Ino left her mind and went into Naruto's, not knowing what she had gotten herself into. Naruto's mindscape. Ino found herself inside Naruto's mind and saw all around her were burned trees and black soil. She continued walking and saw a giant fox with nine tails. You made a big mistake coming here, Ino said in a voice behind her. She turned around and saw Naruto. What the hell is that? Naruto chuckled darkly that Ino is the Kyubi no Kitsune, it's sealed inside my body and protects my mind from people like you and your family. Naruto noticed that Kurama was waking up. You woke up earlier than you said, have a nice nap. Am a kid, I told you not to get caught in the shot aims Mokuten B, but now you decide to sit still and wait for him to step out of the smoke. Of all the idiotic. Kurama stopped his rant when he saw the shocked Ino. Kid, who the hell is this? Asked Kurama. Why this is Ino, a fellow Kanoha genin that made the mistake of coming into my mind. Now she has to pay the consequences, Eater, explained Naruto. Ino was knocked out of her shock when he said Eater. But pleasure it's been a while since I have had a human. Kurama lunged at Ino who in turn screamed in fear, forgetting she could cancel her. Make sure you don't digest her, I want to use her as a bargaining chip if the situation arrives or one hell of a joke, said Naruto with a dark laugh. Kurama looked annoyed. You tell me to eat her, and then you tell me not to digest her. Then where the hell do you want me to put her? I have no idea, maybe you should put her inside your head and make her experience her worst fears. It would be hilarious when she comes out a broken Kinoichi. Kurama gave his own grin. Can I make her into a vegetable? No, I need her to be broken, but not that broken said Naruto. Kurama gave a disappointed look way to take the fun out of it. Anyway I should get going. Outside world. As Shikamaru and Shinjai watched in anticipation, Ino's body let out a piercing scream and went limp. 
Damn that was weird having another person in my mind, said Naruto as he saw he was still caught in Shikamaru's shadow possession. Nara you better release me before I kill you, we may be from the same village, but I can still kill you threatened Naruto. What the hell did you do to Ino? Yelled Shikamaru. Naruto smirked why, whatever do you mean, I haven't touched her. You did something in your mind, otherwise she would be back in her body. Aren't you the smart one, fine I'll tell you what I did. But first you have to answer a question. Do you know what a Jinchikriki is? Asked Naruto. Shikamaru gave him a confused and angry look. No I don't, what does this have to do with what you did to Ino? I'm disappointed, you seem so smart, but it looks like I misjudged you. A Jinchikriki is a human who has had one of the nine biju that roam the world sealed inside of them, these Jinchikriki are very strong because they have an unlimited chakra source and are protected from people like the Yamanaka clan, explained Naruto. Shikamaru was sweating as he continued to weaken. How does it protect them from the Yamanaka? Naruto laughed, they have biju trapped inside their minds Nara, what do you think happens when a Yamanaka goes into the mind of a Jinchikriki? Shikamaru thought about it for a minute before going pale and whispering. What was that Nara? Shikamaru spoke louder this time they eat them. Ding, ding, ding we have a winner, turns out you are smart, Nara said Naruto sarcastically. Shikamaru turned red with rage. Bring her back. What part of E don't you understand Nara, she's gone, said Naruto. Shikamaru and Shinjai gave shocked faces until Naruto continued. But, I might be able to convince my tenant to spit her back up. If you can somehow get into the tower with the unconscious Ino, I'll convince him to spit her out and let her out. Jai had a helpful look while Shikamaru had a scowl on his face. Fine, we'll do it, but you better hold your end of the deal. Jai picked up Ino's limp body and followed Shikamaru to the tower. Naruto turned around and saw everyone was staring at him wide-eyed, even the still-alive Zaku. Oh yeah, I forgot about you guys. He turned his attention to Zaku. Shouldn't you be dead? Naruto looked around and saw Sakura crying over an unconscious Asuke, I guess if they can't do it right you do it yourself. He appeared behind Zaku quicker than anyone could notice with his katana drawn. He swung down and watched as his blade sliced diagonally through Zaku's body until it went out the other way. Both halves of Zaku's body slid before they fell apart and all the internal organs spilled out, everyone watched with shocked faces and emptied their stomachs when they saw all the gore, while Naruto only smiled like a maniac. He started walking toward Team 9. What the hell are you doing here? Niji was the first to speak. We just came to pick up our idiot Lee. We'll be leaving now. Niji picked up Lee and turned to Tenten. Come along, Tenten said to Niji with fear in his voice, rather than his usual arrogance. Tenten followed suit, and Naruto turned to see a crying Sakura over Sasuke. He made his way over until Sakura stood up with a kunai ready to defend Sasuke. Get away from Sasuke kun you monster. Yelled Sakura. Naruto only rolled his eyes of all the kunoichi in my class I get you, relax you pink haired whore, I'm not going to kill your precious, I still need him if I want to advance to the next round. He walked past Sakura who was still crying and looked at Sasuke's curse mark. I must admit this is some pretty complex seal. It has got all the necessary algorithms for a mind control seal, the algorithms for a chakra storage seal, and an algorithm for a chakra transformation seal. Overall Orochimaru can't have created this himself, there must be a seal master helping him. I wonder who. He was knocked out of his thoughts when Sakura came up next to him. Do you know what that is? Asked Sakura in an unusually subdued tone. He looked at her and mentally sighed in relief. It's a curse seal from Orochimaru, an s rank criminal from Konoha, the seal indicates that it controls Sasuke's mind and takes his chakra, while converting it into something more powerful that is regular chakra. Help me take him under the tree so I can seal it away from his body. Sakura nodded and helped move Sasuke under the tree again. He summoned a shadow clone and ordered it to go to the compound and get the items necessary for the sealing, the clone obeyed and left in a yellow flash. Naruto waited in silence for five minutes until the clone returned with chakra ink, a brush, and sealing paper. He turned to Sakura. While I was writing the seal, you took off his shirt so I could apply the seal more easily. Sakura blushed but nodded nonetheless. After writing up a long and complex seal to negate the curse seal's mind control seal, he also added some extra things, a Horatian formula since he knew with the power Sasuke had experienced he would go running to Orochimaru for more, once Sasuke was with Orochimaru he would teleport to him and get Orochimaru to give him what he wanted. He also added a suppression seal, so that he would be able to automatically seal off the curse seal's power if he wanted to. The last thing he added was a kill switch where if activated the curse seal would release all of the stored chakra at once and overwhelm Sasuke's body, killing him. He finished the seal and made his way over to an unconscious Sasuke and a blushing Sakura. He sat Sasuke up and placed his seal over Sasuke's curse seal, he then did some quick hand signs and poured chakra into his seal. 
Poor Star Darkness Seal said Naruto as the seal left the paper and crawled onto Sasuke's skin. When he lifted the paper he saw that Sasuke's seal was surrounded with what looked like two overlapping stars with seal algorithms instead of ink lines. He then created a shadow clone to go to the tower and plant a Horatian kunai near the entrance so they wouldn't have to deal with any other teams on the way there. Ere it's done, we'll rest here until he wakes up then we'll go to the tower. Sakura only nodded and continued to watch over Sasuke as Naruto just leaned back on the tree root and closed his eyes thinking I wonder what Karen-chan is doing. Namika's clan compound. Perrin was walking around the enormous house, exploring the house. The previous day she had explored the training grounds and the basement, today she was exploring the second floor. When she had finally reached the last room she hadn't explored, she opened the door and was surprised with what she saw. At least 50 clones were running around the large room looking through books and taking notes, and one of the clones noticed her and walked over. Can I help you Karen-chan? Asked the clone. Perrin blushed slightly at the clone I was just exploring the house, what is this place? This is the library study, it's where the clones do research on new techniques and sealing methods for the boss. Right now we are trying to find a way of improving two of the boss's techniques, but it's really tough finding a solution to explain the clone. Maybe I can help, I'm getting bored walking around the house said Karen. Sure, it wouldn't hurt having a new mind helping, since we clones are basically the same mind, you might be able to find something we couldn't reply to the clone. Come with me so I can show you the techniques we are trying to improve. The clone led Karen outside to the training grounds and created four shadow clones. He ordered them to perform the futon. Ras and Shuriken. The clones did as instructed and two threw the attack which in turn dissipated into thin air. The other two ran toward a tree where they exploded into a large dome of wind that left nothing but a crater. You see our dilemma, the is very destructive, but it can't be thrown, so the boss will get hurt every time he uses it. Interesting, what about the other asked Karen. The clone nodded and created four more shadow clones with the same instructions, but instead to create the Caton. Race in MOLOTOV fire style. Spiraling Molotov. Let's put some distance between ourselves, said the clone as he led Karen away. The first two clones performed the and tried to throw it, but it exploded and left a small crater in the ground. They turned to the other two who thrust the attack into a tree, the attack exploded and created a dome of red and white flames that left behind a large crater and scorched the surrounding earth. This one has a similar problem, except this one had a larger destructive power, so thrusting this into an enemy would be suicide. We have already done enough chakra control that we would be able to do medical ninjutsu, but we still cannot throw them. We are out of options and we aren't finding any other explanation for the clone. Perrin put a hand on her chin and hummed in a thinking manner before she came to a realization. Have you ever thought about using natural energy? Asked Karen. We already thought of that and it sounded like a good idea, the only problem was that to learn how to harness natural energy, you have to go to Mount Momboku and undergo sage training. If the boss by some miracle was able to sign the toad summoning contract he would have to give up his fox contract, also it would be easier for Konoha to track him, since the toads are loyal to Konoha and could report him movements once he leaves the village, explained the Naruto clone. That's too bad, if only Naruto-kun had the Mokuten bloodline he would be able to use a different variant of sage mode, said Karen. The clone's eyebrow twitched. What did you say? I said that if Naruto-kun had the Mokuten bloodline he could use a variant of sage mode, since the history book said that the Shadane used his Mokuten sage mode to help defeat Ichiha Madara at the Valley of the End. The Naruto clone grabbed his hair and ripped it out why the hell didn't we think of that? Perrin was startled by the sudden outburst. What are you talking about? Naruto-kun doesn't have the Mokuten bloodline, does he? Actually Karen, the boss, does have it along with the Sharingan responding to the clone. The clone did some quick hand seals and slammed his hand into the earth, a tree grew from the ground and in front of a gaping Karen. The clone then turned to Karen with its Sharingan activated, needless to say Karen was shocked that Naruto had two of Konoha's most powerful bloodlines. How? Asked Karen wanting to know. When the boss was younger, Kaiubi rewrote his DNA to give him the Senju genes and Achiha genes. Boss is basically one-fourth Senju, one-fourth Achiha, one-fourth Namikas, and one-fourth Uzumaki, Kurama also told him that if he ever had kids, they would have a chance to inherit either the Sharingan or the Mokuten, but not both explained the clone. Anyway, we will have to get a clone to break into the Senju compound again and search for the scroll that contains information about the Mokuten sage mode. We should get inside and inform the other clones about this said the clone. Perrin only nodded and walked inside the house. Oh and Karen-chan called the clone. Yes asked Karen. Thanks if it wasn't for you we might never have figured this out and the boss would have been stuck with two unusable clones, said the clone with a small smile. Perrin blushed at the praise, the only thing that would make that better would be if Naruto was the one giving it, don't thank me I was just trying to be useful. 
Anyway I should go to bed, it's getting pretty late. Good night said Karen as she made her way toward her room. Good night Karen Chan said the clone as he entered the study and began giving orders to the other clones. Next day. Day 3 of the Chunin exams. Sasuke woke up with a headache and no recollection as to what had happened the previous day. Sasuke tried to sit up, but a headache kept him down. Ah what happened? Asked Sasuke. Sasuke-kun. Yelled Sakura as she hugged Sasuke. Sakura let go. Yelled Sasuke even though he was too weak to push her off. So you're finally awake. It's about time Ichiha mocked Naruto. Sasuke looked over and saw Naruto was sharpening his katana with a rock. Shut up dope, when you're more useful than me you can mock me and scold Sasuke. Naruto chuckled. Actually Sasuke, I am more useful than you. You receive a powerful, new power, and you let the pink-haired banshee stop you from testing out that power. All it took was one small hug from that useless bitch, and you came out like a light. Sasuke scowled what the hell are you talking about? Yesterday during our fight with Orochimaru he gave you a curse seal, it's a seal that over time siphons out your regular chakra and transforms it into something much more powerful. It's not as powerful as my Biju chakra, but it's still pretty powerful. You were probably unconscious while it manifested and converted your chakra, that's when those Odogenin attacked Sakura to try and kill you. Apparently she is like an attraction to losers, that weakling Lee tried to help her, but he was defeated. When I got here she was already about to get her throat slit, and I had to step in and save both your asses, so I could continue on to the third round. After killing two of the Odogenin, I moved on to the last one, but you were already killing him, so I let you have your fun. Unfortunately Sakura had other plans, she wanted to save her precious Achiha from becoming a monster like me. If I am a monster that all the ninja villages are just giant monster villages, there are people much worse than me and who have killed a lot more. Anyway, she stopped you from killing him, and then I finished off the last one while you were unconscious, explained Naruto. Sasuke scowled at what Naruto had told him, if he was right then he must have developed some sort of feelings for her which was not alright. Sakura only stood there in tears, crying from the insults Naruto had just given her. She thought he was her teammate and he would never have treated her like that, she was wrong. Anyway, let's get to the tower so we can finally get on with the exam said Naruto as he grabbed both teammates' shoulders and disappeared in a yellow flash. Tower. They arrived at the tower and entered through the front door to see a riddle on the wall. If you do not possess heaven, gain knowledge and be prepared. If you do not possess earth, run through the fields and seek strength. If you open both heaven and earth scrolls, dangerous paths turn into safe paths. I think we have to open both the scrolls to know the answer, Ichiha you open the heaven scroll I'll open the earth scroll said Naruto. Sasuke only gave an HN and threw Naruto the earth scroll while he took the heaven scroll. When they opened the scrolls Naruto noticed that the scroll contained a teleportation formula and threw it on the ground, Sasuke followed suit and threw it on top. Smoke exploded from the scrolls and when it cleared it showed none other than Hada Kakashi, their jonin sensei. He didn't look very happy, he looked at Naruto especially. Congratulations on passing, Sasuke and Sakura go ahead. I need to talk to Naruto said Kakashi in his serious tone of voice. Once they left Kakashi turned his attention to Naruto. What did you do? What do you mean sensei? Asked Naruto in an innocent tone. You know damn well what I mean, Yamanaka Ino is in a mental coma and her father is furious. Shikamaru told his sensei what you told him and he in turn told Inoichi and now he wants your head. Yelled Kakashi. Naruto only laughed wow this is hilarious, first of all I could care less if the Yamanaka clan head wants me dead. He can come after me like all the villagers did in the past and I'll do to him what I did to them, kill him and deliver his body to his family. Second, I told Nara that if he wanted Ino back, I would try and convince Kaiubi to spit her out, although he is a well you better get her out or else the Hokage might not be able to stop the Yamanaka clan from killing you warned Kakashi. Naruto laughed even louder. Hahaha, <laughs> you think a weak clan like the Yamanaka can kill me, they specialize in entering people's minds, they aren't a fighting clan. Ino is in this situation because she tried entering my mind and made a horrible mistake doing so, if another Yamanaka tries to do the same they will suffer the same fate. The Kashi could only glare at Naruto, and eventually Naruto cracked. Fine I'll try one more time to convince him, take me to where Ino is. The Kashi led Naruto upstairs where they had Ino, once Naruto was inside the room he could see everyone inside. Ino was laid down in the bed, Team Ten was on her left side, Inoichi was on her right side, and the Hokage was next to Inoichi with a serious face. Naruto could feel the tension rise when he walked in, Inoichi looked at him with a face of pure rage. You. Inoichi said, pointing at Naruto. You better fix this or I will kill you. Yelled the Yamanaka clan head. I'd like to see you and your pathetic clan try to smirk at Naruto. Inoichi took a step toward Naruto, but was stopped by the Hokage. Naruto-kun, this is a very serious situation. 
Have you had any luck convincing your tenant to return the Yamanaka heiress? Asked the Hokage in a serious tone. I think I can, but I will need him. Naruto pointed at Inoichi to come inside my mind to retrieve her, since she might be broken from being inside my tenant. Inoichi scowled but nodded nonetheless. Also tread carefully when you inside my mind, if you try something I have no problem letting him eat you as well warned Naruto. Naruto got in a meditative position, while Inoichi walked up to Naruto and put his hand on his forehead. Mindscape. Inoichi found himself in a burnt-out forest, he continued walking until he saw the exact creature he fought against 12 years ago, the Kaiubi no Kitsune. What's this? Another snack, I hope you're tastier than that little girl from earlier, said Karama as he licked his lips. Inoichi scowled and was about to retort when he noticed Naruto on top of his head. Afraid not, this guy is here to pick up the girl, so be a good fox and spit her out, said Naruto. What if I don't want to, maybe I already digested her. Have you ever thought of that? Said Karama with a grin. You damn fox give me back my daughter. Yelled Inoichi. Bad move Inoichi sent said to Naruto. You think a mortal can command me, the Kaiubi no Kitsune, I should eat you here and have you join your daughter. Yelled Karama. Don't eat him, I already get enough problems from the civilian council I don't need more. Just spit out the girl Karama said to Naruto in a bored tone. DSK, fine you can have her she wasn't very filling anyway. Karama then spit out Ino who Inoichi caught and left Naruto's mind. Well, time to watch the fireworks, said Naruto with a smirk before he left his mindscape. Outside mindscape. Inoichi woke up and ran toward Ino's body, where he put her mind back into her own body, everyone was silent, Inoichi worked frantically to get into to wake up. H-H-H-H. Screamed Ino as she woke up. Princess are you alright? Asked Inoichi. Be daddy? Asked Ino. It's me, princess, said Inoichi trying to comfort Ino. Daddy? Yelled Ino as she dove into her father and cried. I was H horrible, and Naruto H he's a M monster. Said Ino. Tell me something I don't know, said Naruto. Ino noticed Naruto was in the room and screamed. A-H-H-H-H, get away from me you monster. Naruto only laughed as Kakashi took him out of the room, and Ino continued to cry. Once outside Kakashi slammed Naruto into a wall slam. Ow what the hell was that for? What the hell is your problem? You just laughed as Ino had a mental breakdown caused by you. Yelled Kakashi. Naruto just chuckled it's not my problem, besides I didn't cause it, she brought this on herself when she entered my mind. You've changed Naruto, you aren't a caring and enthusiastic kid you were six years ago said Kakashi. Naruto smirked. That's right, Naruto died six years ago. And new Naruto was born that same day the old died, and new Naruto that embraced his role as the demon the villagers forced him to be. And Naruto with the power to protect himself and the few people he cares about from the idiot villagers and the council. I guess I should blame myself, I should have fought harder to adopt you and give you a family, so you wouldn't turn out this way, said Kakashi with a sigh. Oh don't worry about it, I know that you were my father's prized student, and I knew you were denied by the council to adopt me. That only fueled my hatred for the villagers and the council, so if there is anyone to blame it's the council. Naruto started walking away from Kakashi to his team. Kakashi only shook his head and entered Ino's room again. How is she? Asked Kakashi. Inoichi responded whatever she experienced really messed up her mind, I already sedated her. She'll have to be taken off active duty until I can evaluate just how damaged her mind is. Kakashi sighed. I'm sorry that my student did this Inoichi-sama, I will try to get him off this road of darkness he is traveling. Inoichi only nodded and picked up Ino. I'm going to take her to the hospital, she won't be able to participate in the preliminaries. Inoichi disappeared in a puff of smoke, leaving only the Hokage, Team 10, and Kakashi. Okage-sama, what will you do with Naruto? Asked Kakashi. There is nothing I can do, Ino Yamanaka made the mistake of using her and entering Naruto's mind. I'd like to think that Naruto couldn't do anything to dissuade his tenant from eating her, said the aging leader. That's bull. Naruto probably had Kaiubi eat Ino while she was in his mind. Yelled Shikamaru. Everyone gasped. How did you figure out Shikamaru? Asked Asuma. Shikamaru elaborated when he told me he was a Jinch Kriki, I figured that the only Biju that attacked Kanoha was the Kaiubi 12 years ago. Naruto was born 12 years ago, and he said he was also the son of the Yandane, it was pretty easy to figure out. Tsuritobi gave Shikamaru a serious face. Shikamaru kun you and Shinjai kun cannot tell anyone what you know about Naruto, it is an S rank secret and warrants execution if broken. Shikamaru and Shinjai gave shocked faces. But why do people need to know what Naruto is? Yelled Shikamaru. Kakashi decided to explain to Shikamaru it isn't Naruto's fault he is this way, Naruto has been alone his whole life and has been hated by the entire village. He would have to endure the glares of hate and the occasional beatings of the villagers when he was younger, he was always a fun-loving and sweet kid. 
that changed when he was six years old and was almost killed by a couple of villagers. That day it seems the Kaiubi made a deal with Naruto and started training him. Ever since that day Naruto has killed anyone that has tried to hurt him and has become distant and cold. He turned his attention to the Sandane. When he was a baby I would always put in requests for his adoption, but the council and the Hokage would always deny my requests. Once I had Naruto on my team it was too late to save him, and this is how he turned out, a cold, uncaring person who finds fun in bloodshed and people's misery. Saratobi had the decency to look ashamed, it was his fault Naruto turned out like this. Wow, I didn't know he had it that bad said Shikamaru with a sad tone. Anyway now that this situation is over and done with, let's get some rest since the preliminaries are in two days, added Asuma. Everyone nodded and left for their rooms. Two days later. During the two days stuck in the tower, Naruto was slowly losing his mind and he wanted to kill someone. He sometimes wished he had left those Odo Genin alive so he could have killed them during the preliminaries, oh well no use dwelling on the past. All of a sudden he entered his room to give him a message. Genin Yuzumaki, you are to report to the arena for the preliminaries. It's about damn time, said Naruto as he grabbed his equipment and headed to the arena. Once he reached the arena he saw all the contestants were standing in the middle of the room, the Hokage was up on the rafters and they were next to him. Once everyone was situated the Hokage began giving a speech about the reason they had Chunin exams and how it was to foster good relations between villages, Naruto turned out the old fool and turned his attention to Gara. The past two days he had tried to talk to him, but all he would do was threaten to kill him and walk away. It was annoying, he hoped he would have Gara and knock him down a peg. He turned his attention back to a sickly pale man with a sword preparing to talk. My name is Jack Mahade, the proctor for the preliminary round, we will be having a tournament-style round with nine winners for the final round. If you think you are about to lose a round, forfeit. Killing is permitted, but I will step in if the match is won, you are to stop when I say so. The first two names please stay down here, the rest head upstairs and wait for your names to be called. The screen began to randomly pick names, and Hayate read the results, the contestants for the first round were. Chapter 9. Preliminaries and New Allies. The screen began to randomly pick names, and Hayate read the results. The contestants for Cough the first round were Kankuro of the Sand vs. Inuzuka Kiba. All other Cough contestants please get Cough off the arena floor. Alright, I get a free pass to the finals. Cheered Kiba. Hey Mutt, you still have to go through me. Yelled Kankuro in anger because Kiba was underestimating him. Kiba only smirked, you don't look like much. Kankuro scowled, I'm going to make you regret that. Kiba lowered Akamaru from his head, while Kankuro unstrapped the bandaged item from his back. Are the two of, cough, you ready? Asked Hayate. Both nodded then Hajim. Let's go Akamaru. Yelled Kiba. Kiba crouched on all fours, and Akamaru jumped on his back, beast human transformation. A puff of smoke enveloped Akamaru, and when it cleared it showed that Akamaru had the same appearance as Kiba. Both feral-looking shinobi ran toward Kankuro who hadn't made a single move. Kankuro jumped back and revealed Crow, his battle puppet, using chakra strings to control the puppet. The puppet moved while making a sound similar to that of teeth chattering. Akamaru engaged the puppet while Kiba ran past and attacked Kankuro head-on. The humanized Akamaru was fighting the puppet, keeping it from returning to Kankuro and stopping Kiba. Unfortunately, Kankuro saw an opening and shot needles at Akamaru injuring them. Kankuro called the puppet back, Kiba dodged one of the puppet's lunges. Akamaru. Yelled Kiba. He could hear Akamaru's pained whimpers as he tried to get over the pain, I'll make you pay for that. Kankuro smirked, I'd give up if I were you said Kankuro, as he used Crow to grab Akamaru and place a blade to his throat. Kiba looked conflicted, on one hand he didn't want to forfeit the match, on the other he didn't want Akamaru to get hurt. Kiba could only think of one thing to do, he positioned himself on all fours and quickly executed his attack. Itsuga. Yelled Kiba as he began his drill-like attack, he was too fast and destroyed Crow and freed Akamaru. Ankuro jumped back to avoid Kiba's Yitsuga, he scowled at the way his puppet was destroyed by Kiba. He attached chakra stings using both hands and quickly began reattaching the puppet, once he had reassembled the puppet he sent him forward. No more playing around brat. Yelled Kankuro in anger. Kankuro attacked Akamaru first and fired needles from Crow's mouth, Akamaru was not ready for all the needles and was hit with a majority. Akamaru fell to the ground with needles piercing his entire body, Kiba called out to Akamaru and turned his eyes back to Kankuro in anger. You bastard, you'll pay for that. Yelled Kiba. Kankuro smirked, I'm waiting brat. Kiba formed another Gitsuga and rushed Kankuro, Kankuro, and Crow jumped back. Kankuro made Crow launch poison bombs at Kiba, the poison pellets exploded and enveloped Kiba in a poisonous mist. Kiba stumbled out of the mist shakily and collapsed, Hayate saw that Kiba was unable to continue. 
winner of the first cough round, Kankuro of the Sand. Medics came out and took the injured Akamaru and the poisoned Kiba to the infirmary, everyone turned their attention to the announcement board for the next pairing. The second match will be, cough, between Rock Lee and Yuzumaki Naruto. Announced Hade. Yash let us go and have a most youthful match. Yelled Lee in excitement. Yash Lee go down there and make sure your flames of youth burn brightly. Yelled Guy. I sensei. Lee. I sensei. Lee. Shut up and get down here freak. Yelled Naruto as he impatiently waited for Lee. Lee and Guy snapped out of their hugging session, Lee jumped down and joined Naruto. Yash let us have a very youthful match. Yelled Lee. Ami shut up already, if I hear you yell about youth again I'll castrate you said Naruto in a serious and annoyed voice. Lee subconsciously covered his manhood and nodded, Lee got in his Gokin stance, while Naruto got in his Fox stance. Are both contestants, cough, ready? Both nodded then Hajim. Naruto vs Lee. Lee blurred out of sight and sent a kick toward Naruto's face, Naruto blocked it and countered with a punch to the rib. Lee blurred from sight again before the attack could touch him, Lee sent a roundhouse kick toward his head, and Naruto ducked under the kick and grabbed Lee's leg, throwing him into a wall. Lee landed on the wall and used the wall as a springboard, he rocketed toward Naruto with his fist aimed at Naruto's gut. Naruto was too slow to dodge, and the punch connected sending him into the wall creating a crater, Lee didn't let Naruto rest, and sent a roundhouse kick toward his midsection. Naruto was sent flying to the middle of the arena, he laid face down on the floor, and Hayate was about to call the match when he heard a laugh that made him shiver. Ahaha, not badly at least I know I don't have to hold back anymore, said Naruto as he deactivated his gravity seals and his weight seals. Naruto's body glowed before he disappeared in a blur and reappeared behind Lee, he punched Lee in the back of the head and sent him flying forward. He appeared in front of Lee and sent a roundhouse kick toward his face, Lee was still going through the air and couldn't dodge or block. The kick sent him into a statue at one end of the stadium, Lee got out of the statue a little wobbly but otherwise fine. Lee, take them off. Yelled Guy. Lee was shocked, but Guy sensei, you said only to do that when protecting a precious person. I gave him a nice guy pose, I know what I said, but I will allow it this one time. Lee's eyes burned with determination, hi Guy sensei. Lee climbed to the top of the statue, he reached into his orange legwarmers and pulled out two old-fashioned weights. So what, just some weights, what's the worst that could happen? Thought Naruto with a smirk. The smirk turned into a frown when Lee dropped the weights and they fell to the ground, creating two large craters, okay this probably won't end well. Lee once again disappeared in a blur, Naruto was sent flying back by a kick to his jaw that he never sensed. He was assaulted by a fury of punches and kicks, all coming in the blink of an eye before being kicked in the air, he snapped out of his daze when he saw that there were bandages about to wrap around him. He panicked and quickly threw a Horatian kunai at the ground away from him, the bandages wrapped around him tight, and he plunged toward the ground at breakneck speeds. There was a huge cloud of smoke that revealed a large crater and a painting of Lee on the outside, everyone turned to the sound of clapping. Naruto had been forced to use the Horatian to teleport to safety, he turned to see the damage Lee's attack caused and couldn't help but be impressed. He clapped and saw all the disbelieving looks on everyone's face, Naruto smirked at Lee. H how did you escape my attack? Asked Lee. It was quite simple, I only teleported Naruto. He teleported. But I didn't see you use a shunshin stated Lee in disbelief. Who says I used a shunshin? Asked Naruto with a smirk. Naruto decided it was time to end things and disappeared in a blur, he reappeared in front of Lee and slammed her a Rasengan into his gut. Not powerful enough to kill, but enough to knock him out. Lee was sent spinning into the wall and crashed creating a cloud of smoke from the debris. Call the match, he won't be getting up, said Naruto to Hade, who was still recovering from the shock of Naruto using the Rasengan. Everyone's attention turned back to Lee when a sudden burst of energy came from the smoke cloud Lee was in. Heyman Kai, Kikman Kai, Seiman Kai, Shman Kai. Yelled Lee as he opened four of the legendary eight gates. Spectators. The gates are you crazy guy, do you want to ruin your student's career? Yelled Kakashi. I taught him the gate so he could prove that he could become a splendid ninja even without chakra, besides I'm not the only one who taught their student a dangerous technique, replied Guy. That's the thing, I didn't teach Naruto the Rasengan, but where could he have learned it? Asked Kakashi to himself. What was that Kakashi? Asked Sasuke. That was the Rasengan, it was invented by the Yandame Hokage and was only known by three people, the Yandame Hokage, Jiraiya of the Sanin, and me. Except now it looks like Naruto has mastered it too. That was pretty powerful, if I had it I could finally kill him. Thought the emo avenger. Kakashi taught me jutsu. Demanded Sasuke. No, Kakashi stated plainly. Sasuke scowled, why not? Because it's not mine to teach, if it's going to be taught to anyone Jiraiya-sama has to give the okay, replied Kakashi. 
Sasuke's scowl deepened, fine I'll just have to tell that Sanin to teach me. Kakashi shook his head at Sasuke, still who could have taught him that Kakashi asked himself. All the adults and veteran shinobi were asking themselves the same thing. You are very strong Naruto, no one would have believed what you are hiding. The question is what else are you hiding? I will have to have Jiraiya keep an eye on you when he arrives thought Sirotobi. Naruto vs Lee. Lee was standing across from Naruto, his body was radiating chakra, his skin was red, and his eyes were white. Naruto cursed himself and reached into his kunai pouch and withdrew ten Horatian kunai, he threw the kunai and had them surround Lee. Lee disappeared in a burst of speed and Naruto in a yellow flash, Naruto punched Lee back into the circle of kunai. Every time Lee tried to leave the perimeter of the Horatian kunai, Naruto would punch or kick him back in. Not bad Lee, turns out you were stronger than the Ichiha. It's time to end this now, said Naruto then disappeared in a yellow flash. Naruto kicked Lee into the air and threw a Horatian kunai up with him, he disappeared and reappeared in the air with Lee and a Rasengan in his hand. He slammed the Rasengan into Lee's back and sent him crashing violently into the ground, Lee lay in a crater covered in cuts, gashes, bruises, and the Rasengan burns. Seeing that Lee wouldn't stand back up, Heid appeared behind Naruto, Winner Yuzumaki Naruto. Everyone was silent, there wasn't a single sound as Naruto picked up his Horatian kunai and returned to his spot in the ledge, and the medics picked up and took Lee. How is it possible he knows Horatian? Thought Kakashi. Sirotobi narrowed his eyes at Naruto, what else are you hiding Naruto? The Rasengan I can understand you mastering in a few months, but the Horatian should have taken you years to master. I don't know what else you are hiding, but I will not rest until I find out. Arachimaru Sama will want to know about Naruto Kun's strength, from what I could tell he was still holding back thought Kabuto. Sasuke continued to scowl at Naruto, how is it possible that the dobe is so powerful, I'm an Ichiha I deserve that power, I needed to kill him. How the hell does he know both of Yandame Sama's prizes thought the senior shinobi. When the hell did Naruto get so strong? Thought the rookie nine. Everyone was snapped out of their thoughts when Heid announced the next match, the third round will, cough, be between Tsurugi Misumi and Hayuga Hinata. Tsurugi Misumi vs Hayuga Hinata. Will the contestants please come down? Misumi and Hinata stood in front of each other and prepared for their fight. Are both, cough, contestants ready? Asked Heid. Misumi nodded, H. High stuttered Hinata. And Hajim. Yelled Heid. Misumi ran forward and sent a punch toward Hinata. Hinata barely dodged the attack and sent her own half-hearted attack forward. Hinata turned to her sensei and teammates as they shouted words of encouragement. Come on, you can do it Hinata. Yelled Kurenai while Shino gave an uncharacteristic thumbs up. Giba, who had just returned from the infirmary, also yelled, show them how strong you are, Hinata. With newfound confidence Hinata activated her by Akigen and fought with newfound strength. She sent Juken strikes to Misumi, shutting them down one by one. She sent one final Juken strike toward his stomach and was sent into the wall where he fell unconscious. Heid announced the winner, winner of Cough, the third round Hayuga Hinata. Yeah that was awesome Hinata. Yelled Kiba. Kurenai praised her student, good job Hinata, I'm proud of you. Shino gave her a nod, Hinata smiled at the way she was praised by her sensei and teammates. She looked down toward Naruto and frowned at how he paid no attention to her, she really wanted him to see she was strong. She could still remember the day she first met him. Flashback. Hinata was waiting for her personal guard Hayuga Ko to arrive and take her back home from the academy, as she waited she was surrounded by boys a year older than her. Hey, you're the Hayuga princess. What do you think you're doing here? Asked the leader of the group. The OHH stuttered Hinata as she tried to explain herself. Looks like she thinks she's too good to talk to people like us, we should teach her a lesson, yelled another boy. They all approached Hinata, but were stopped when a kunai landed between her and the group. Well, 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 what do we have here? A couple of civilian kids who like to pick on kids younger than them. Who the hell is out there? Yelled the leader. TSK, 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 didn't your mommy ever tell you not to swear? Naruto stepped out of the shadows of a tree, his cold blue eyes made the group subconsciously step back. The leader stepped forward with bravery and looked at Naruto smugly. Don't worry it's just that weird kid with no friends, get lost before we kick your ass. Yelled the leader. Naruto just smirked at his foolishness. Tell me what your name is. My name is Takagaki Sawao. Naruto let out a laugh, what a funny freak. Yelled Sawao. Oh nothing, I just like to know the name of whoever I kill, just so I know who to send their body to, stated Naruto with a dark chuckle. Everyone took another step back away from the blonde WYW would you want T to kill you us? Stuttered out Sawao. Because your parents are the ones that make my life a living hell, killing you would be sweet revenge against you civilians and the civilian council, said Naruto with another laugh. While Naruto scared the civilian kids, Hinata stood in the background with wide eyes. 
not because of fear of Naruto, but in awe of how Naruto was standing up to the older kids. He's so brave, I wish I was as brave as him thought Hinata. Anyway enough talk, let's get this over with said Naruto as he took out a kunai. The entire group scattered and ran away in fear, Naruto didn't pursue them, only laughing at them. Ahaha, I knew those bastards would run away. Naruto looked over at Hinata and frowned, T thank you F4S saving me stuttered Hinata. Naruto's face remained emotionless, I didn't save you, and I was just messing with those civilian bastards. Naruto just turned his back on her. You should probably go back to your home Hyuga. Her name is Hinata-sama to you, an insolent child stated a new voice. Naruto and Hinata turned to see the new arrival was none other than Hyuga Ko, he had a scowl as he stepped in front of Hinata. Hinata-sama are you alright? asked Ko. Why yes, I am alright, replied Hinata. If it isn't a branch member Hyuga, tell me what is it like being the loyal dogs of the main branch? asked Naruto with a smug smile. Hold your tongue when speaking to me, demon. yelled Ko. Better to be a free demon than a slave to arrogant assholes with a superiority complex, said Naruto. Come Hinata-sama let us leave this trash said Ko, as he grabbed Hinata's hand and turned his back to Naruto. That's right go on Hyuga, back to your masters where you can continue to suck them clean until you die, said Naruto with a smug smile. Ko turned red in anger, he let go of Hinata and ran at Naruto. Naruto only smirked as Ko sent a Juken strike to his heart, Naruto dodged a strike and kicked Ko in the face, sending him into a tree. Naruto unsealed his sword and pitted it to Ko's throat, he pressed the katana to his throat until it drew blood. Now, attacking me was a very bad idea. I could kill you right now and there wouldn't be a damn thing anyone could do said Naruto smugly. All of a sudden four Anbu jumped out and surrounded Naruto. Enough Naruto let him go, said the Inumask Anbu. Naruto frowned, don't tell me what to do Inu, he attacked me, and I'm legally allowed to kill him. We will make sure he pays for what he did, just let him go, said Inu. TSK, fine, but if he attacks me again I won't hesitate to kill him, said Naruto in annoyance as he walked home. Inu signed under his mask, cat and monkey, you take Ko to Ibiki. Chameleon you take Hinata-sama back to the Hyuga compound, I'll follow Naruto all the Anbu nodded at their orders and left. Hinata couldn't help but be in awe of Naruto's power, how was he able to defeat Ko, he must be really strong. I hope that one day I can be as strong as him. Then flashback. Hinata was knocked out of her thoughts when Hei called the next match. The contestants of the fourth match, Cough, will be between Akad Yoroi and Aburam Shino. Will the contestants please, Cough, come down? yelled Haid. Both Shino and Yoroi stood across from each other and prepared to fight. Are Cough, you ready? asked Haid. Both Shinobi nodded their heads. Then Hajim, yelled Haid. Akad Yoroi versus Aburam Shino. Yoroi ran toward Shino with his hand blowing blue, while Shino let his bugs out from his coat. All I need is to touch you, and I will win this match by taking all your chakra said Yoroi. You will not win this match, my bugs will be able to suck out your chakra before you can lay a hand on me, said Shino in his monotone voice. Shino sent his bugs out to surround Yoroi and suck out his chakra, Yoroi escaped the trap and ran toward Shino. Yoroi was able to grab Shino before he could call back his bugs to defend him, Yoroi grabbed Shino's head and started to suck out his chakra. He was not expecting Shino to turn into a swarm of bugs as soon as he touched him. Bug clone. Thought Yoroi as he was covered in Shino's beetles and fell unconscious after the beetles had taken all his chakra. Winner, cough, Aburam Shino. Announced Haid. Shino proceeded back to his spot next to his team after he collected his beetles, Yoroi was taken by the medics to be treated for chakra exhaustion. Haid looked at the screen and announced the next match, the fifth round will be between Tenton of the Leaf versus Nara Shikamaru. Tenton jumped down to the arena while Shikamaru went down the stairs muttering troublesome. Are both contestants ready? Asked Haid. Both nodded then Hajim. Nara Shikamaru vs Tenten. Tenten took out sealing scrolls and opened them, she fired off her kunai and shuriken located inside the scrolls at Shikamaru. Shikamaru dodged them but was cut by some of the weapons, he activated his shadow possession. Shikamaru's shadow extended toward Tenten, Tenten jumped back to avoid the shadow. Once the shadow reached its limit, she opened more sealing scrolls and fired off their weapons, causing Shikamaru to barely dodge the deadly projectiles, Tenten didn't let him rest as she continued to fire her scrolls of weapons. Troublesome, she's not giving me any openings. I need to win this match against her so I can make Naruto pay for what he did to Ino thought Shikamaru. Shikamaru continued to watch Tenten fire off her scrolls, he realized the one flaw in her strategy and decided to exploit it. As he continued to dodge the projectiles Tenten took out two more scrolls, Shikamaru used her five-second distraction to capture her in his shadow. How did you get me? Asked Tenten as she struggled against the 
it was easy, every time you get new scrolls you are distracted for 5 seconds, and I used that distraction to capture you before you realized what happened, explained Shikamaru. Then how are you going to beat me, everything you do I have to repeat the movement said Tenten. I'm first going to ask you to surrender stated Shikamaru. Tenten snorted, I'm not going to give up that easily. I was afraid of that, in that case you will probably wake up with a really bad headache replied Shikamaru. What are you? Tenten didn't finish her sentence as Shikamaru threw his head back hard into the air, Tenten was right behind a wall, and she slammed her head into a wall. She fell unconscious, and the medics took her to treatment for a concussion. Winner, cough, Nara Shikamaru. Announced Hayate. Shikamaru walked back up and was congratulated by his sensei and best friend. The sixth match will be between Yakushi Kabuto and Sabaku no Gara. Amarachimaru Sama told me to stay in the exams to assess Sasuke Kun's strength, but he hasn't been called yet, and the Ichibi container is vital for the invasion plan. I can either defeat the Ichibi and watch Sasuke Kun's match or forfeit the match to let the Ichibi container continue on to the finals, thought Kabuto. After mental debate, Kabuto made a decision I will have to defeat the Ichibi container so I can watch Sasuke Kun's match. I think Rachimaru Sama is more interested in Sasuke Kun, and there are more than enough ways to sneak the Ichibi Jinch Kriki into Konoha. Gara did a sand shunshun and reappeared on the arena floor, Kabuto jumped over the rail and stood across from Gara. Are both contestants ready? Asked Hayate. Both nodded then Hajim. No one noticed Naruto's Manjikum Sharingan deactivating after using Kodamatsukami on Kabuto. Ikushi Kabuto vs Abaku no Gara. Kabuto jumped back and activated his chakra scalpels, Gara's sand began to leak out of his gourd and on the floor. Mother will have your blood. Yelled Gara with a bloodthirsty smile. Gara sent his sand forward and tried to surround Kabuto, the sand wrapped around him, but Kabuto escaped using his chakra scalpels. Kabuto ran forward and tried to incapacitate Gara to win the match, but Gara's sand shot up to protect him and caused Kabuto to jump back. Gara shot forward and tried to wrap around Kabuto, Kabuto tried his best to avoid being caught in the sand, but he had to admit the Ichibi container was harder than he thought. Soon a shuriken said Gara calmly as his sand rose and fired shuriken made of sand at Kabuto. Kabuto dodged the sand by jumping in the air, which was his first mistake. Gara's sand rose up to catch Kabuto and wrap around him, Kabuto couldn't avoid the sand. Sand coffin. Yelled Gara as he tightened the sand around Kabuto. Kabuto was able to activate his chakra scalpels and escape the sand, he sent chakra to his legs and ran toward Gara. Before the sand could react Kabuto touched Gara's chest with his chakra scalpel, Kabuto jumped back as Gara coughed up blood. Gara looked at his blood and his eyes widened in horror, he snapped his eyes to Kabuto with anger. Gara used his sand to wrap around Kabuto, unfortunately Kabuto was unable to move his whole body from danger. Gara's sand wrapped around both of Kabuto's legs, sand burial. The sand around Kabuto's legs imploded and crushed Kabuto's legs, Kabuto screamed in pain and agony as he lay on the ground with both his legs broken. Now mother will have your blood. Screamed Gara as his sand shot toward Kabuto. The sand wrapped around Kabuto, Proctor sent I forfeit. Yelled Kabuto since he knew he couldn't win. Winner by forfeit Sabaku no Gara. Announced Haid. Gara didn't pay attention to the Proctor as his sand continued to crawl up Kabuto's body, Kabuto was beginning to fear for his life and starting to regret not quitting the match in the beginning. I said the match was over. Yelled Haid. Don't get in my way, mother will have his blood. Yelled Gara with a maniacal grin. Sand Bury. Gara could finish off Kabuto since a katana sliced through his sand and was positioned at his throat. I said the match was over, now get out of here said Haid without his usual cough. Gara only scowled and called his sand back to his gourd, he made his way back up to his siblings, as medics took Kabuto to try and save his legs. All the gen and except Naruto stood in shock at the brutality and disregard for human life Gara had for Kabuto. Anyway, the contestants for the seventh match will be Tamari of the Sand vs Haruno Sakura. Announced Hayate as he read off the computer screen. Oh come on why do I get the fangirl? Yelled Tamari in frustration. Tamari jumped over the rail and waited for Sakura to come down the stairs. One Sakura stood in front of Tamari Haid started the match. Are both contestants ready? Tamari gave an annoyed nod, while Sakura gave a nervous nod. And Hajim. Yelled Haid. Tamari of the Sand vs Haruno Sakura. Why don't you just forfeit already, it's clear you're just another useless fangirl. Let me guess you're doing this for the Achiha, if you really want to get his attention you should train yourself, instead of trying to look pretty mock Tamari. Shut up, you don't know anything about me. Yelled Sakura. Tamari opened her fan to reveal one moon, whatever. Let's just get this over with. Sakura ran forward and made three clones, three regular clones not water, earth, or shadow just regular clones. Tamari could only sigh in frustration and swing her fan, dispelling the clones and pushing Sakura back. 
Tamari then opened her fan revealing two moons, she swung the fan at Sakura who was pushed violently into the wall. Tamari turned to Sakura with a bored expression, just give up, I don't want to waste any more chakra on you. Sakura slowly stood up, I can't watch Sasuke-kun, and I won't let him see me defeated. Tamari could only sigh in frustration again as she revealed the final moon of her fan, fine, but you asked for this. Sakura ran forward and threw some kunai at Tamari, Tamari sidestepped the kunai and called out her attack wind side jutsu. A gust of air rushed forward and slammed into Sakura, the air current formed a tornado of sharp wind blades. Sakura was carried into the air and sliced up by the wind currents of the tornado before the attack faded and Sakura plummeted to the ground. Sakura landed in a loud thud unconscious with several tiny cuts riddling her body. Winner. Tamari of the Sand. Announced Hayate as medics took Sakura to be treated. The contestants for the eighth match will be between Yamanaka Ino and Ichiha Sasuke, since Yamanaka Ino is unable to participate. Team 10 glares at Naruto who just shrugs it off. Ichiha Sasuke will have a pass to the finals. Over in the infirmary a certain silver-haired medic let out a frustrated scream, oh come on. Anyway the ninth and final match will be Hai Uga Niji vs Akamichi Chimjai. Announced Hade. Niji turned to Chimjai, you should give up, fate has deemed me the winner of this match. Chimjai looked unsure of himself until Asuma put a hand on his shoulder. Don't listen to him Chimjai just do your best, if you promise to do your best I'll take you out for a barbecue later. Doji's mouth, Asuma sweat dropped, yeah just do your best. Chimjai gave a loud cheer and made his way down to the waiting Niji, Hade asked if they were ready where they both nodded. And Hajim. Announced Hade. Akamichi Chimjai vs. Hayuga Niji. Niji activated his Byakugan and got in his Jukin stance, Chimjai nervously got his hands into a hand sign to activate his families. Niji looked at Chimjai with an arrogant smirk. I will give you one more chance to give up. Fata smiled on me to win this match and advanced to the finals. Sorry, but Asuma Sensei said that if I tried my best he would buy me a barbeck and I would get the barbeck, Chimjai said in a serious tone, with all nervousness gone. Needless to say everyone sweat dropped when Choji's mood swung from nervous to deadly serious when it came to Barbeck. Niji ran forward and sent a Juken strike toward his chest, Chimjai activated his partial multi-size jutsu to expand his arms and block the strike with his left hand. Since Chimjai used his partial multi-size jutsu, Niji couldn't block those that were protected under fat in Choji's arm. Chimjai used his right hand to punch Niji, who in turn ducked under the punch. Niji sent another Juken strike toward Choji's leg and caused Chimjai to lose the use of his leg before Niji could move on to his other leg, Chimjai jumped back and put some distance between them. Chimjai knew there was only one way to defeat Niji in close combat, he activated his human bullet tank and charged at Niji. All Niji could see was Chimjai expand so much that he was as round as a ball, once Chimjai had pulled in his out appendages, Niji could see that his Juken would be ineffective against Chimjai in his current state. Niji jumped back to put some distance between him and Chimjai, when the human sphere started spinning at high speed and closing the distance between the two, Niji began to think of some way to defeat Chimjai. Niji reached into his pouch and pulled out five kunai with explosive tags on them. He threw them in front of Chimjai, the tags exploded right under him sending Chimjai into the wall, causing a large crater. When the debris cloud cleared Chimjai stepped out in his original size panting but otherwise unharmed, Niji ran forward at breakneck speeds and delivered a Juken strike to his stomach that sent him into unconsciousness. Winner Hayuga Niji. Announced Hayate. I warned you that fate would see me as the winner, said Niji with an arrogant smirk. That concludes the preliminary matches, the finals will take place one month from now to let the contestants rest and train to gain an advantage in the finals, explained Hayate. After everything was said and done, Hei took hold of a box with slips of paper. He told the contestants to take one and read out the number. Pankura 1. Naruto 2. Niji 3. Shino, 4. Shikamaru 5. Tamari, 6. Ara 7. Sasuke 8. Hinata 9. Okay the matches for the finals go as follows. Pankuro of the Sand vs Uzumaki Naruto. Taiwuga Niji vs Aburam Shino. Nara Shikamaru vs Tamari of the Sand. Tsubaku no Gara vs. Ichiha Sasuke. Hayuga Hinata gets a pass. Remember not to be late to the finals or else you will be disqualified, you are all dismissed. Everyone left the stadium and Team 7 left for training ground 7 to discuss the training for the following month. The Hokage watch Naruto with narrowed eyes, whatever else you are hiding Naruto, I will make sure Jiraiya finds it. Training ground 7. Team 7 was gathered near the wooden post Sakura had been tied to during the Genin exams, there was an awkward silence filling the air. Well, congratulations Sasuke and Naruto for getting to the finals. Now for the next month I will be training Sasuke to fight the Tsuna Shinobi. 
Naruto since I will be training Sasuke I won't be able to help you, but don't worry I pulled some strings and got you a teacher for the month, said Kakashi with an eye smile. Who did you get? Asked Naruto. I got you Ibisu, he trains only the elite, and it took a lot of favors to get him to train you, replied Kakashi. You mean that weak excuse that trains the even weaker excuse of a shinobi, Sandame's grandson, said Naruto with an annoyed tone. Ibisu isn't that weak, he's a jonin and for some reason replied Kakashi, annoyed that Naruto was insulting one of his fellow jonin. DSK, whatever I don't need that weakling to train me, send him to train Sakura for all I care, said Naruto before leaving in a yellow flash. Hokage Tower. Saratobi Hirazan sat down in his chair with a sigh, he pulled out his pipe and lit it with an ear ink fire. He took a deep drag of the pipe and let the nicotine calm his senses as he waited for his former pupil Jiraiya to arrive. It seems some things never change, Saratobi sensei laughed at Jiraiya. Jiraiya noticed that his sensei was not laughing and had a very serious look on his face. What's going on sensei? Asked Jiraiya. Saratobi let out a sigh, during the second round Orochimaru was spotted inside the forest of death. I don't know what he is doing here, but I don't like it. Another thing is Naruto. What about Naruto? Asked Jiraiya with narrowed eyes. I think that Naruto's loyalties are not with Kanoha said Saratobi. What? What do you mean? Asked Jiraiya hoping his godson was not a traitor. During Naruto's time as a shinobi, he has been hiding his strength. He has been starting to show it little by little, so far he has shown strength that is equal to a jonin, but he has also shown great secrecy and has until today hidden his greatest strength, said Saratobi. What kind of strength has he been hiding? Asked Jiraiya. Jiraiya, Naruto is able to use the in the Horation said the old Hokage. Jiraiya could only stand there with his jaw on the ground, no that's not possible it would take him years to do it. Apparently not since he used it during the preliminaries to defeat Rock Lee replied Saratobi. I want you to keep an eye on Naruto, I want to know if he shows the slightest chance of betrayal, and I want you to stop it, said the Hokage with a serious tone. Wait a minute, you said he was only hiding his strength that doesn't mean he's a traitor. Yelled Jiraiya. No it doesn't, but hurting fellow Kanoha Shinobi, working together with the Kaiubi, and killing villagers for the fun of it, does reply to the Sandame. What are you talking about? Asked Jiraiya. Over the last couple of years since the incident Naruto has been killing any villager that attacks him, instead of giving the villager a quick death, like I would like he torments them for minutes, until he finally kills them in the most brutal and painful way possible. A couple days after he became a genin, he came to me and demanded his inheritance, when I asked how he knew about it, he told me the Kaiubi told him about them, I tried to dissuade him from trusting the fox, but it looks like the fox has Naruto in his grasp. The last reason is that during the preliminaries he had hurt the Yamanaka heiress when she entered his mind, and his beast ate her, Naruto eventually released her, but not before laughing at her mental state afterwards explained the Sandame. Jiraiya frowned, this wouldn't have happened had you been more harsh with the villagers when they attacked Naruto, he might have been the most loyal shinobi in your forces, had you not been a soft-hearted fool to those damn bigots. We can't change the past, we can only look out toward the future. I know I made mistakes and I regret every one of them. The only thing left to do is make sure that no more mistakes are made, and if Naruto becomes a traitor, then he might become the most dangerous traitor to Kanoha since Orochimaru explained to Hiruzen. Fine I'll keep an eye on him, I was going to make him my apprentice later, but I guess I can start now. Saratobi dismissed Jiraiya and summoned the clan heads to the council room to inform them of Orochimaru's appearance. Namaka's clan compound. Naruto reappeared back at his compound after leaving his team. He made his way up to his study for his clones to give him a status report on the research he had them conduct in his absence. As he approached the door he could hear cheering inside the room, he opened it to see the clones throwing Karen in the air and chanting her name. Karen, Karen, Karen. Yelled the clones in unison. Naruto sweat dropped, what the hell is this? It's a miracle boss. Yelled the head clone. What is? Asked Naruto with a deadpan expression. Karen she's been a Kami send, she's helped solve all our experimental seals, and she figured out a method to use the nature variant to safely explain the clone. Naruto raised an eyebrow, really then what did she help solve? She was able to crack the Hyuga's curse seal, create a stronger control seal for the Ito Tensei, and figured out that using Hashirama's Mokuten Sage mode, you would be able to use the Rasen Shuriken and the Rasen Molotov safely and add a whole power to your arsenal, explained the clone. Naruto gave one of his rare smiles. That's great, thanks Karen it looks like you will make a valuable ally. It wasn't a problem, I was bored when I finished reading a couple of scrolls on sealing and decided to give the clones a hand, said Karen with a wave of her hand. Well, now all we need is to test the seal key on and the resurrection to test the Ito Tensei seal on. Have you figured out how to use Hashirama's sage mode? Asked Naruto. 
Well yes and no, we came across some problems, said the clone while scratching the back of his head. Naruto narrowed his eyes. What kind of problems? Well, I think it would be better to show you the clone as he signaled Naruto to follow him. Naruto followed the clone as the others continued their work, and Karen continued reading more ceiling scrolls. The clone led Naruto outside where it started explaining how to use Mokuten Sage mode. From the scroll we took from the Senju clan compound, Hashirama explained that to activate it the user had to become one with the trees. The clone made a shadow clone who sat on the ground and activated the Mokuten Sage mode. This clone is currently connecting to the surrounding trees, Hashirama's Sage mode uses the trees to collect natural energy and bring it into the user's body. A natural chakra is absorbed into the body it has to be kept in balance with your body's physical and spiritual energy or else. Naruto turned to the shadow clone that had turned to wood completely. That happens, and the worst part is that clones can't be used to practice in jutsu, or else when it dispels it will cause the user to receive all the natural energy from the clone and cause him to turn to wood. After the explanation and lesson on Senjutsu, the clone sealed the wood turned shadow clone in a scroll, before destroying the scroll to prevent the clone's natural chakra from going back to the original. I see, this is going to require a lot of thinking to be able to perfect. I'll start thinking about how we will go about this tomorrow, but first we have an unwelcome visitor, said Naruto as he threw Horatian kunai into a tree and disappeared. Jiraiya. After Jiraiya had left his sensei's office, he was walking toward the Namika's estate, where he was told he would find Naruto. He decided he might as well see what the kid was like, he made his way around the estate and climbed a tree. He took out his telescope and saw two Naruto's talking, he thought it odd why Naruto was talking to a clone, instead of dispelling it and receiving its memories. He also saw one of the Naruto's seal up what looked like another Naruto made of wood and destroy the scroll. When he tried to get a closer look he saw Naruto throw a kunai in his direction and disappear in a yellow flash. His years of experience as a shinobi saved him as he dodged, Naruto reappearing near him with a that he slammed into the tree where he had been before jumping. Jiraiya held up his hands in defeat, whoa, calm down, I'm not here to hurt you. Naruto unsealed his katana, then why the hell are you here Jiraiya? Jiraiya was surprised to see that Naruto knew him. How do you know me? Naruto rolled his eyes, how could I not know you, you were my father's sensei, and in his journals he mentioned you were also my godfather. Naruto then narrowed his eyes, so tell me godfather, why the hell are you here? Jiraiya flinched at the venom in Naruto's voice, look I know you're mad at me, and you have every right to be mad. But I couldn't take care of you when you were a baby because I was never a good father figure, and I had to keep track of my spy network for the good of Konoha. Naruto rolled his eyes, I don't give a crap about the good of Konoha, you could have at least visited and made sure I was okay, but instead you left me with that weak and useless old man, who would always let my attackers off with a slap on the wrist and make me live in that shithole of an apartment when I had an estate here from my parents. I also know why you are here Jiraiya, you're here because that useless old man is suspicious of me and has told you to keep an eye on me. Naruto paused and sighed. Even though I could care less what happens to this damn village and its villagers, you should know that Orochimaru is planning an invasion to start during the final portion of the Chunin exams. Now go away and leave me alone because I want nothing to do with you. Jiraiya's jaw dropped, H how do you know? Naruto turned and walked away. I tortured an Odogen and then found out he was a spy for Orochimaru and he told me his plan before I killed him. You should probably get going and tell the old idiot to start upping the village's defenses. Also I don't know anything more and I want to be left alone this month, so tell that useless monkey that your precious spy network figured it out. Once Jiraiya was knocked out of his shock he ran toward his sensei's office to tell him about the invasion, but not about Naruto, since he didn't want the blonde to hate him anymore. Back at the compound. I never expected Jiraiya to come here, I'll have to be extra careful or else he might stop me from leaving this damn village. But I can use the confusion of the invasion to leave and if I'm lucky they might think I'm dead thought Naruto. Naruto smirked, the only reason I told him was because if anyone is going to destroy Konoha, it's going to be me. He walked up to his clone who was still waiting, who was that boss? Naruto scowled, Jiraiya of the Sanin, he will be a big problem during the month. I want you to assign a clone to distract him during the month, this month is crucial for gaining allies inside Konoha before we leave. The clone nodded, you got it boss. Naruto turned and started walking to the gate. Good to see that it gets done, I need to go complete the first phase of the plan. The clone saluted before leaving in a shunshin, Naruto walked toward the gate of the compound, thinking how to convince Gara to join him. Golden Leaf Hotel. Tsubaku no Gara stood on the balcony of his hotel room unable to sleep, the reason he was unable to sleep was very simple. If he went to sleep the demon sealed inside him would take control and rampage until Gara woke up, he could let the demon out at least not yet. 
All his life Gara was feared and hated in Suna, his own father tried to kill him over nine times in his childhood, causing him to be distrustful of everyone around him even his own family. The only person he had now was Yukaku or as he liked to call him mother. He used to think that he was all alone in this world, that no one would ever understand his pain, and he would always be alone. That was until he met Yuzumaki Namaka's Naruto, someone who was like him. The reason he knew Naruto was like him was his eyes, cold eyes that showed hatred and pain from years of abuse and loneliness. The blonde one, mother senses that he is strong. Mother wants his blood, make sure you bring mother his blood. Yelled Shukaku. Ara clutched his head and Shukaku yelled, but why mother, he is like me. I don't want to kill someone who understands my pain. You don't look so good stated a mysterious voice, Gara snapped up and popped the cork from his gourd. Naruto stepped out of the shadows, relax, I'm not here to hurt you, I just want to talk. Gara clutched his head in pain again, there he is. Kill him now is your chance. I want his blood. Naruto could see that he was probably suffering from a mediocre seal holding his biju, he knew that Suna was not renowned for their sealing skills, and even the Achibi would need a seal powerful that Suna couldn't provide. Faster that Gara's sand could react, Naruto ran up and slapped a biju suppression seal onto Gara's forehead, stopping Shukaku's screams and letting Gara enjoy quiet in his mind. W what did you do? I can't hear mother anymore, Gara said. Relax I just put a suppression seal on you so Shukaku can't mess with your mind anymore, the reason I'm here is because I want to ask you a question. Gara looked at him confused, a question. What kind of question? I want to know if you are happy in Suna, do you enjoy being stared at and hated in your home village? Gara recovered from the pain in his head then returned to his emotionless voice. No I don't, but I do enjoy looking at their reactions of horror when I kill their loved ones in their presence. Why do you live in Gara? What is your purpose in life? I live only for myself and fight only for myself, my purpose in life is to prove that living for only yourself is the only way to get strong, stated Gara. They each his own, but I also came here to make you a proposal said Naruto. Gara narrowed his eyes. I want you to join me and be my ally, which would mean betraying Suna, but that shouldn't be a problem, since it's obvious you hate it. Naruto walked closer, my goal is to destroy Konoha and walk the street as the village burns and the villagers scream in terror, if you join me, I will help you destroy the village that scorned and hated you your entire life. What better way to prove you are strong than to destroy the place that made your life a living hell. Beside we Jinch Kriki have to stick together, we are the only ones who understand each other, and if we go around killing each other, we will only be giving those damn villagers the satisfaction of our death, said Naruto trying to convince Gara. just think about it, and if you want to join me come to the Namika's clan compound and see me said Naruto, while handing him the address on a slip of paper. Gara took the paper, very well Yuzumaki, I will think about your offer. Naruto grinned, I'll await your answer, trust me when I say that if you join me you won't regret it. Naruto also handed him some biju suppression seals. These seals should keep Shukaku quiet until you make a decision. If you do decide to join me I can look at your seal so that you have more control over Shukaku instead of the other way around. Gara nodded and with nothing left to say Naruto left in a yellow flash, allowing Gara to think about his interesting offer. With Kabuto. Kabuto was currently in a hospital bed with casts on his legs. The doctors were able to save his legs, but they told him that they would be too weak to do missions and told him his days as a ninja were over. The Budo was currently in bed thinking, I still don't understand, now that I think about it, facing the Achibi Jinch Kriki was a stupid decision and I'm not one to make stupid decisions. It was like something convinced me to fight the Achibi Jinch Kriki. The question is what? The Budo's head snapped up when he heard a familiar voice, I'm disappointed in you Kabuto-kun. Orochimaru-sama, please I can explain exclaimed Kabuto. Orochimaru came out of the shadows with an annoyed expression. Then please explain. When the fight was beginning I was about to forfeit, but then something inexplicable caused me to go down and fight, it was just recently that when thinking about the fight that I noticed something wrong, explained Kabuto. I'm disappointed in you Kabuto. I would have thought someone like you could find a better and more believable excuse than that. Since you are no longer of any use to me I need to get rid of you said Orochimaru as he took out a kunai. The Budo began to panic, wait Orochimaru-sama I can still be of use. Orochimaru paused, and how is that? I can still cast during the finals, and my medic expertise is still second only to yours. I can still be very useful to you, Orochimaru-sama. Exclaimed Kabuto. Orochimaru stood there thinking, very well but if you disappoint me again I will get rid of you. The Budo let out a sigh of relief when Orochimaru disappeared into the floor. Next day. Naruto woke up and went through his daily routine, getting dressed, equipping his weapons, and brushing his teeth before planning his revenge on Konoha. Unfortunately this morning he was feeling particularly drowsy and hadn't noticed the shower was on when he went to brush his teeth. 
He opened the bathroom door only to clutch his nose to keep himself from hitting the wall, propelled by a nosebleed. On the other side of the door was Karen, showering and completely visible behind the see-through shower curtain. Naruto noticed that Karen seemed to wear very bulky clothes that hid the curves she was showing and the high A cup breast still developing. His teenage brain, currently going through puberty, was going through 100 scenarios a second of him and Karen together doing adult things. Naruto was knocked out of his perverted fantasies when Karen noticed he was looking at her showering and covered herself while screaming at the top of her lungs, pervert. Karen proceeded to start throwing anything she could lay her hands on at Naruto, which caused him to take a shampoo bottle to the head, knocking him back out of the bathroom while closing the door to avoid the angry Karen. Naruto rubbed his head, well, that was unexpected. Karama snorted, I'm glad that happened, and at least now I know you aren't gay like the Acha. Naruto gained a tick mark, shut up you baka fox. I am not gay, and I will let you know I like women. Karama chuckled, I hope so because if you don't, then let's just say I would gladly spend the rest of my life with the Shinigami. Anyway, enjoy it because that's the most action you'll get in a long time. Haha. <laughs> ha. Shut up you damn fox. I don't need to listen to you, I'm going to go train. Yelled Naruto mentally at Karama. Naruto went outside and created a blood clone, alright now from now on you are promoted to head clone, and your name will be N2, instead of just head clone, got that. The clone saluted, you got it boss. Now from this point on we will begin Operation Free the Bird, your job is to track down Hyugani N2 asked a question, wouldn't it be a smart idea to test out the key on a random branch member instead of the Hyuga prodigy? Normally I would say yes, but if we have some random Hyuga run around with his seal off he might let it slip that he has it off and there would be an investigation. Niji knows the importance of keeping his mouth shut and would probably be more loyal if I make him the first to take off the caged bird's seal, explained Naruto. N2 nodded in understanding and gave a quick salute before leaving to do his job. Naruto sat in contemplation, he tried to figure out how he could learn his Mokuten Sage mode without turning into a tree. After an hour of brainstorming ideas he finally got one, he created five shadow clones. He then instructed four clones to begin collecting natural energy and the fifth clone to create chakra absorption seals that were modified to only absorb natural energy. The clones followed their orders and Naruto couldn't help but smirk at his ingenuity. While the four clones gathered natural energy, the fifth clone would activate the chakra absorption seals before the clones turned into wood. With the natural energy constantly being siphoned out by the seals, it would allow the clones to meditate and properly balance their spiritual, physical, and natural energies. Naruto estimated that if he had clones do this every day for the following month, he would have mastered his Mokuten Sage Mode by the time of the finals. For the rest of the day Naruto practiced his sage mode with the clones, unless the kitchen clone called Naruto and Karen for lunch, where they would both eat on opposite sides of the table and blush when they looked at each other. After lunch Naruto returned to practicing his sage mode, and Karen returned to reading and practicing the Uzumaki ceiling scrolls in the library. At dinner the awkwardness of what had happened in the morning had passed even though both still blushed a little when they saw each other. As they ate Naruto decided to start up a conversation, so what have you been doing all day? Karen looked up from her food and answered, I've been helping your clones configure the seals you assigned them to do and reading some of the Uzumaki sealing scrolls, so I know the art of sealing like our ancestors. That's nice, are you prepared for when we leave the village? Asked Naruto. Yeah, I'm ready although I have a question. What is the plan for how and after we leave? Asked Karen. Naruto explained his plan, when the final exams come around we will be leaving in the chaos of the Orochimaru's invasion, while Konoha fights the invading Odo, and Suna forces the clones will have packed all of the scrolls and equipment from the estate and left to the wave country hideout. You will leave with the clones while I destroy some of Konoha's key infrastructure and cripple the village so they don't come after us for some time, after that I will pick up the allies I made and take them to the wave hideout. Hopefully in the chaos they will think I died in battle and don't send Hunter Nin after me, but I have a feeling they will. Wow you really thought this through said Karen in astonishment. Naruto shrugged, of course, I don't usually come up with half-assed plans, and I always think things through. After dinner Naruto and Karen went to bed to be ready for the next day. Later that same evening. And that's what happened during the second round of the Chunin exams. Saratobi had just finished explaining the situation to the council after being a few days late with having to deal with the Orochimaru and Naruto situations, it was times like these when he wished Minato had let him sacrifice himself to the Shinigami to stop the Kaiubi. The council room erupted into chaos, with the civilian council members being the most vocal, and the Shinobi clan head silent in thought. After a quick burst of Kai, the civilian side shut their mouths. Anzo decided to ask what everyone was thinking. Do you know why Orochimaru was here in Hiruzen? The aged leader rubbed his temple to stop the oncoming headache. 
We have reason to believe he was after Ichiha Sasuke, since Orochimaru was always very interested in the Sharingan bloodline. Once again the civilian council erupted in chaos, with council members yelling for their precious Ichiha to be protected at all costs. They were silenced quickly by Saratobi again, it was after the council members that Jiraiya jumped in through the window. Jiraiya, what are you doing here? Asked Saratobi. Sensei, I have something important to report said Jiraiya. What is it? Asked Saratobi. I think we should discuss this in your office or at least without the civilian side here, since this is classified military information, explained Jiraiya. The civilian council once again erupted protesting that they had a right to listen, they were once again silenced and escorted by Anbu out the door. Once the civilian council was out Saratobi turned to his student. All right Jiraiya what is it you wanted to tell us? Asked Saratobi. Hinoha is going to be invaded by Orochimaru and his forces, said Jiraiya, as soon as he finished his statement the room was silent. Nara Shikaku spoke up, Jiraiya-sama, do you know when he will attack? My spy network was able to find out that Orochimaru and his new hidden village Odo is going to attack during the Chunin exam finals, explained Jiraiya. Anzo decided to add his two cents, I have heard of Odo, it is a recently constructed village in rice country. Even Orochimaru is not stupid enough to attack the strongest of the hidden villages with a small village like that. Yes Orochimaru may be a traitor, but he is not an idiot he must have allied himself with a rival village called the Sandane. Yes but the question is which one, Suna is an ally, Kiri is in a civil war, but Iwa and Kumo both have plenty of reasons to attack us. We'll have to put the village on high alert and prepare the village for an invasion, this might be the only chance we have of destroying Orochimaru once and for all, and proving why we are the strongest of the Great Five stated Danzo. That may be true, but we leave ourselves vulnerable after the invasion for the other villages to attack in our weakened state, retorted Saratobi. Nara Shikaku decided to speak up, although it is troublesome, I agree with Danzo we should prepare for the invasion. If we cancel the exams we will be seen as weak by the other villages, and if we send our shinobi to attack the invading forces, we leave the village open for attack on the other side. Tsuritobi lit his pipe and took a drag. Very well, we will prepare our shinobi for an invasion and use this month to strengthen our defenses against the invading force. Tsuritobi turned to his student, Jiraiya. I want you to use your spy network to find out who Orochimaru's ally is. I will assign your earlier mission to a team of Anbu. Hi Sensei, I'll go contact my spy network right away Jiraiya then jump out the window. This meeting is adjourned, I will summon all the Jonin tomorrow and inform them of the invasion, Shikaku. I want you to begin planning the counter-attack. Saratobi then dismissed the clan heads and elders. Saratobi then went to his office and sat at his desk, he then slammed his head on the desk. Damn it Minato why couldn't you let me die instead of making me deal with this shit. Sigh I'm getting too old for this shit. Three days later. For the last three days, Naruto had been practicing his sage mode along with his clones, and he was coming along nicely. Karen would train with him every once in a while, but she would mostly stay in the library helping out the clones and studying the Uzumaki ceiling scrolls. He had noticed that he wasn't being spied on by Jiraiya anymore, instead he could detect four high chakra signatures. If he had to guess they would probably be Anbu assigned by the Hokage now that Jiraiya was dealing with the invasion. He would deal with them soon, but for now he would leave them alone, he was interrupted from his thoughts when his seals sensed someone approaching the gate. Naruto stood up and went to see who it was. He wasn't surprised when he was met with Gara's unemotional face. Naruto smiled and opened the gate. Gara, it's good to see you, come let's go inside to talk. Naruto lead Gara inside so the Anbu observing him didn't know what they were talking about. Once inside Naruto sat down on the couch and Gara did the same on the opposite of Naruto, I guess since you are here you have some to make a decision about joining me. Gara nodded and replied in his unemotional voice, yes I have decided that I will join you as an ally, as long as I am the one who destroys Suna. Naruto smirked, of course, I would never take away your revenge. Then I should start explaining my plan for the finals. I already know that Suna plans to invade along with Odo during the finals, when you receive the signal to begin the invasion, I want you to follow your orders and destroy as much of Konoha as possible. During the invasion my clones will be taking my belongings and my other ally, Karen, to a safe house in Wave Country, while I use the chaos of the invasion to cripple Konoha's infrastructure and military power. Once I am done with it I will pick you up and take you to the hideout in Wave Country, explained Naruto. Ara decided to ask a question, how would you get us out of Konoha without being detected? My father's signature, the Horatian, has the ability to teleport anywhere there are Jutsu Shiki, technique formulae. I already have a Horatian kunai in my wave hideout, so all I would need to do is teleport there, and no one would know where we went, explained Naruto. Ara nodded and got up from his seat, very well, I will take my leave now, since my sensei and teammates will begin to wonder where I am. 
Gerudo stopped Gara. wait Gara, since you're already here, it would be smart to fix your seal, since you are already here. Gara nodded and followed Naruto to the ceiling room Naruto had built in the basement, the room was made of his special Mokuten wood, with chakra suppression and absorption seals embedded on the walls. Naruto motioned Gara to stand in the middle of the room and show him the seal on his upper back, Naruto could only shake his head at the horribly crafted seal. This has got to be the worst seal I have ever seen, it has no mental blocking seals, it has weak chakra suppression seals, and worst of all, it has a low level chakra containment seal. This is going to take a lot of work thought Naruto. This seal is a real mess, it will take me a while to draw up the right seals. I'll need you to stay still or else the sealing won't work. Gara nodded and sat still as Naruto began writing the necessary sealing formulas on the floor. He had added several mental blockers so Shikaku could no longer talk in Gara's mind without Gara's permission. He added several chakra suppression seals to suppress Shikaku if he tries to use his chakra to escape the seal, lastly he added two high-level chakra containment seals so that Gara could sleep soundly at night without fearing Shikaku could get out and so Gara could perform his biju transformation at a faster rate. After an hour of writing the necessary seals on the floor, Naruto channeled chakra into the seal on Gara's back, and the surrounding seals all rushed to reform Gara's seal, creating a new, much stronger seal. Naruto looked at the seal, alright all done, this new seal should keep Shikaku at bay and let you sleep at night. You should probably leave now before your team gets suspicious. Gara nodded and thanked Naruto before leaving the estate, Naruto signed and saw it was already noon. He wondered where the Hell's Kitchen clone was and why it hadn't called him for lunch. He walked to the kitchen and saw something that made him fall to his knees and weep and I'm tears. Ichiraku Raymond. That was all Naruto needed to see before he dived toward the bowls of takeout Raymon and ate with gusto. After the 20th bowl Naruto sighed in satisfaction and patted his belly full of Raymond. Naruto then went into the backyard and took out a list and checked off Gara's name. You might wonder why Naruto didn't use his on everyone to make them obedient allies, the problem was that his was not to the level of Ichiha Shisui's, and Naruto's would only last for a couple days before people came to their senses. Naruto looked at the list and sighed, it was going to be a long month. Next day. Naruto was currently walking towards the outskirts of the village to a mountainside manor, where the Kurama heiress was being kept. He activated his chameleon and sneaked past the patrolling Anbu guards and snuck into the manor. He entered a room filled with paintings of different scenarios, one was Konoha on fire, another Ikikurinai pierced through the chest, and the last a painting of some sort of demon with fangs and long horns. Who are you? Asked a voice behind Naruto. Naruto turned to see a girl with long brown hair and light brown eyes. Her hair was straight on one side, but on the other side it was in a braid. She had a clip with two circular designs. For her outfit she wore a pink kimono held closed by a pink sash. Her kimono has two pockets on the front. She also wore violet baggy pants and red mesh armor underneath her kimono and legs with orange sandals. I'll assume you're the Kurama heiress? Asked Naruto. That's right, but who are you? Asked Yakumo with narrowed eyes. My name is Yuzumaki Namikaze Naruto, I'm here because I want to talk to you about an alliance. An alliance? Judging from your Konoha Hyate, you're a Konoha Shinobi, and my clan is a Konoha clan. Why would we need an alliance when we are both from the same village? Asked Yakumo. Naruto chuckled, while well, I wear the Konoha symbol on my head, my loyalties are not to Konoha. I have noticed that your clan is not well liked, and you especially are hated and ostracized by your own clan. Why is that? Naruto was not prepared for what happened next, he was suddenly kicked into the wall by a creature that looked exactly like the last painting he had seen. Naruto picked himself up. It looks like the reports were true, you have some sort of second personality that can control your bloodline. I hoped I wouldn't need to seal it just to talk to you, but I have no other choice. I growled, I will kill you. Naruto sighed, well enough of this. Naruto activated his Sharingan, only for it to not dispel the illusion, well this is unexpected. Naruto was suddenly covered in fire and started burning alive, damn it, I guess I should have come here with a better plan. Naruto activated his Manjekyo Sharingan and was able to dispel the advanced, I never would have guessed I had to use this to dispel a. The illusion of Ido was replaced by Yakumo, I'll assume you already met the reason why I am hated. Yeah it took me activating my Manjekyo Sharingan to dispel the illusion, explained Naruto. Sharingan? Are you an Ichiha because the last Ichiha is Ichiha Sasuke? asked Yakumo. No, it's a long story and I won't tell you unless you're an ally. So why don't we begin discussing an alliance? You still didn't say why we would need an alliance when we are both from the same village. Naruto scratched the back of his head. Oh right, the reason I am asking for an alliance is because I plan on leaving the village soon and I am gaining allies to help me destroy it in the future. I read from your files that you unlocked a bloodline of your clan that would be very beneficial to me. Naruto sat down in a nearby chair. 
Also I know how you were abandoned by your teacher Iki Kurinai and your clan for not being able to control your power, so I'm here to offer you a solution to harnessing your power and getting revenge on your clan and Kurinai for abandoning you. Ikumo narrowed her eyes, and how is it you would help me? First we will seal up your second personality permanently, I know how Kurinai attempted to seal it up, but it later got free. I'm a sealing master so my fkinjutsu skills are much better than hers, and I can create a seal that locks away your second personality and transfers the control of your bloodline from it to you, explained Naruto. Ikumo looked at him skeptically. If what you say is true, after you have given me full control of my powers, I am still not useful on the battlefield since I was born with a weak body. Naruto sighed, yes I took that into account and I have two ways of solving that. Either I can recruit the San and send you Tsunade to my side and have her heal you, or I can find some other use for your bloodline in my ranks. Ikumo studied him for a few minutes before deciding to agree, since she wouldn't really have anything to lose by agreeing with him. Alright, I'll join you said Ikumo. Naruto smirked and stood up, good choice because if you had refused I would have had to kill you to avoid people finding out about my Sharingan. Naruto walked up to Ikumo. The reason I have the Sharingan bloodline and not be an Achiha is because my DNA was genetically changed to hold both Achiha genes and Senju genes by the Biju I hold inside me, the Kaiubi no Kitsune. Ikumo's eyes widened since she had heard of the Jinch Kriki from what the villagers whispered when she snuck out, so you're the Kaiubi Jinch Kriki. Naruto raised an eyebrow here, yeah is that a problem? No, it's just that I thought you would have been more violent and bloodthirsty than diplomatic explained Ikumo. Naruto turned to walk out. Never listen to what the villagers say, it's usually a lie. I'll be back another day to seal up your second personality. Ikumo nodded and they exchanged goodbyes before Naruto left in a yellow flash, and Yakumo was left to think about what had happened. But then too. For the last couple of days Naruto's blood clone assigned to capture Niji, observed a Hyuga prodigy, and he was about ready to drive a kunai into his heart. The Hyuga prodigy did nothing but train with her teammate Tenten, whenever he wasn't training he would be doing chores for Hyuga Hiyashi or sparring with the useless Hyuga heiress. Currently N2 was observing Tenten firing off kunai and shuriken at Niji, while Niji spun around and released chakra from his two for a protective dome, he had remembered Hinata doing the same thing with her father, and if he had to guess it was that Niji was trying to recreate a main house. He watched as the kunai and shuriken bounced off the dome, but some still penetrated the dome and forced Niji to jump back. Tenten stopped firing off her weapons, are you alright Niji? Niji dusted himself off, I'm alright Tenten, we're done training for today we will meet tomorrow at 7am. Niji then turned around and started walking away, not paying attention to Tenten as he walked away. Tenten begrudgingly turned and walked away in the opposite direction. Now's my chance to talk to him. Thought N2. N2 took a Horatian kunai and threw it in front of Niji. Niji's eyes widened, that kunai is the same Yuzumaki used to defeat Lee. N2 appeared in front of Niji, Hi Uga Niji I need you to come with me. Niji got in his Juken stance, Yuzumaki, what are you doing here? N2 laughed, sorry, but I'm not your boss, I'm just a clone, and he assigned me to offer you something that you would find too good to resist. Niji stood alert in his Juken stance, and what is it that Yuzumaki is offering me that I would find very enticing? N2 smirked, my boss is offering to remove your cage bird seal if you come with me and listen to his terms. Niji's eyes widened, you can remove my cage bird seal. N2 walked closer, that's right, but there are certain risks that the boss has to explain first. Niji, still in shock, was digesting what the clone had told him, then narrowed his eyes. How do I know you are telling the truth? N2 shrugged, you don't, but if I'm telling the truth you have nothing to lose and a lot to gain. Niji contemplated on whether or not to go with the clone, in the end the pros outweigh the cons. Fine, I'll go along with you said Niji. N2 got closer and put his hand on Niji's shoulder, and both disappeared in a yellow flash. Namika's compound. After Naruto had returned home from talking to the Yakumo heiress, he had gone in the backyard and continued to practice his Mokuten Sage mode. He was interrupted from his training when he sensed a new chakra signature inside the estate, he opened his eyes and saw N2 with Niji walking up to him. I see your mission was a success N2, good job I need you to take care of the Anbu around us. They have been a nuisance for long enough, said Naruto as he stood up. N2 nodded and left in a yellow flash, Naruto then turned to Niji. Since you're here Niji I guess you know what it is I can do. Niji nodded, your clone told me you could remove my caged bird seal. Niji narrowed his eyes at Naruto. Was that a lie to get me here? Naruto chuckled, no it wasn't a lie, you should know that the seal key is experimental, and if it fails you will most likely die. Niji stiffened, I don't care as long as I am no longer a slave of the main house, I don't care about the risks. Naruto smirked, really, tell me Niji what would you do for your freedom from the main house? Would you betray the village and pledge your loyalty to the one who gave you your freedom? 
Niji was silent for a minute before nodding. If that is what it takes I will gladly give you my loyalty, and I speak for my fellow kinsmen when I say they would do the same to no longer be slaves to the main house. Naruto nodded before heading inside beckoning Niji to follow, he led Niji into the sealing room of the basement. Naruto unsealed the experimental seal key and placed it on Niji's forehead. Are you ready? Niji nodded and Naruto poured chakra into the seal key to begin unlocking the cage bird seal, Niji fell to the floor in pain as the seal was forcibly unlocked. Naruto watched the key do its job closely, he knew that the seal key was unlocking the seal, similar to a locksmith picking the lock of a door. It would take some time and be frustrating or in Niji's case, painful. The seal on Niji's forehead glowed red as Naruto's key unlocked it, and five minutes later the cage bird seal faded from Niji's forehead, leaving a blank forehead. Niji had sweat running down his forehead as he recovered from the five minutes of excruciating pain, he picked up his high aid and used the reflection to look at his forehead and smiled when he saw the cage bird seal was gone. Naruto grabbed the key from his forehead and put it back in the storage scroll. Well it looks like the key was a success, how do you feel? Niji stood up, I felt great. I haven't felt like this in a while. I'm no longer a slave to the main house. Naruto smirked, I can see that, now that you see what I can do I can assume you will give me your loyalty. Niji nodded, of course you have my loyalty from now to the day I die. Naruto smiled, alright, since you are now my subordinate I should tell you my plan. During the finals of the Chunin exams, there is going to be an invasion by Odo and Suna. I will use the chaos of the invasion to leave the village after I have destroyed the village's infrastructure and military installations. I want you to be my spy in the village, since your bloodline allows you to spy easily and give me regular updates of what is happening in the village. Naruto then took out a storage scroll and handed it to Niji. This scroll contains a couple of copies of the seal key I used on you, and you can use them to do as you see fit. Do whatever you want with the freedom I am giving you, but always remember where your loyalties are. Also don't get caught without a seal or else the main house might execute you. Niji nodded and Naruto led him outside to the entrance where his new subordinate left to complete his orders. Once Niji left Naruto made his way outside and saw that N2 had beaten and tied up the four Anbu spying on him. Naruto activates his Manjekyo Sharingan. You Anbu have been very annoying, but you could be useful to me. Naruto then executed every single Anbu and had N2 bring him four Edo Tensei scrolls, Naruto took out four kunai and used each one to collect DNA from the corpses. Naruto then activated his Kamui and brought out the two Genin from the second exam and two from Kumo he had kidnapped during a mission. Naruto then created two clones to assist him and N2 in resurrecting the Anbu, Naruto placed the bloody kunai in the scroll and activated it. All of a sudden seals formed from the scroll and surrounded the Kumo, and he cried in agony as paper-like material covered his body until the monkey-masked Anbu was where the Kumo was. He looked over to the others and saw that the chameleon, tiger and cat mask Anbu were successfully resurrected. Naruto and his clones added the control seals vile kunai in the skull, and they sprung to life. From now on you are loyal to me whether you like it or not said Naruto with a smirk. The tiger mask Anbu tried to fight to control his body, never we are loyal to Konoha, we will never be loyal to you traitor. Naruto made a single hand sign and subdued the Anbu, I don't think you have a choice, I resurrected you from the dead, and now you have no control over your own bodies. Naruto made another hand sign and took away their free will. Now from now on you will report to the Sandane that I have done nothing wrong during the month and continue your mission. All Naruto got was four monotone high, Naruto then dismissed them and continued training, then he went to bed. Day of the finals. During the month Naruto practiced his sage mode and was proud to say that he mastered it and it was very useful. When he activates his Mokuten sage mode, he gains an unlimited supply of chakra because of the natural energy taken from the surrounding trees, it is rivaled only by Kurama's supply. He can also use the trees as an extension of himself and the forest he can sense every single creature big and small, as long as they are 5 meters from a tree. He also received some strange markings on his face that, if he had to guess, would represent the roots of a tree. Overall it was a pain to master, but it was all worth it in the end. Currently Naruto was waiting in the stadium for the finals to begin, he noticed that there was a different proctor for the finals. He was interrupted from his thoughts when the finals proctor began announcing to the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen welcome to the finals of the Chunin exams, I am your proctor Shiranyui Genma. The first match will be Kankuro of the Sand vs Yuzumaki Naruto. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.